can he box? That is the question. At six foot nine inches, Jones has tremendous reach and devastating power. He played football at 260 pounds. His fighting weight is 235 pounds. All his sparring sessions have been closed to the press, but he appears to have slow hands and he telegraphed every punch in his workout on the heavy bag. Even if he can't box, Jones will be a financial success. His manager says he'll bank more money before year's end than if he'd led the Cowboys to a Super Bowl championship. But we won't find out if he's got the makings of a fighter until tomorrow when he meets his first opponent, Yaque Manises, in Las Cruces, New Mexico. That fight will be televised nationally by CBS. Sherman Egan for CBS News, New York. And behind Kelly. That's Hobbs along with Roan. Kelly will put it up on first down. He hits Hobbs across the middle, shakes a tackle. He's at the 30, 35, 40. He may go. He may go. Look at him put up that quick drop. Goes to the near side. It is caught by Joyner. He's down to the 10. He breaks a tackle, but he goes out of bounds. The holder is LaBelle. Snap set down. The kick is up, and it's good. So the Hurricanes jump on top. We have 11 minutes. University of Miami and WCIX TV is prohibited. Davis against the wind hits it high, very short. It bounces inside the 30, and it is a uh, touched. Let's see it's, if, if it was touched by Penn State. Kelly can put six points on the board. Quick drop. He's got a man open. It is caught by Walker at the 10. He drags over the ball and the kickoff inside the Penn State 28. Here's Kelly lost at the corner of the end zone. Joyner's got it for a touchdown. Jim Joyner and the King. Nothing. Big play for Tate. Here's Gooman over the right side. He's going to score. He is in for the touchdown. Turning with Walker's right to catch the ball. Here's the play fake by Kelly. He's got a man open down the near side. Brodsky, he's got it out of bounds at the two-yard line. And Jim Kelly, August of 47, he kicked one earlier of 20. Snap, set down, kick is up. He's got the distance on it. It's good. So Miller puts the Hurricanes on top now by Kelly. Back to throw against the blitz. He's popped it. Man open. Touchdown to Joyner in the corner of the end zone. Who's shown a lot of stomach today. Here's Kelly into the middle. It is caught for a touchdown. Walker, Pat Walker, and the Canes are pouring it on. Kelly waited. He had all day to throw. Sophomore defensive tackle Tim Flanagan was honored by Sports Illustrated and named college football's defensive player of the week. The Woodbridge, Virginia product helped contain the Nittany Lion offense by making 11 unassisted tackles and assisting in three others. Now the other honor went to freshman quarterback Pat Kelly, who while making his first start for the Hurricanes, completed 18 of 30 passes for 280 yards and engineered that upset win over previously 19th ranked Penn State. For his efforts, Kelly was named Southeastern back of the week by Associated Press. Coach Howard Schnellenberger said the win over Penn State had turned the program around. And wide receiver Pat Walker found a different attitude around campus this morning. Well, uh, everybody you see is like, that knows you is like congratulations and smiles and handshakes and you guys are going to, you know, you're going to beat Bama and it's just a lot of spirit around campus. It's a different thing. You don't see it. University of Miami, you wake up in the morning, you go to class, everybody's looking all dull and sleepy. <laughs> but this morning I woke up going to breakfast, man, and everybody I saw was smiling. And I even heard people that didn't know me, you know, I passed by them, they talking about the game, and I hear them, overhear them. And it was just a different, different scenery this morning. And I felt so good myself because just hearing them talk, I knew I was part of what they was talking about. The Hurricanes have two weeks to enjoy this victory before facing the reality of Alabama in Tuscaloosa on November 17th. Mark Goldberg, Channel 4 Sports. Freshman quarterback Jim Kelly has returned to receive the accolades coming from Hurricane fans and fellow players. He had stayed up in Pennsylvania to be with his family and friends for a couple days after that stunning upset victory over Penn State. But now UPI's Southeastern back of the week tells us he's ready to return to work. Yeah, I'm on steady grind. I had to get, it took a couple of days to get over uh, winning and everything, so I'm, I'm ready to go. How do you feel being part of a major upset that not only led to a win, obviously, but led to Miami being on national television against the number one ranked team in the nation. I feel really good about that. Like um, to go in the game, like after I did throw my first touchdown, and like uh, before uh, Penn State even had the ball, we had a 10 nothing lead, and I thought I was dreaming. I thought, man, I, this can't be true. Us beating Penn State, and it was, uh, it was a feeling and a half for uh, us to beat them. Now it's back to work for the Alabama game. Yeah, Alabama's going to be tough, and we're just going to have to prepare for them just like we did for Penn State. I, I feel that we could move the ball on Alabama's like we did Penn State.
getting to be about that time for us to step aside. Don't forget, Mike and I are going to be with you throughout the day at halftime with scores and highlights, and time permitting, we'll get you updated after the game, too. Right now, we're moments away from kickoff. NFL 79 continues as we go down to the field right after this. Cowboys are in town, coached by Tom Landry. And Roger Staubach, sore need, will lead them. Phil Sims, the rookie. And Ray Perkins, the giant coach. The Giants, owners at the moment of the longest winning streak in professional football. This is Giant Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey, and it is packed. In fact, they say this is the toughest ticket to come by in a long, long time. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire, and the atmosphere here is like I can't remember. Well, the uh, the special players for the Giants came out and received a thundering ovation. They looked around like maybe a, a cardinal or somebody from the church had come <laughs> through, but it was a great ovation, and I, it's a turned-on stadium. I agree with you. And all the Giant people who've won four straight, as we mentioned, will tell you, and they have already. We'll find out what we are really like today. Well, Sims uh, has only two interceptions in his last 92 attempts. Uh, he's going to see a very sophisticated defense. If the Giants are going to do the job against Dallas, they've got to score early, and they've got to do well on first down, which is a pretty hard thing to do. Dallas comes off a, a very severe physical beating last week by Pittsburgh. I wonder how they're going to react. Well, the defense played pretty well. You hold the Steelers to 14 points. Uh, I do think that offensively they have to kick the traces and get at it and give uh, Roger perhaps a better first and second down himself. He was third down and long a lot against Pittsburgh. And they have to get a lot more out of that fullback position. Are Dallas has won the toss. Let's get down there. Are you ready? I'm really ready today. The officials today, the referee is Jerry Mark Bright. And you can see the rest of his crew. I hope they're ready. It's going to be a tough game to officiate with all oh, these fast into, players. I ran into him in the tunnel downstairs, and there were no smiles. They are ready. <laughs> they get their game face on on Friday. Bill Sims loosening up on the far side of the field. A perfect day. Boy, you couldn't ask for a better day for football. You couldn't ask for a more en enthusiastic crowd. Ron Springs and Steve Wilson back deep for Dallas, and Joe Danello will kick off for the Giants. And Springs is really dangerous, the young rookie from Ohio State for Dallas. And so is Wilson. The Giants do a couple of funny things on the opening kickoff, putting some extra people on the left-hand side where Springs will start to operate. Oh, he is hit down quickly. Ray Oldham. Otis McKinney. As soon as he fielded. And now the high-powered Dallas offense will operate. And we'll see how perhaps solid the team is. Donovan, Scott, Fitzgerald, Rafferty, Cooper, the, as you say, the Iro line, right? How, how hurt is Roger Staubach? We'll find out how badly his knee is really strained. The rest of his supporting cast, Tony Dorsett, Robert Newhouse, the running backs, Tony Hill, and Drew Pearson wide, and Billy Joe Dupree. They start off with a double tight end offense. Jay Salvey, number 87, now shifts into the backfield. And goes in motion, first and 10. Dorsett cuts up the middle for four or five. Ray Oldham made the tackle. And of course, the Giants are in that 34 defense and getting more aggressive each week from it. Martin, Mendenhall, Jeter. Martin a little bit against the pass, but not so tough against the run. Brad Van Pelt, Dan Lloyd, Harry Carson, and Brian Kelly. And that is Brad Van Pelt and the protection, the flak jacket that he is wearing today for those injured ribs. Bad ribs suffered against the Los Angeles Rams in the secondary. And those linebackers came up with four interceptions against the Rams a week ago. They played very well. Second and five. Dallas operates from their own 23. Starback runs a draw, draw play to Scott Laidlaw. 
He is near a first down. Perhaps he has it. Stopped by Dan Lloyd, who's got a chance to play since they went to that 3-4 alignment. A lot of people think that the Cowboys have to run the fullback more and get something out of him, or Dorsett is not allowed for those 100-yard days. Here's that giant secondary. Jackson and Rhodes, of course, at the corner. Reese and Oldham, and Oldham used to be with the Steelers before this year. He's a good little player in that safety. Laidlaw got the first down on that draw play, so it's first and 10. Line of scrimmage, the Dallas 29. No score, opening seconds at Giant Stadium. Newhouse back alongside Dorsett in the backfield, and Salvi again comes in motion. Inside handoff, Dorsett, no game. Dan Lloyd again on the tackle. Looked like Mendenhall might have slid under, too. Let's take a look at it. You're from behind the Dallas offense. Fitzgerald gets good position on Mendenhall. But like the bouncing ball, he slipped right around the block and still made the play. And his back apparently is feeling uh, much better. They said that Perkins said, we need you. Get well, big fella. And since that time, he's played very well. One yard loss for Dorsett. As Staubach brings him out in a hurry. It'll be a tough day for John Fitzgerald with Mendenhall lined up in front of him all day. The pitch is back to Dorsett. Tony D for four or five. Gary Jeter on the tackle. All the way from the offside. Again, if you're in the 34, there's young Sims now, making sure he is flat out warm. He had his birthday yesterday. He is 24. He is not a young rookie, nor does he act like it. I've seen him knock down, and he jumps up and stares down the tackler. Uh, he's almost as poised as number 12, but not quite. It is third and five. Billy Joe Dupree comes out, so does Dorsett. Woods Johnson goes in along with Ron Springs. Springs playing in the position today where normally it would be Preston Pearson. Third down was tough against Pittsburgh because it was third and long. They had a lot of them. Shotgun formation. And the time is adequate. And the pass is complete to Ron Springs. Brad Van Pelt, the closest giant, but it'll be enough for a Dallas first down. Well, and Springs has the softest hands for a guy that's put together like a statue. Number 20 will come to the left of your screen. Roger out of the shotgun. Boy, he has a lot of time. And those soft hands, he puts it away for the first. Let's see what uh, Jay Sawley did now. He is in the slot position on the shotgun. Got chucked a couple of times, at least twice, maybe three times. You're not supposed to do that, are you? Well, if you get away with it, you're supposed to. <laughs> first down, Dallas at the 44. Their own. Robert Newhouse takes the handoff and spins around for about three. John Mendenhall again, the first giant to hit him. There's Ray Perkins, the giant coach. You know what I saw him do before the game? And I saw him go around to each member of the giant squad, 45 of them, as they were doing exercises, and look them right in the eye and shake their hand and wish them good luck. And I said, you know, when I played, it was four years sometimes, and the coach was still calling me Tiger or Pro <laughs> or something like that. That's a good feeling, though. I remember that before the Super Bowl in New Orleans, Red Miller, of the Denver Broncos told us that same thing, and he said that was one of the keys to his success. He felt. Here is Staubach out to Dorsett, who heard Mendenhall coming and wisely let the ball get away. Can you imagine Mendenhall, the nose guard, getting into the flat? Let's see what happens. Right in the center, left center of your screen. He hits Fitzgerald, starts to make penetration, and reads it. That is a veteran savvy. Boy, you're right. Dorsett could feel the pitter pat. They were trying to set up that quick screen that they execute so well. Ron Springs checks back in. Third down, they need seven from the 47. Stallback back in the shotgun. Long, right? long again. Protection is excellent. Stallback is down by Gary Cheater, who tripped him up shy of midfield, and Dallas will have to punt. Again, it wasn't a big rush. It wasn't a big blitz. Three men going. They dropped eight people back, cut off the intermediate zones. Here's Martin now being doubled. Watch the big fellas. He starts out number 12. Number 70 just does trip him up. Number one draft out of USC. I don't believe he touched him at all. I believe Roger just uh, ran on the sides of his feet. I think that's correct. Bobby Hammond back deep for the Giants and Danny White. Ever dangerous from punt formation. We saw him pass last week against the Steelers. But this time he will kick. Second in the NFC. Chases Hammond back. Hammond comes out of it. 
pocket that it looked like he might be in a 47 yard punt by Danny White and the Giants will take over about their own 15 yard line. Dennis Thurman made the tackle. No score at Giant Stadium with 947 left to play in the first quarter. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Lincoln Mercury and the exciting 1980 Cougar XR7. And by Olympus OM10. Great shots automatically. From Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's the NFL on CBS. The Washington Redskins versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hi, everybody. Kurt Gowdy, Hank Stramp. Perfect day for football. The Steelers trying to stay on top of their division. They're 7-2. and two. They're the defending kings. And Jack Pardee, the coach of the Redskins, said we can't take a double bogey, meaning we can't lose two in a row. So, what's the mental strategy here for this game, Hank Stram? Well, the mental strategy is very obvious, Kurt. I think uh, very obviously that the Pittsburgh Steelers, after winning two big games, uh, one against Denver and one against Dallas, has to maintain that same high level of efficiency from an enthusiasm standpoint. And uh, on the other hand, why the Washington Redskins have to bounce back from a surprising loss to the New Orleans Saints. All right, the Redskins have won the toss. They're going to receive, and let's get out of the field. There he is, Barr. Matt Barr will kick it off. And the boot. Comes to Buddy Hardiman on the 11 for the Redskins. Trying to get a wall of blockers. Good return here. He's over the 30 and out to the 34. And the tackle is made by Zach Valentine, the rookie linebacker from East Carolina. All right, here they are up front. Hermeling is the left tackle. Saul's the left guard. Guzil's the center. Williams at right guard. Stark's the right tackle. And the youngster Don Warren at uh, tight end. Bugs and Thompson, the wide receiver. The backfield will be Theismann, Riggins, and Malone. First down, Redskins. Heisman on first down, throwing an out pattern. Ricky Thompson had turned the wrong way. Heisman purposely threw that ball high, though, because there were two Steelers there, and there was a chance of an interception. You know, one thing that's going to be very important for Washington this afternoon is going to be the fact that they must be able to hit their tight end, Don Warren or Gene Fugit, uh, both of whom have caught 10 and 11 passes, respectively. But you have to have a tight end who, who has good speed and can lick the double zone of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second down 10. Gene Fugit is in a tight end for the Redskins. That handoff goes to Benny Malone and he's smacked down at the 36 yard line of the Redskins by Jack Lambert who leads the Steelers in tackles. Third and eight. And now the passing backs, the receiving backs come in. Buddy Hardeman number 22. Clarence Harmon, 38. The Redskins use a different team on every down. There's Lambert, all-pro middle linebacker, enjoying a great year. He's intercepted five passes. Larry Anderson is a nickel back. Dennis Winston has gone out as a linebacker. Third down and eight. Heisman throws it up in the air. And out of bounds is intended for Danny Buck. And it's going to be confirmation. The telecast presented by authority of the National Football League and it's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Steelers in the National Football League is prohibited. Punt formation during the kicking will be Mike Bragg. He's averaged 38 and a half yards of kick. The safety man is Theo Bell. Bragg has not had a kick block this year. High twisting spiral, excellent kick. And they let it bounce and it's down on the 11 yard line. Monty Coleman, the young linebacker, very fast, an impressive player, down the cover. They were lucky that time, uh, Kurt, because uh, Theo Bell, the ball bounced into him, but fortunately he was able to recover that, uh, uh, that wasn't a fumble, but the ball hit him. But had he not recovered it, Pittsburgh recovered it, would have been the uh, 
first down really for the Washington Redskins had they fallen on the football. Stallworth and Swan, the wide receivers, Bradshaw, Sidney Thornton, and Rocky Blyer, the backfield. Steelers ball, their own 11. This is Thornton. He's hit at the 13. This is a good defensive team. The Steelers are going against the Redskins have allowed the fewest points this year of any team in the National Football League. And the Steelers are number one in total offense. They're second rushing and four passing. And on the other side of the football, the Redskins are fifth in total defense, seven against the rush and three against the pass. And you just took a look at the Redskins de defense. Monty Coleman replaces Wysocki at right linebacker. Second down eight for the Steelers. Their own 13-yard line. No score. We're early. Bradshaw will throw. Out it goes. There's Stallworth. And Stallworth has just caught his 42nd pass of the year. And he leads the National Football League for the most yards gained in receiving passing. You know, I think as the game goes along, it's going to be very obvious that they're going to work on Joe Lavender, the right cornerback, which they just completed a pass in front of him on an outside move. Uh, Lamar Parrish has intercepted seven balls so far this season. Very unusual for a quarterback, but he's one of the very best in the business, and I'm sure that they'll stay away from him and not concentrate a lot on the other side. First down, Steelers. On their own 22. That's Frank O'Hara. Out to the 25. Gets out of bounds on the 31. Franco needs 13 yards. Then he's to 8,000 yards in his career, only the eighth back in the history of the league to reach at least 8,000 yards. He did a good job of running on the play. The play was really designed to go either inside or outside of the offensive right tackle, Larry Brown. He started inside, jumped to the outside, and made a nice gain. Even though he had the ball in the wrong arm, he should have it on the right side, away from the pressure of the, in of the inside uh, pursuit coming from the Washington Redskins. Jerry Mullins out at guard. Steve Corson is in. Quick opener. That play went. And Franco Harris now has 8,000 yards. Only Jimmy Brown, O.J. Simpson, Jim Taylor, and Joe Perry have more. And the next step for Franco Harris will be Joe Perry, who has 378 more yards. This was a trap play by the right tackle, Steve, right guard, Steve Corson, 77. They trapped the defensive right tackle, Dyron Talbert, and he popped through there for a nice game. First down, Steeler, Thornton. He's hemmed in and he's hit for a loss. They poured in on him that time. Okowitz, the middle linebacker, was one of the players. He's number 52. He's a member of the pole line, Dusik. Is the left linebacker, Okowitz the middle linebacker, Wysocki the right linebacker. They're all Polish. And how about they just got through playing the Pennsylvania Polka, the theme song of the Polish Prince, Bobby Benton. Uh, he's, what do you think he's rooting for today? <laughs> huh? He's right down, he's from right down the street. He's very big here like he is all over the country. Second down, 10. No score. Uh -oh. Look at that charge. Oh, what a charge by Dave Butts. Butts really penetrating off on the snap, hit Sidney Thornton and stopped him for a half-yard loss, and suddenly the Steelers now are third and ten and a half. Watch Butts. He comes across there. Nobody blocks him. It's always nice to be a defensive lineman and come across the line of scrimmage, get penetration when nobody touches you. Third down, ten and a half. Jim Smith's in there, three wide receivers for the Steelers. Bradshaw out of the pocket. The pass is complete, but it may be short. It's for Stallworth, who, by the way, now has caught passes in uh, 38 consecutive games. The club record is held by Shanklin, 40 games in a row, and they're short of a first down. You know, Terry Bradshaw really delivered a great pass that time. The safety man, Houston, was coming over to make a play, so he, he evidently saw him coming from the inside, threw the ball a little bit outside. Stallworth still made a great catch, but it wasn't enough for the first down. Buddy Hardeman, the safety man for the Redskins. Craig Colquitt will punt. Now, he is the only two-step kicker in the league. Now, watch him. 
to take the snap and go only two steps. Most of them are three-step kickers. Two steps is the advantage to get the ball away quickly. There it is. Two steps up. Hangs it up there nicely. Hardeman calls for the fair catch. Fumbles the ball. And the fumble helped him pick up three yards as he's on it on the 20-yard line where the Redskins will take over when we resume here in the first period with no score. Just one of the sights on a beautiful, clear, crisp fall day in Atlanta, Georgia. 60,000 on hand at the Atlanta Fulton County Stadium for this afternoon's NFC battle, matching the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Lieber, along with Paul Horning. We've got two clubs going in different directions right now. We sure do. What can you say about Tampa Bay? The surprise of the NFL. They're on top, tied with Dallas and Pittsburgh. The best record in the National Football League. They're loose. I don't think they know how good they are. Atlanta's lost six out of their last seven, including that heartbreaking loss to Seattle the other night, yet they're still in their divisional race. You know, Frank, the law of average is caught up with, with Atlanta. Last year, they were winning these real close games. This year, they've lost four games by four points or less, and they are frustrated. They had the great defense in the past, but it's disappeared. Well... When you blitz, Frank, when you live by the blitz, you're admitting your weakness in your defense. They were getting away with it for the last couple of years. It's catching them now. We're ready for the opening kickoff. And as we said, beautiful fall day. Temperature right at 60 degrees at kickoff time. Tampa Bay Buccaneers in white, Atlanta in red. As you look at the toss of the coin, Ben Wright, the referee, Falcons have won the toss of the coin and elected to receive. Tampa Bay with a record of 7-2 matches the best in all of pro football. Dallas has the same record, so does Pittsburgh. And, of course, a lot of talk about the easy schedule of Tampa Bay this year. As you look at John McKay, they haven't beaten a team with better than a 500 record so far, but... They've done the job in their division, and that's what counts. They're 5-0 and in that central division. No, they should cakewalk. We were uh, talking on the NFL today. They might as well go ahead and buy your playoff tickets as we look at Lehman Bennett, a frustrated coach over there. His team has been up and down. They started with two straight victories, and, boy, they've had problems since then. But you might as well go ahead and buy your playoff tickets, Frank. You're ready, Tampa huh? Bay France, All sure. Right. And they've got a great opportunity to have that home field advantage. They do. Conceivably, if they wind up with a better record than Dallas... And win the division, they could be hosting the Cowboys in Tampa Bay. And Dallas, of course, is a lot tougher schedule coming down the stretch. We're going to look at two teams today, Frank. I think you're going to see Atlanta go back to the full blitz. They're going to blitz this young quarterback, Williams. Williams has only been sacked twice. He gets rid of the football. We should have a great football game. Dennis Pearson, the deep man, as Neil O'Donohue lines the opening kickoff, taken instead by Haskell Standback at the 10-yard line, 15-20. Standback is stopped just short of the 30-yard line. It was O'Donohue, the kicker, who made the tackle. Here's the Falcons' offensive line. A couple of number one draft picks in there, and Mike Ken and Warren Bryant, two outstanding tackles. The receivers, and Wallace Francis having his best year ever. He's caught 39 passes, fourth in the league. Steve Barkowski, the quarterback, and two great rookie runners, William Andrews and Lynn Kane. First and 10 from the 29-yard line. Kane stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Tampa Bay is number one in defense in the NFC, led by Leroy Selman. As Richard Wood, number 54, made the stop. Here's the Bucks' defensive line. They play that uh, three-man front, and Randy Crowder is starting again this week, as he did last week in Minnesota for the injured Bill Kohler, though Kohler is available. The linebacking crew... One of the best in all of pro football. And the secondary in one change there, Curtis Jordan was a surprise starter. At free safety. Places Cedric Brown. Second down, little less than 10 needed for the first down. They go with the delay to Kane. And Kane showing great balance. Close for the first down at the 39-yard line. This is the guy that unreeled that 35-yard run the other night against Seattle, which was just incredible. Frank, I love this kid out of USC. Gained over 800 yards rushing alongside of Charles White. I saw him score three touchdowns against the Packers in the preseason, 
And I told Charlie Dayton, the fine PR guy here in Atlanta, you're not going to keep this kid on the bench. First down in Atlanta. And you reminded Charlie about that today, didn't you? <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> First and ten. Falcons with the football at their 39-yard line, opening moments of the ball game. Andrews to about the line of scrimmage. He started off with a bang. In fact, he worked that first Atlanta game down in New Orleans. He had 167 yards 100, rushing. 167 yards. And he was really drafted for his pass receiving ability. They didn't think he was going to be this kind of a runner. And what a surprise he's been. One of the best. Well, I guess you could say he's leading. He's a leading candidate for rookie of the year. Third round draft choice. Not bad. Picked up a yard, second and nine. What these two guys do, Frank, is they block well for each other, Kane and Andrew. They, they don't mind hitting people. They got another rookie runner in Mayberry who does a fine job, too. They really struck the mother load in the draft this year as far as running backs. That's Kane, or rather, uh, making Andrews out to the 49-yard line. Cecil Johnson made the stop, and he'll be close for the first down. Good blocking up front. Jeff Van Note, Dave Scott, and R.C. Steelman, the guards. You'll see it. Watch a right guard comes over and takes the off linebacker. Andrews cuts back to the weak side. Andrews has already set a rookie rushing record for Atlanta, 556 yards coming into this ball game, averaging better than four yards a carry. Just short of the first down, third down, called it less than a yard. Double tight end setup for the Falcons. Almost a nine-man front with two linebackers. Kane. For the first down, reaches across into Tampa's end of the field at the 49-yard line. Richard Wood made the stop, but the Falcons have their second first down in this drive. Teams haven't played very much. In fact, just twice. One and one. Both games in Tampa. It's first visit ever by the Buccaneers to Atlanta and Fulton County Stadium. There's the I, book I, on Barkowski this year. I was going to say, here we are early in the going, and... Barkowski running the football right at the best defense against a rush. Hasn't thrown a pass yet. Been straight up the middle most of the time. Kane carrying that time. Kane more or less was a, uh, a blocking back for White out of Southern Cal, wasn't he last he year? He sure was. Can you imagine a blocking back gaining 890 yards rushing in college? And hard, people hardly knew his name except Charles White. Second down, five. Nose of the football just beyond the Tampa Bay 45-yard line. Both wide receivers to the right side of the line of scrimmage. Jenkins outside and Francis set in the slot. We get a flag as Kane takes the pitch to about the 43-yard line. Jammed up over there. Randy Crowder, the uh, man head up the center, moved out. Of, he was offsides. I don't know he, if he was drawn off or not. Let's check out the call. He's probably offside. Ben Dreith is the referee. The umpire, Bob Boyston. Headlinesman, Frank Glover. The line judge, Bill Reynolds. The back judge, Stan Jabby, the sides judge, Bob Rice, and the field judge, Pat Maletti. Those are the officials for this afternoon's game as you watch the walk-off go against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which will move it to the 40-yard line. And we'll get the indication here from Dreith uh, on the penalty as soon as they get the down marker and the chains lined up to his satisfaction. Offside. Defense offside. There you saw the move. He was penetrating across the line of scrimmage cost him five and it gives the quarterback a pretty good opportunity now, you've heard announcers say that many times right Frank here it is second one could be a throwaway down a lot of quarterbacks like to go to the air here maybe go for six to bring up third and short I do not like it in a situation like this Atlanta has moved the football on the ground they have controlled the line of scrimmage keep that momentum going run it get the first down there's no use going upstairs now star always used to wait till third and one didn't he? that's right that's a better <laughs> throwing down believe me Second down, less than a yard needed for the first down. Atlanta with the ball at the Tampa 40 after having taken the opening kickoff, and they've stayed on the ground. They've got another first down as they give it to Andrews. Leroy Selman, number 63, makes the stop for Tampa Bay. He's the anchor of that number one rated buck defense. And are they quick? Leroy Selman, if he doesn't go to the Pro Bowl, I'll jump off of this press box. I'll tell you, he should go to the Pro Bowl. Probably the best defensive end in, in this league, at least. He is a great one. Number 63 right there. Quick. He will get the quarterback. Third first down for the Falcons in this drive. They're in business at the 36-yard line. Now the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They go from the split backfield this time, and they stay on the ground. Keep hammering away. Andrews 
sneaks across the 35 and is down to the 33 yard line. Tampa Bay's losses have come to the Giants and to the Saints. Atlanta has lost six out of its last seven games. And they're just trying to figure out what happened here. Here's a team that a couple of years ago, the defense set a record for least points allowed in the season. And this year, they are currently 14th in defense in the NFC and 27th out of 28 teams in the NFL. Again, the delay, this time they give it to Kane, and it does not fool the Buccaneers at all. We had Richard Wood on a blitz, Randy Crowder, somebody missed blocking him up front. A little breakdown, and this has happened to Atlanta all year long. They get in a sustained drive, Frank, they move the football, and they'll have a breakdown, one or two missed assignments there. Lehman Bennett, been a frustrating year for him after great expectations. Team got in the playoffs last year, almost beat Dallas, and advanced to the NFC Championship game, and so they had great expectations, and it just hasn't happened. Third down, 11 now needed for the first down from the 38. Passing situation, Safety here comes play. the blitz. Barkowski gets it away, one-on-one -on -one coverage, but the pass is way too long. Intended for Jenkins, who is down around the five-yard line, but overthrew him by a good five to seven yards. And Barkowski already drawing some early boos. And you know, he got a break because he had it on a quick count. That meant the safety blitz was going to be late getting to the quarterback. He had enough time. Had man-to-man -man coverage back there. Should have been a quicker pass. A quick post is the best pattern to run against that safety blitz. John James is the Atlanta punter, and he's had quite a year. He just doesn't punt it into the end zone. He's only had one kick going to the end zone, right, Frank? He is one of the premier punters in the, in the pros. One of the best at the pooch kicks. And, where he either drops it in there around the 10 or else puts it out of bounds inside the 10. Uh-oh. Atlanta's got too many players on the field. What are they doing? There's a guy running over on the far side, I think, trying to get out of bounds. <laughs> but he, was, he went over to the wrong bench, over to the Tampa uh -huh. Bay bench. And out of it, a penalty anyway. That was Dewey McLean, number 52. <laughs> He looked like he was taking a lap around the field. That's what you call out of position. About five yards is not going to hurt James here. I was going to say, you know, punting, I think, is the only thing that hasn't progressed in the last 15 years in professional football. Most of your punting in the league is atrocious. Guys shank him off the right foot, but this guy is a real steady kicker. Reese is back as a deep man. James angling this one to the near sideline. Going to bounce, well, it goes on into the end zone. So you have seen a rarity this year. James uh, punt one into the end zone for the touchback. So the Bucks will bring it out to the 20-yard line, and Tampa Bay will have offensive control of the football for the first time this afternoon. 42 yards on the punt by John James. We'll be back in Atlanta in just a moment. Let's look at the Giants' offense. Still having some trouble with the pass protection. Benson Van Horn playing very well at left guard. Clack, J.T. Turner, and Gordon King in there for the second week. Big offensive tackle. The backs and receivers for the Giants. Phil Sims, the quarterback. Taylor and Coder, the running backs. Johnny Perkins back in motion. Billy Taylor gets the carry. And the whole offensive line with a good charge stopped by Randy Hughes. Six yard pickup. Let's look at the Dallas defense. Again, first down is tough to run against these fellas. Larry Cole, Stalls, White, Harvey Martin. Look for Harvey maybe to have a big pass rushing day. The linebackers, Guy Brown in place of Tomas Henderson. <laughs> Bob Brunig in the middle and Dee Lewis. Ever present on the outside, the secondary. And they haven't intercepted a pass in two or three weeks, but they hold the percentage completion rate down to about 43%. That's something. Second and four. Billy Taylor bangs outside the 25, and he'll have a first down. Harvey Martin led the tacklers, along with Guy Brown. Smart move, though. Make everybody play honest on defense. Look to the left of your screen. J.T. Turner really does a good job blocking down on stalls. To be able to get a first down without throwing the ball early against Dallas uh, is almost as good as scoring early against Dallas. Brad Benson is starting now at left tackle instead of Gordon King, number 60. Dallas in that flex defense. And again, it's Billy Taylor. Backs cross in the giant backfield. Again, they get sizable yardage. Randy Hughes has to make another tackle. Let's take a look at the left side. That's Benson, number 60, trapping from the outside in. 
The left tackle pulls back through the hole, seals off Brunick. Three plays in a row, running plays, at the very power of that Dallas defense. This makes you sit back, even if you're Randy White, and say, hey, what's going on? Three running plays for the Giants, all by Billy. Go, guy! Stop him, guy! Picked up 16 yards. If they can maintain that average, things will be fine. Here is Doug Coder. That'll hurt the average. D.D. Lewis tripped him up. Great play by Larry Cole. Helped D.D. Lewis, the end and linebacker who have played on all those great Super Bowl teams for the Dallas Cowboys. They're two of the original five that have done it. Watch Cole strip it, straighten up the guard who's trying to pull, and then D.D. finishes off. And Harvey Martin was there chasing all the way across the field. It'll be third and eight as Bruce Thornton has replaced Larry Cole. And the extra defenders go in for Dallas. Johnny Perkins and Ernest Gray, the wide receivers. Faking the Giants. blitz. Are they faking the blitz or are they coming with it? They fake. Sims outside. Complete. Johnny Perkins. Not enough for a first down. First pass attempt for per, for Sims. And one completion. Tony Dorsett getting ready to go back in for well, Dallas. Roger Staubach may have hurt that injured knee. We noticed Danny White did get warmed up on the sideline. So the next time the Cowboys have the ball, uh, we might see a change of quarterback. Abe Jennings to Steve Wilson. Wilson straight ahead to about the 38 yard line before Otis McKinney again is involved in the coverage tackle a 44 yard kick by the number one kicker of the NFC Dave Jennings. Roger Staubach's coming back. And Tom Landry looks on nothing nothing score. Well what a year they've had here in Pittsburgh Super Bowl champs January the Steelers World Series baseball champs the Pirates. They won a lot of champions here during the decade of the 70s in this city. John Riggins, two yards, and he got him the hard way. It was finally Lambert who hauled him down with some help from J.T. Thomas, number 24. McDaniel comes in to replace Danny Bugs as a wide receiver. Warren is out, and Fugit checks in as a tight end. We're not going to try and give you all these changes because part of these changes three or four players on every down. Or check in on the key one. Second down eight. Eddie Malone, John Riggins with a setback behind Joe Theismann. Theismann tosses, completes it to John McDaniel, and he should have it up for the first down as he crossed his 30, taken out of bounds by the left linebacker, Jack Ham. They were in a slot formation that time, and uh, Ham was covering on the play, man for man, he threw the ball out in front nicely, made the catch, and of course they moved the ball and uh, had a good down, first down situation coming up right now. The Redskin passing attack is diversified. They had one game this year where eight different players caught at least one pass. That was against the Eagles. They like to go to their backs a lot. There's Riggins. Riggins to the 35. They play what they call the short passing game or the high efficient passing game and Hank Stram will explain that to you. Well they like to throw a lot of high percentage passes which means they like to throw the ball to the backs in the flat or the tight end in short situations because they don't have to throw the ball very far. They don't need a lot of protection or a lot of time to protect and so for that reason they're very high percentage passes kind of possession kind of passes very much like the run. No wide receiver by the way for the Redskins has caught a touchdown pass in the last seven games. Second down, seven. Heisman, good scrambler. He's rolling for yardage, and he heads out of bounds on the 37. He got out of there very quickly out of bounds. Jack Ham was coming up to make the tackle, and he exercised very, very good judgment. He was heading upfield when he saw 59 flash in front of his face. He very wisely ran out of bounds to stop the clock. Anytime I <laughs> saw Jack Lambert anywhere, up a dark alley out in the football field, I'd head the opposite way. Even on the dance floor. Right. All right, Harmon and Hardeman. H&H &H boys are in the Redskin backfield. Robin Cole becomes a fourth linebacker for the Steelers. There's Jack Barney. 
Redskins coach. Done quite a job with that club this year. Everybody thought they would have a disastrous season, but they haven't. On third down, their blitz is on. Boy, they decked him. They got to him. And in there was Robin Cole blitzing the right linebacker, number 56. So it's fourth and five. And the Redskins will punt again. That time they use a double wing formation, which means you have two people on the right side, two on the left of the ball, and one in the backfield. There was not enough people back there to protect for the pass in the event that they did blitz. He had to throw it away, and it fell incomplete. Mike Bragg will do the punting again. And he's got to shank this one. He, he's, he's mad at himself. Look at him. Disgusted. I think he hit it up on top of his ankle. It wasn't a very good kick, but it leaves the Sailors in good operating position. Kick for 19 yards. There's no score in the first quarter. I see what New England's doing, lacking confidence in the pass catching ability of their tight end other than Francis. Well, Atlanta ate up about half of the first quarter with that opening drive and came up dry. 8.53 left to play in the first period. Buccaneers with the ball, first and 10 from their 20, and Doug Williams comes out throwing, firing a bullet, good for the first down at the 32-yard line. Roland Lawrence coming up quickly and making the tackle on Higgins, who had just an impressive day last week. He's picking up where he left off, caught five for 149 yards last week. And this kid is learning week in and week out. Now, he's probably has the poorest completion percentage in the whole league, number 12, Doug Williams. But I tell you, one out of every seven completed passes go for touchdowns. And that is an important stat. First and ten, Buccaneers from their 32-yard line. Williams, the young man with the rifle arm. Second year, pitch to Ricky Bell. Bell gets outside to the 40. Run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That's 13 yards and another Tampa Bay first down. They're making it look easy. Two plays. Two first downs. Well, you can't arm tackle Ricky Bell. He's starting to love to play professional football this year. He's been killed the first couple of years. You could see the great ability going down the sideline. 13 yards, first down Tampa Bay. Frank Reed pushed him out. Bell with 691 yards rushing, fifth in the league. He's already broken the old club record. You know the strength of this offense, Frank. That whole starting center, the two guards, and the two tackles have not been hurt at all this year. They've started every game. Equit to about the 49-yard line. Pick up a four on that play. And uh, I guess you could say law of averages has caught up to the Buccaneers there because in the last two years, prior to this one, I think they led the league in players on injured reserve. They had 15 one year and 17 another year. And this year, the only one I can recall offhand is uh, their punter, Dave Green, who was hurt in preseason. Yeah. Everything is in place and falling right for Well, injuries are just so important. You just can't underestimate the importance of not having the key injuries. Second down, call it seven. Buccaneers from there, 49. Williams drilling a bullet, and Mucker makes the catch and goes out of bounds at the 34-yard line of the Falcons. Now, beautiful. Beautiful blocking, Frank, up front. Here comes the blitz. You'll see him stunning. Now, watch how much time Williams has to throw the football. They got a man-to-man -man set up on the outside. Ricky Bias is covering. Not too bad a coverage. Larry Mucker picks up 17 big yards. Here it is again. Now look. Here's Ricky Bell pushing the linebacker to the outside. Nobody's close to Williams. First and 10 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta 34-yard line. Owens in motion. Bell up the middle, maybe a yard. Edgar Fields, number 77. Jams it for the red clad Atlanta Falcons. A reminder this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience and any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Atlanta Falcons and the National Football League is prohibited. Buffalo has a field goal on New England in the first period by Mickemeyer. Second down, nine. Tampa at the Atlanta 33 yard line. Doug Williams, who played eight games last year before being injured, giving to Ricky Bell. Atlanta's defense, Wilson from Wina, number 74, breaking through to make the stop for a loss of the play, back to about the 35. Good penetration by Tom Wina that time. 
Just a blown assignment up front, too. Somebody missed him. He really penetrated across the line untouched. Third down. Buccaneers now finding the going a little tougher. They need 12 for the first down. The officials have it marked now, at 36. Frank, now the thing for Williams to do is check the linebackers in the safety. Watch the blitz. They're hunching up right there. No blitz. Williams, all the time in the world to throw the football over the middle and incomplete. Jimmy Giles, number 88, the tight end, was the intended receiver. But Williams had all day to throw it that time. Giles, who made a couple of big catches against Minnesota last week. So the Buccaneers, a little bit out of field goal range, going to be punting. Tom Blanchard, averaging 40 yards a kick. Dennis Pearson is deep, standing at about the 10. He's the number two punt returner in the league. Bounces at the five, and they tip it, and let's see if they're rolling one end of the end zone or not. I believe they did. Looked like he had his body in the end zone. Very close. Touchback. So Atlanta will get the ball at the 20-yard line. Falcons will take over at that point. No score in the football game as we have four minutes, 41 seconds left to play in the opening period. Dallas out of the huddle and ready on first and 10 at their own 38. No score. Cowboys first in offense. The Giants last in offense. You wouldn't know it so far. Set, one way, went back the other, got a couple, no more. John Mendenhall again on the tackle. Oh, and to play the 34, you've got to have a nose guard that is like a rat. By that I mean he can straighten up the offensive center, fight pressure, not get finessed, and slide into it. Now watch right in front of number 12. Fitzgerald's battling, but Mendenhall does not give ground and slide right over at the last minute. Tough place to play, but he can do it. Not many rats can do that. <laughs> Second down. They need eight for first. Stahlbach drops. Dorsett catches. Ducks under to about the 45. Fumble. I think the ball was dead. It hit the ground when Dorsett hit the ground. That's what the officials say. Yeah, they agree with you. Dan Lloyd made the hit. There is Hollywood. Tomas. It's a nice coat. He hurt his back, and now he's got a hamstring pull, and, uh, you know, he's such a great player that when he says he can't go full speed, Landry said, no problem. Guy Brown will do the best job he can in there. Good thing he's on the shady side of the field. That coat would smother him. Third and three. But then it's not hunting season. Maybe it is. Maybe that's how he got it. Stall back again to throw. Looking around. Behind Roger. Billy Joe Dupree has it. And... Held on. Billy Joe might be shaken just a bit. And now the officials say it was knocked loose by Beasley Reese and Brad Van Pelt. And Billy Joe could not hang on. That's two weeks in a row now that Billy Joe has had the ball and put it away and then have it stolen. Remember in the Pittsburgh game? Yes. All right, watch this play. Number 89. And Roger has to do this while he's dancing. And romance a good throw. I'll tell you, the Giants secondary and linebackers are beginning to like that 34. Van Pelt dug it. Never did quite get it put away. Bobby Hammond back deep for the Giants and Danny White into the game for Dallas. There's little Bobby Hammond. Who is little in stature, but not in heart. Danny White in a battle with Dave Jennings to see who is the NFC's leader. That's a good kick. Hammond up with a fair catch. Single drops it. And they're still chasing it. Giants got it. I think that, uh, that the Giants' own player, I believe Beasley Reese, got tangled up with the returner. And I'll tell you, everybody that goes back and tries to help the punt return man has got to find out where the ball is. You can see Reese sort of hit his foot, lost the concentration. Otis McKinney struggling to come up with the football, and he finally does make the recovery. So there is still no score at Giant Stadium with 5.08 left first period. Very uh, private man there, Chuck Knoll, who if he wins today will tie Vince Lombardi. Uh, 95 wins, 14th on the all-time list. He doesn't have uh, 
too many clever quotes. He says, when the postgame show is better than the game, then it's wrong. Bradshaw flipping it deep. Look out. Might be an interception. It nearly was. Ken Houston covering Franco Harris. And Franco had his back to the ball, Hank. Eh? Yes, he didn't look like he anticipated uh, catching the ball at all. He was running downfield. Looked like he was clearing out the area for the outside receiver, Lynn Swan. But when the ball was thrown to him, he wasn't expecting it at all. And it fell incomplete. Second down, 10. Steelers on their 45. What a day for football. Beautiful, crisp. Buffalo leading New England 3 0. The Patriots have trouble. Always at Buffalo. 39 yard field goal by the Bills. Second down, 10. For Mr. Terry Bradshaw. Look at the mustache. Right down the middle, it's complete for first down to Randy Grossman, the little tight end of Temple, who just caught his seventh pass of the season. First down, Steelers. They're on the Redskin 44. Yeah, I was surprised. I went in to see Terry today, and uh, I saw that uh, soup strainer. Yeah, I saw the soup strainer. I'm, and uh, he's going to not only go on a country and western tour singing, but now he's in the gospel singing, and uh, he's going to do some gospel singing this winter. He's the institution here, as you just saw. No score, first and ten, Steelers in Redskins territory on the Washington 44. Franco Harris, they got him, no game. He's hit there by Coy Bacon. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, you can teach number 79 Bacon to be better against the run. He's a tremendous pass rusher, but he's playing the run much better this year. You know, one thing that Pittsburgh does extremely well, as well as anybody in professional football, they like the trap, especially in even spacing that's being employed here by the Washington Redskins, which means that you have two tackles over the offensive guard and a middle linebacker over the offensive center. Second down, 10 for the Steelers. Receivers go out. Short one, nearly picked off there by number 59, Brad Dusich. Intended for Lynn Swan. Now it's third and 10. Philadelphia over the Browns, 6-0. Jaworski to Carmichael, so Carmichael keeps that streak going. That's 106 for him. Point was missed. We had the Eagles last week. Their coach was very unhappy for a meal. And I bet that club's fired up today, Hank. Yeah, they should be. They better be because uh, they have to bounce back and uh, continue to win if they hope to be in the playoffs like they were a year ago. That time Bradshaw threw a very poor pass. He was falling away and threw it into the turf. The 106th in a row for Carmichael. Let me correct myself. Third down, 10 for the Steelers. Deep drop by Bradshaw. He could move around, too. He flips it out there. Grossman has it on a comeback. Randy Grossman came back to meet the ball. He had driven the receiver almost inside the five and then came back and worked himself wide open. He was split on the left side, working on Kenny Houston, who normally is a strong safety. He had him covering man for man. Terry jumped out of the pocket, had plenty of time, was finally approached by a defensive lineman, but by that time, the uh, tight end Grossman was able to turn Houston completely around and he was wide open made the catch first down Steelers on the Redskin 11 no score 520 to go in the first period our first scoring trap out they go Bradshaw second look and it's touchdown and who's got it Stallworth John Stallworth Makes the grab. That's what's so great about having a quarterback move as well as Bradshaw. He was been back into the pocket, got some pressure. Watch him standing there nicely, gets some pressure, jumps over to the left side, away from all the traffic, throws across to the middle of the field to Stallworth, who maneuvered himself to be wide open in the end zone, made the catch, and they go ahead six to nothing. Matt Barr's kick. Up and good. So, the Steelers went 55 yards in six plays. Our first score finds Pittsburgh leading 7-0.
Here's the reason this is a touchback in Atlanta's football on the 20. Watch 87, Larry Mucker. Watch his left foot right across the end line. Now he keeps the ball out, but his body is in the end zone. End zone. It's ruled a touchback. First and ten for the Atlanta Falcons at their 20-yard line. Andrews and Kane in the backfield behind Bartkowski. Lynn Kane out to the 21-yard line, stacked up by David Lewis, number 57. Philadelphia. And that's a touchdown pass to Harold Carmichael. He has now established a new NFL record. He's caught at least one pass in 105 straight games. 106, 105, 106, would, have 105 that's right. would have tied it last week. That was held by Danny Obramowitz, and the extra point was missed there, folks. We don't know if the touchdown catch was his first catch of the day, but obviously he's caught at least one. Would have been kind of nice if it was a touchdown. So he holds the new NFL record for most uh, games in which he has caught passes. Kane going the other way. Tampa defense won't let him get outside. Leroy Selman, 63. Curtis Jordan, number 25, over on the far side. Ooh, great block by number 70. Dave Scott, I think, here leading it around the left side. There's, There's big Leroy. Leroy. Leroy's a banker. Did you know that now down Tampa? Very mm -hmm. distinguished gentleman during the week with the three-piece suit and the whole thing. He's got enough money to start his <laughs> own bank. <laughs> he probably does. Friday, you fall, Oklahoma. Third down, six needed for the first down. Falcons at their 24. Barkowski looking over the middle and incomplete and intended for Jim Mitchell, number 86, the tight end. Boy, a good rush put on by Tampa. They set the inside linebacker, Richard Wood, pressuring the quarterback again. Barkowski didn't have too much time to set up. They're actually doing a little more blitzing than Atlanta is here in the early going. Right. They haven't gone to Jim Mitchell too much. He's only caught four passes all year long, usually on passing situations. Danny Reese, number 46, the deep man who disdains the fair catch. He has gone 51, 51 consecutive punts without calling for a fair catch. James to do the punting. Nice kick. It will be returned from the 33. Not far, however. As he has swarmed under Tom Moriarty, number 45, leading the specialty team charge of the Atlanta Falcons. 43 on the punt, just a couple of yards on the return. We've got a timeout here late in the first period. 3.07 left in the quarter, no score. That's Nick Myers, 39-yard uh, field goal for Chuck Knox's team in the first. And Jaworski to Carmichael for a touchdown pass. They missed the extra point against Cleveland. And Phil Sims with good protection. Fires down the middle for Ernest Gray and got it. First down, Giants. Out to almost the 35, Aaron Kyle. Good throw. 21-yard pickup. And it's a second pass. This one across the middle. I think the story on Ernest Gray, the young man from Memphis State, is that he had great speed, but he might not catch it. And now the reports have all changed. They say he has soft hands. And after he catches it, he's a lot like Tony Hill, which is quite an endorsement. Well, he's some kind of a young receiver. Draft choices number one and two in that combination. Here's Billy Taylor at the line of scrimmage met by D.D. Lewis. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Giants and the National Football League is prohibited. The Cowboy defense now has 26 sacks and a million hurry-ups. So don't ever feel sorry for Harvey Martin, Randy White, Larry Cole, and Stalls. And that, they're a good bunch. Harvey, the captain of that group. Second and nine. Sims goes back. Fires to the outside. Intended for Gary Shirk, covered by Guy Brown. He was the nearest. Guy Brown, one of those good athletes on that Dallas roster that didn't get too much of a chance to play, but now he is. Benson, number 60, working against Harvey Martin. Harvey's an outside rusher that now has picked up the inside move. Benson this time keeps enough cloth in his hands to uh, retard the big defensive end. Third and nine, and look out for this one. Dallas on the other third down situation, faked the blitz and didn't. Let's see what they do this time. They do. Picked off by Cliff Harris. To the 30, down inside the 30. Dallas will have 
good, good field position from there. Billy Taylor made the tackle, but Cliff Harris got the rebound. I talked to Cliff before the game. I said, what do you think about Sims? He said he's a lot like Bradshaw, but he's young. This time, the young man from Moorhead State throws it into traffic. There are at least three people now that are looking for this play. It's Spike. Harris gets a little help from Aaron Kyle on the outside, and 43's in a lot of it. Randy Hughes got the hand on it, and it was he who deflected it. That's Cliff Harris's first interception of the year, too. That's an amazing statistic, isn't it? Dorsett and Newhouse then behind Roger Staubach as Drew Pearson started in motion, and Newhouse takes the handoff. And Robert Newhouse struggles down to about the 20 before Gary Jeter stops him. Ernie Stotner talking to the it's defense. Right. One single back or Brad for me. Or Brad for me. I want to strong side. Put back in place. Get after that. That's that guy, right? You know what? That's right? right? about 38 kilometers. Yeah. See that the questions are asked by Dennis Thurman, answered by Stotner. We don't want to eavesdrop, but that's interesting. Yeah. It'll be second and three. Newhouse got seven. And now Laidlaw is the fullback. Set is the ball carrier. Dorsett oh. down inside to 15. Brad Van Pelt on the tackle, but Dorsett got a Dallas first down. Pittsburgh picking up where they were last week. It's Brad shot at Johnny Stallworth. An 11-yard TD pass. Now watch Dupre, number 89, go out and take Van Horn on. Dupre is a great blocking tight end. Van Horn makes the tackle with bad ribs. I wonder if this hurt him. Line of scrimmage, the Giant 14. Tony Dorsett with an impressive year. Had a struggle last week. And now Newhouse picking a hole, goes inside the 10 to about the 9, where he is cracked by Brian Kelly. Yes, Newhouse has been the enigma, if I can say that, of the team because he had a great opening game against St. Louis. He had 109 yards. Now he's limping again a little bit. He's taken so many bumps and bruises. Uh, I wonder how long Robert can continue to do that. He got four yards on that carry, so make it second and six. Ball just outside the 10 yard line. No score as yet. 150 left first quarter. Roger Stallback. Ex Heisman Trophy winner. Gibbs on the inside hand off to Garcia. He cannot get outside. John Mendenhall again. What a game. What a play by 64. There are a lot of nose people. Charlie Johnson with the Eagles. They're really fast, but watch this move. Fitzgerald even tries to cut him. He leapfrogs that and catches Dorsett from behind by the foot. That's a great play. He only got a yard. And so it'll be third and five. Ron Springs has entered. Stallback uh, does not operate this time in the shotgun. He's got Dorsett and Springs behind him. Looking for Drew Pearson, and he can't get it. Terry Jackson. Wow. Good coverage. Here's a guy that used to beat uh, on the Giants like a drum, Drew Pearson. It's a quick slam. Once in a while, Terry Jackson plays receivers too close and gets the interference call. But this is an incredibly good play in the end zone. A lot of guts here. Yeah. You're looking right into Staubach now. Ball is thrown pretty well. This is just good defense right here. Get on it. Good play. Starbuck never took his eyes off the man he was going to. Drew Pearson. And Raphael Septien with Danny White holding will go from about 27 yards to put the first points on the board. He's perfect from this distance. And he still is. Dallas three. The Giants nothing as the referee Jerry Mark Bright gives you that invocation, indication. So, at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, the Dallas Cowboys break on top, if you can call it that, 3 nothing. As you look at Steve Barkowski, you can also see that the Steelers have picked up where they left off against Dallas last week. Bradshaw to Stallworth, 11-yard touchdown pass. No score in our game. Tampa Bay with the football, first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Buccaneers haven't had the ball much. Nice fake by Williams, and he goes long. That is caught, and that is at the goal line. Owens was down at the one-yard line. Well, he controlled this pass better than anyone in the National Football League. What a 
beautiful executed play. Good pass protection. 64 yards. The ball's going to be marked at the one-yard line. Look at the nice, easy rhythm, and he really threw this ball in the air right on target. Morris Owens, that's Rollin Lawrence, stops him right there. A good call by the referee. Mark it at the one. 64 yards on the bomb from Williams to Owens. That's a combination that has produced a lot of points for the Buccaneers in days past. They put Johnny Davis in there at running back along with Ricky Bell. And Ricky Bell line gets situation. The Bell does get the call and he gets the touchdown. Tampa Bay is on the scoreboard. Bell scores his eighth touchdown of the year. It's his sixth touchdown rushing. Ricky Bell, everybody in this ballpark knows that Ricky Bell's going to get the call when it's like this. Up and over. Tampa Bay's first score. Extra point coming. Minnesota last week held the Buccaneers in a first and goal from the one-yard line on four straight plays. And the second time they got down there, they didn't fool around. They just gave it to Bell the first time, and he got in. One of the Falcon players injured. That drive took just two plays, covered 65 yards and 59 seconds on the clock. I think that's Ray Easterling, number 32. Boy, Easterling's had some problems this year. He really messed up his arm on a blitz against the Rams earlier this year and is still continuing to play. There's Ricky Bell, really come into his own this year. Ricky has performed a lot better at home, though, than he does on the road. Averaged only 60 yards in five road games compared to 98 yards per home game. But every time he gains a yard, every time he scores a touchdown, it is a new Tampa Bay team record. He has to average 44 yards per game the rest of the way to reach 1,000. And if he stays healthy, there's no question about it. Well, Easterling still being tended to. He hurt his arm, as we said, against uh, L.A. earlier this year and is still having problems with it, but continuing to play. And they say that's one of the reasons that the Falcons have had problems on defense because he hasn't been 100%. Very valued member of that secondary. Damon Bennett kind of halfway read the Falcons the riot act this week, saying uh, the defense, you know, most of the guys just have not been playing as good as they were last year. That's all that's to it. O'Donohue to try the extra point. It's good. So the Buccaneers are out in front with two minutes, eight seconds left to play in the opening period at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Buccaneers seven, Falcons nothing. Matt Barr will kick off to Buddy Hardiman. Monday night on CBS. The White Shadow, followed by MASH and WKRP P in Cincinnati, all on CBS Monday night. Here's Matt Barr's kick, a high one. Hardeman waiting on the four. He's out to the 10, to the 15, finds a hole, and is racked up on the 23. And he is hit there by number 30, Larry Anderson, a cornerback and a kick returner. Redskins ball on their 23-yard line with a first down. The Redskins have had trouble scoring in the first quarter. Only twice in their last 22 games have they scored a touchdown in the first period. Up to come. Heisman, the quarterback. Malone and Riggin are the running back. Bugs and Thompson, the wide receivers. Don Warren is the tight end. Play action. Out it goes to Bugs. Bugs on a hitch pattern. Nabbed by L.C. Greenwood, number 68. And they're talking to Kenny Houston there. That was a nice looking play action. They faked to the left. The backs were leaning to the left. He faked to the left, through the right, uh, away from the inside pursuit of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and uh, picked up a nice five yard chunk on the play. Second down. Five to go, 28-yard line of the Redskins. Their ball. Not much up that middle with Joe Green and Gary Dunn in there. It's still the steel curtain here. They've allowed their opponents just a shade over three yards of rush this year. Joe Green isn't the dominating pass rusher. He used to be number 75, but he still plays the run very tough, smart. Sheds blockers. Greenwood's had a comeback at left end. Dunn and Furness 
Our younger players, Banasak and White alternator right in. They use six defensive linemen on alternator, except for Green and Greenwood. Third down, three. Heisman nearly intercepted. A flag is down on the play. J.T. Thomas banging hard in a Harmon. They threw a flag on it. Let's see what it is. Our first penalty. Looked like it was a penalty against the Steelers. That's holding against the Steelers. It'll be an automatic Redskin first down. The score is 7 nothing. Steelers leading. 3.44 to play in the first period. Holding. Number 49 defense. First. That's on the rookie Dwayne Woodruff. University of Louisville. The starting place of Johnson. Woodruff making his first start. A year ago he was in a Louisville hospital with a brain concussion. In fact he played with Hank Stram's son. Two. At Louisville. First down. Benny Malone on a cutback. They gang up on him on the 37 or 38 yard line. Donnie Shell, Lambert's in there. Second down, seven. Boy, the pursuit of the Pittsburgh team that time was excellent. And it's very difficult to take the ball from the left side of the ball to the right side of the ball. Uh, it takes so much time. That by the time you get there as a ball carrier, you have to hold your block so long that the Pittsburgh Steeler defense is there waiting for you. And that's what happened on the last play. Longest run against the Steelers this year has been 21 yards in scrimmage. That was by Dorsett last week. Second down, eight. Riggin outside. He can get outside for a fullback. Finally, Donnie Shell drove him out of bounds on the 43-yard line. A gain of five for the Redskins, and that will leave them third and two. That was a counter play that time run by Wigan, uh, Riggins. He made a fake to the right and then came back to his left, did a good job of outrunning the pursuit from the inside and uh, made a nice gain on the play. He has a chance for another 1,000-yard uh, season. All right, they have uh, Har uh, Harmon and Hardeman as the backs. Third down and two. Will they pass or run for it? They're going to pass for it. Guys, but look, he has a first down. He hit his receiver coming out of the backfield, Buddy Hardeman, and uh, he was pulled down by Jack Lambert. Hardeman from Iowa State, first-year player in the NFL, came out of the Canadian League. There was a great illustration of the high percentage pass that we were talking about earlier that you brought up, Kurt. He just went down just enough for the first down, worked on a linebacker. He got the ball to him right at the numbers, and, and of course, it was good for the first down. Now the Browns have bounced back. Brian Sipe, 21 yard pass to Rucker. They lead the Eagles 7 6 in the first quarter. First down, Redskins on their own 47 yard line. Steelers ahead 7 0. Out of the backfield is Benny Malone. That doesn't go for much. He's dropped on his uh, 48 yard line by Jack Hammond, Jack Lambert. The Redskins this week worked on one thing better pass protection. Dallas leads the Giants 3 0. The Skins gave up seven sacks last week to the New Orleans Saints. Frustrating game for the Skins. 21 plays they ran inside the New Orleans 10-yard line, yet they came out of the game with only 10 points. And the Steelers have intercepted 19 passes and have 24 sacks going into this game. Second down eight for the Redskins. Hardeman and Harmon are in there now. As the setbacks. Out they go. There's a crossing pattern, and Bugs can't hold on to it. Bugs started down and then crossed over in the middle. That's Jack Ham. If you pick one player in the NFL who you said could almost be a perfect player for his position, many would pick Jack Ham as an outside linebacker. Yes, he's exactly what you would order through the Sears catalog if you had a chance to. Of all the linebackers at the Penn State campus has turned into the NFL. He's the best one. And there's a lot of good ones. Robin Cole becomes a fourth linebacker. We might look for him to blitz. Third down eight for the Redskins from their 48. Yeah. 
Bull was blitzing. The pass is complete for a first down. Nice catch by Clarence Harmon coming out of the backfield. And he was nipped around the ankles by Jack Lambert. And Joe Harmon is an excellent pass receiving back. Yes, he is. And Joe Theismann deserves a lot of credit. They were in a double wing formation that time. A blitz was coming, coming inside. He got rid of the ball in good shape to the outside. Harmon made the catch. Another linebacker, halfback related play. And it's another good gain. First and ten again for the Washington Redskins. That's radar foot Mark Mosley. Keeping his leg loose enough. First down Redskins on the Steeler 39. Seven nothing Steelers ahead in the first period. A pump. He's going deep, deep, deep. He's got him. He hits him on the four. And that is Ricky Thompson, number 83. The pump fink set it up. They were looking for the shorty, and then he unloaded the Thompson. Yes, he has good field position. Backs went to the left. Fullback stayed in the block. He gave him a pump. A lot of room to throw. Throw Threw over the top perfectly. Ricky Thompson, number 83, makes the catch. But a beautiful play, and he licked the rookie, Dwayne Woodruff, on the play. All right, let's see what the Redskins do now in scoring range. As we just said, they didn't do it against the Saints last week inside the 10. Now they have a first and goal as the quarter ends here in Three River Stadium with a score. The Pittsburgh Steelers seven and the Washington Redskins nothing. Raphael Septian will kick off for Dallas. He just hit a 27-yard field goal to make it 3-0 Cowboys. Bobby Hammond standing back at the giant goal line. I have not yet figured out what the holdup is. Something wrong with the communications uh, we understand on the benches. Have you ever seen a better day though for what we consider to be an outstanding football game? It was perfect. Couldn't be better. Not much wind. It's Hammond. And Hammond is taken down by Aaron Mitchell. A good open field tackle. Three nothing Dallas with 48 seconds left. In the first quarter, Tampa Bay seven nothing over Atlanta. That's a Ricky Bell one yard touchdown for John McKay. Cleveland is now uh, leading Philadelphia. That's a Brian Sipe to Reggie Rucker 21 yard touchdown pass. Cleveland's tough too. They can put some points on the board, and they gain a lot of yards. Here's Billy Taylor banging Ooh. off the right side and spinning for about four. Bob Brunig took him down. The great thing about the Giants, four wins in a row, they've all been different. Uh, against Tampa, uh, Taylor had 148 yards rushing. Then they steal a fumble to beat Kansas City. They went out and just played a good physical game against the Rams and whipped them. And uh, uh, you, they find a different way to win. But to do that against Dallas, I think you have to legitimately put points on the board from the line of scrimmage. I don't think you can steal them from Dallas. Second and seven. I don't think so either. Gary Shirt, the tight end on the left, as Doug Coder tried to get uh, adequate yards for a first down and did not come near. Talk to Jerry Tubbs about Guy Brown starting in place of Henderson at that linebacking spot. And all he said was if he doesn't worry too much, he can play with anybody. He surely is a fine looking athlete. He's got some big shoes to fill. Dallas, 3 0 over New York. Second series, no gain. Running him up the middle. That's not a heavy hit. Dennis Pearson, number 81, is the deep man for the Atlanta Falcons. As O'Donohue kicks off. Nice high kick driving Pearson. Two yards deep into the end zone. Out to the 10, 15, 20. Hit as he crossed the 20 yard line and dropped at the 22. Rick Bonus, number 53, for the Buccaneers in the stop. Williams, Doug Williams is now three out of four for 93 yards. Dallas on the scoreboard against the Giants up in the Meadowlands. And Cleveland has taken a 7 to 6 lead over the Eagles at Philadelphia. Brian Sipe, his 19th touchdown pass of the year. He leads the NFL in that category. There's the statistics on the Tampa Bay scoring drive. Didn't take long. 64 of those yards covered on the pass from Williams to Owens. Bartkowski 
as the Falcons move from their 21. Back to throw. He's got a man wide open. It's Payne at the 40-yard line. Fumbles the ball at the 49. And Tampa Bay, I believe, has it. Buccaneers recover the fumble at the 50. Cecil Johnson's got the football for Tampa Bay, number 56. The right outside linebacker. We may have a penalty on the play. Let's hold everything. Well, uh, Lynn Kane was wide open. Barkowski looked around, found him. Roughing the passer will be the call, perhaps. And obviously, it looks like it's going to go against Atlanta. They wouldn't be bringing it back, so the turnover will be negated. And Atlanta will get to keep the football. Let's get the call here from the referee, Ben Dry. Personal foul, roughing the quarterback, number 63 defense at the first down. I see, we got some good camera work coming up for you folks. Stayed right on. There's Leroy Sellin with that big right paw, hit him on the neck. Of course, they're calling that very, very closely now in the NFL. Really didn't hit him that hard, but once you hit him up above the neck in that head area, they'll call it. Kane could have held on to the football. That penalty would have been tacked on after the completion. The ball would have been about the 25-yard line. First and 10, Falcons at their 35-yard line. Driving out to near the 40-yard line is Andrews, Wally Chambers, number 60 in the stop. Time of possession, interesting, in the first period. 7.41 for Atlanta, Tampa, 2 minutes, 11 seconds. But look who's leading, Tampa Bay. And Buffalo's got an early first quarter lead. Six to nothing over New England. Dallas, a field goal by Rafael Septien. Is that right, Frank? You know that. You're from Dallas. You know Rafael. Rafael Septien. Something like that. Something like that. Right. Second down, five. Falcons at their 40. Look at that. That was Leroy Selman, number 63. In case that Lynn Kane wanted to get his number, Kane the ball carrier, number 21. That'll be your best hit of the game so far. Watch, Watch it. 78. He went to the inside. That's Mike Ken, 78. I don't know if that was his man, but Leroy Selman went inside of Mike Ken, the left tackle. Nobody touched him. Instead of second and five, it's now third down. Close to eight needed for the first down. There's big Leroy. Francis wide to the right side. Jenkins is split to the left. A lot of stunning by the Tampa Bay defense before the snap. Good protection for Barkowski. Goes over the middle for Mitchell. He hung on to the ball, but I believe he was short. Of the, let's see where they mark it. That'll be very close for the first down. He was shoved back another five yards. He's got it. Think he's got it? Yeah. Sure does. Falcons get the first down at the 46-yard line. Talking about Wallace Francis, number 89, the wide receiver. He needs seven more receptions to break the team mark by a wide receiver, which was set some 10 years ago by Paul Flatley. That was the gun. That's the end of the first period of play here at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers leading the Atlanta Falcons 7 to nothing. Kurt Gowdy, Hank Stram, second period coming up. Steelers leading 7-0. If I were Washington in this situation on a first and goal, I would throw the ball on first and ten. They're very hard to run against in this uh, goal line area, but this would be a good time for a play action or some kind of a pass on first and four. Joe Theismann up on the Steeler four-yard line. Harmon, Benny Malone are the backs, and he's going to roll. He throws it high. It's incomplete. And he was passing on first down, but he had to hurry it. Second down, four to go for a Redskin touchdown. He Thomas and Show were pouring in there on him. Yes, uh, they didn't go for the fake at all. Harmon faked up the middle. Had they faked to the same side of where they were trying to throw the football, I think it would have been more effective, and he might have been able to hold the outside linebackers a little bit better than he did by faking Harmon up the middle and uh, relieving the outside linebackers of the fake pressure. All right, they got a full house backfield. Malone, Wiggins, and Harmon. Now they put Harmon on a wing. Second and four for a Redskin touchdown. That's Riggins. He may go. He's in there. They took advantage that time when they got inside the 10. Boy, they did, and they made it look easy. He faked 
inside, started over the right tackle, jumped to the outside, and went into the end zone without anybody touching him whatsoever. Good takeoff by the offensive line, the right side, but you see Riggins went into the middle area and bounced to the outside. This is something that he does extremely well. So after being frustrated last week, the Redskins cash in today. Joe Theismann, one of the few quarterbacks in the league who still holds for place kicks. Mosley, that was a low one, and Mosley boots it. That is 19 out of 19 for Mosley this year. And the Redskins cap a 76-yard drive in 11 plays and have tied this game up at 7 all. Second field goal for Mickemeyer, a 40-yarder, and Buffalo's up. Third and three, and look on the left side of the Dallas defensive line at number 78. That is John Dutton. And he is like a house. That's how big he is. Third and three. The trap is successful, and Billy Taylor gets a giant first down before Guy Brown makes the tackle. Remember now that young Taylor got 148 against Tampa because the outside men overrushed and overstunted. And this time Dutton came early and by in the inside trap play by the guard. I believe it was Benson from the tackle spot trapping down inside that did such a good job. It's hard to fool these guys. Dutton is out and the veteran Larry Cole is back in. He stalls number 65 next to him. And Sims is going to throw. And does. And has a man open. And Billy Taylor slipped down, got back up. You know where this young man spends most of his time? Over at Perkins' house, <laughs> the coach. I understand he gets a pizza and goes over there every night, and they just talk football. And the way he reads coverages for a rookie, I would have to think Perkins is working a lot with his young quarterback. It is showing results, but it doesn't sound very exciting. Well, anchovies one night, pepperoni the next, you know. <laughs> Four to 42. Dallas leads 3-0. They flex that defense again. Cole back off the line of scrimmage. Stalls right up on it. And Billy Taylor finds some running room, and Cliff Harris finally makes the tackle. A sluggish looking play when it began, but it developed into a substantial gain. First down, Giants. Watch the good block by number 74, Tom Neville to the right. He gets outside, cuts Larry Cole down with a great bit of footwork, and Taylor cuts it back inside. Of course, Taylor never had a chance to realize his great potential until that Tampa Day, uh, day against Tampa. It looks to me like he's feeling his oats now. He has been waiting for a chance. A young man from Texas Tech, eight carries, 34 yards. Doug Coder is in the backfield with it. It's a fake to Taylor this time, and a pass. Larry Shirt makes the catch. A uh, diving effort. He stopped by Randy Hughes, but a first down for the Giants. And watch, watch young Sims stay in the pocket now. To the left of your screen, Harvey Martin puts on a late rush. Here's the fake inside. Watch Sims stay there. Not look too much at number 79, which is rather a frightening sight. Maybe that ball was delivered. Couldn't have been thrown any better. And if it hadn't been perfect, it might have been picked off. First down. At the Dallas 40. Cowboys lead the Giants 3 0. And Billy Taylor again straight ahead for good wow. yardage. Bob Brunig on the bottom of the tackling pile. But watch him drive him back. All right, this time in the flex, they drive right at the bubble. Clack and Van Horn work on Randy White and Harvey Martin cutting off that stunt. And Brunig just gets into the flow and can't stop the thing. That's a good power driving play. Good enough for five yards. Line of scrimmage will be now the 35. Second down. Doug Coder this time gets the call. He'll get down to about the 31 or 32. Not enough for a first down, but enough to make it third and short. Randy White and Larry Cole, the tacklers. You're looking at Jeter talking to the coaches on the sidelines at big number 70. But you know, actually, Dallas, while playing good defense, especially on the scoreboard, 
they have allowed quite a bit per rush. It looks like the Giants may have decided, well, if we can keep the ball and rush the football a little bit, at least uh, Starbucks offense won't have the ball a lot. Washington, Pittsburgh now tied. John Riggins from four yards out. Boy, I'll tell you, Pardee is doing miracles. Billy Taylor in motion, and Sims is going to put it up if he has time. And he does. Perkins, touchdown, Giants. A 32-yard touchdown pass from Phil Sims to Johnny Perkins. Post. Again, watch number 11 set those feet. He's got a great strong arm. He hit Gray with one against the win against Kansas City. The ball is hanging a little bit. Perkins makes a great catch and beats Randy Hughes to the end zone. Right between Randy Hughes and Cliff Harris. And a good run after he caught it. 6-3. Joe Danello hits the extra point. Randy Dean was the holder. And the Giants lead 7-3. A fourth touchdown pass for Perkins and might be the biggest one he's ever made up here. Second quarter. Steve Barkowski, first period stats, one out of three for nine yards. We start the second quarter, Atlanta with the football, first and ten at their 45, a blitz by Tampa Bay, the pass is intercepted. Lewis at the 45-yard line takes it back into Atlanta's end of the field. And the Buccaneers do what they do best, and that is cause turnovers. There's another bet for all pro honors right there. David Lewis, six foot five, he weighs about 255. He goes back and covers the outside. Now watch Wallace Francis. He does not continue the pattern, Frank. I think it was a square out. They had a zone on. Lewis really got back on the interception. Looked like he was the only guy open. Sure did. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't a red shirt around that pass. Well, Barkowski a little disgusted. He went from hero to goat in a big hurry on Monday night with that last interception. Tampa Bay trying to capitalize. Williams looking for a receiver, tries to dump it off to Eckwood. Everybody was covered downfield. He had Hagens going deep and Morris Owens going deep. Possession time in the first period. Atlanta had the ball 12 minutes, 49 seconds, and Tampa had it 2 minutes, 11 seconds. Mm. Isn't that something? That one bomb and one turned bomb. this game around. Tom Pridemore. Well, Washington and Pittsburgh are tied up now, seven apiece. John Riggins has scored from four yards out for Washington. Bradshaw to Stallworth countered for Pit, uh, Pittsburgh. Our score, seven to nothing. Tampa Bay Buccaneers have the ball at the Atlanta 44-yard line. They make it the 49-yard line. Eckwood. Maybe a yard. Jeff Yates, number 79, making the stop. There it is. Seven apiece. Redskins, Steelers. Yates, young man that uh, came on when Claude Humphrey retired for Atlanta last year, did a pretty good job filling that slot at left end defensively. Third down. 14 needed for the first down. Doug Williams again going long. He's going for Hagens, and Hagens couldn't hold it at the goal line. Had him out there. Oh, what a beautiful pass. He put it right there. Isaac Hagens had beat this man on a little post. Ricky Bias again, and all year long, Ricky Bias has really been beaten on the corner. But you give a quarterback like this with such a strong arm, he steps up into the pocket this much time, puts it right on the money. Look at here. Beautiful pitch. Should have been caught. Should have been caught, absolutely. Boy, what an arm he has, Frank. <laughs> Isn't that something? Deep man is Pearson. Blanchard. Almost blocked. Pretty good rush on him. Pearson lets it bounce and rolls inside the 10 and will be down at the six-yard line. Larry Mucker, number 87, down there quickly, covering for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So Atlanta will have some problems with field position as they start this drive early in the second period, trailing by a score of seven to nothing. Mosley will kick off 
on the five yard line. Mosley doesn't kick into the end zone usually. Larry Anderson from Terry Bradshaw School, Louisiana Tech. It's a high kick. Anderson will be crowded. He takes it on the six. He's up to the 15, to the 20, the 25. His forward motion stops about the 30, uh, 26 yard line. And down the cover is Ike Forte, who came up with the Patriots and then moved over to the Redskins. There's the story of the Washington scoring drive. By the way, that touchdown by the Redskins is only the second rushing touchdown allowed by the Steelers in the last five games. Pittsburgh's ball on their 26. First down. Harrison Thornton are behind Terry Bradshaw. Fake. Now the toss. Look at that crowd. There were three Redskins and two Steelers all bunched up together. Four Redskins, actually. Six of them jammed up against the Steelers sideline in front of the Steelers bench. And yeah. Bacon had put a hard rush on Terry Bradshaw. They must have blown the uh, pattern that time because they wouldn't be two, two receivers that close together on a pattern like the one they just threw. Really, there were five people in, in the sideline area, and one bullet would have gotten all of them. The Steelers... Despite their record, have made some mistakes this year, especially fumbling. They lead the league in losing the most fumbles, 17, seven against Cincinnati, the game they lost. I don't care how good you are, when you give it away, you can be beaten and beaten badly. Bradshaw, a quick drop. There he is, wide open. Look at this. Uh oh, one. He's, he's tremendous, not only getting the ball, but after he gets it, look out. And the great thing about him is, you know, that he knows exactly where the open areas are all the time. Bradshaw goes back, a very simple drop-back pattern. Protection is good. He, he runs inside, then outside, and has the presence to know where the pressure is coming from. That time ducked under a tackle, scampered upfield, and was finally tackled by Okowitz, number 52. 41 yards for Lynn Swan on that catch. He's averaged 19 yards a catch. He missed three games with a hamstring pull. They blitzed him. Stallworth at the 15. He was dancing around like a boxer. Whether shall I jab or come up with an uppercut, I've got to make some kind of a move. Finally, his move went out of bounds where Okowitz pushed him out. It's amazing the way Bradshaw got rid of this football. Here they come. Okowitz is coming right up the middle, but he got the ball up on top. The timing of the play was unbelievably good. Stallworth came back for the ball, made the catch in front of Joe Lavender, and it's another big play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is about the story the last four or five years for this club. Swan on one side, Stallworth on the other when they get in trouble, and Bradshaw unloads that strong right arm. Look out. They can put those points up in a hurry. First down. Bradshaw down the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Swan. No flag down. The Steelers are beefing. Lamar Parrish covering. Is there a better cornerback in the league than Lamar Parrish? I know if there is one. I haven't seen him. He's, he's uh, intercepted seven passes already. And he did a beautiful job on that last play of knocking the ball down. He, he ran inside and got one arm in front and knocked the ball down. It fell incomplete. Prince Valiant had just passed 32 yards to Johnny Perkins, and the Giants lead the Cowboys 7-3. They'll be going bananas there at the Meadowlands. Giants trying to win their fifth in a row. So second down, 10. Steelers on the Redskins 12. Quick pitch to Thornton. Thornton to the 10, and they bump him down at the 9. I thought that play was going to go for more when it first started, Hank. Yeah, they had linebackers stacked up inside. Uh, the call was a good one in that they went away from the overload of the linebackers inside, try to get outside to the slot formation, which means that both outside receivers are on the right side of the football in that case, but they didn't succeed in making a lot of yardage on the play. Cleveland's Cockcroft just kicked the 39-yard field goal. The Browns lead the Eagles 10-6 first period. And right now we have a third and seven. Steelers on the Redskin nine. The game was tied seven all early in the second third. 
Jim Smith then is a third wide receiver. They chase Bradshaw around. He throws it away. Stallworth was open at the goal line. Uh, if he'd have hit him, but I think he was just trying to unload. Uh, he he didn't see anyone. Yeah, he got pressure that time and just got rid of the football. Penalty against the Washington Redskins. <laughs> this will hurt the Redskins. They had that play stop. Moves the ball to the four. It's holding. It's an automatic first and goal. Outside. That's offside. Number 47 defense. Still third down. was on Ray Waddy who was in there as a defensive back now it is third down and a yard and a half to go the pass incomplete to Stallworth on a rollout fourth down and a yard and a half to go and here comes the field goal team on Matt Barr Craig Colquitt, the punter, will hold for him. Sid Thornton that time circled into the end zone, was totally uncovered, was wide open, but Terry rolled to his right and didn't see him on the play. This is a shorty, a 21-yard attempt by Matt Barr, who has kicked six out of 12 this season. That kick is up, it is good, and the Steelers have the lead back again. 21-yard field goal, 12.36 remaining in the half. It is Pittsburgh 10 and Washington 7. Phil Sims, a great young quarterback of the New York Giants, 32-yard pass to Johnny Perkins, has the Giants in front of Dallas, Frank, 7-3. How about that? I imagine those fans in the Meadowlands going a little nuts right now. Giants going for their fifth in a row, trying to get to 500. What was the last time this late in the year they had a chance to be 500? Kane takes the handoff, trying to keep his balance out to about the eight-yard line. Pickup of two. It'll be second down eight. Yes, we had a little chorus of boos rather early. The boo birds started in the first period here in Atlanta. Well, they've been waiting a long, long time. They got to the playoffs last year, so this year their hopes were high that this team would have a winning record and uh, be very close to the Rams. And the reason I think they're a little bit more disappointed, Frank, is the Rams have just been playing terrible off to a, the, their poor start, and Atlanta hasn't taken advantage. Kane cutting back inside gets across the 10 to the 11-yard line. Curtis Jordan, number 25 on the stop. It'll be third and five. Bartkowski looking over the situation. Bartkowski's been held below the 100-yard passing mark in each of his two previous starts against Tampa Bay. But as we said, uh, the Bucks. And the Falcons are one and one. Both the games the last two years being in Tampa. Last year Tampa won it. Blocked a punt as I recall. On third and five. Andrews trying to get outside. Does not make it back to the line of scrimmage. Well he's better on place going straight ahead Frank. Sliding to the hole. You get that big guy trying to go sideways to the line of scrimmage and it's tough for a fullback not that much speed Falcons will be punting out of their end zone now Cleveland has added to their lead over Philadelphia 39 yard field goal by Don Cockroft James to do the punting he recently moved past Don Chandler and Don Cockroft into eighth place in NFL history has a career total now of 668 punts his in-laws are from the Tampa area he has a little more interest than usual in this game. Nice high sailing uh, kick. Reese waiting for this one. Backs him up to the 40-yard line. Jammed up at the 42. I tell you, John James is a beauty to watch. He needs a good high long kick. He got his foot into it, turned it over 50 yards from the line of scrimmage. Excellent job by James from punting out of the end zone. Buccaneers will have the ball at their own 43 when we get back to play. A 
giant drive nine plays they went 75 yards they kept the ball five minutes and 14 seconds and the offensive line really goes to work for young Sims don't they they are battling for him what is this crazy looking running formation did you have these under Jim Lee Howe here with the Giants this no I don't kickoff? know what that is the coaches uh, communications we are told are malfunctioning and that's the reason for this delay CBS Sports Spectacular Next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time has the World Powerlifting Championships. And the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders, and that's the one series I would like to have done. It's the way life, life is, I guess. They're skating next week, I think. I certainly hope so. The World Series of Poker. I would have liked to have done that. I'd like to have won one time in Vegas, win anything. Steve Wilson and Ron Spring stand back deep for Dallas. I Joe Danello doing a split there for. Are both coaches are their phones out on both sides? Is it? Uh, I I don't know that. Maybe ITT is trying to take over the league. Or at least, whichever phones are down. Danello with his group around him. <laughs> Watch them go in motion. This is the old floating offensive kickoff. And the line drive from Danello goes in the direction of Ron Springs. Runner. And Springs out of bounds. The flag is down at about the 40 yard line. The Springs got out of bounds about the 38. A little fracas on the far sideline. I don't think the Giant fans here at the stadium will mind that a bit. It's been a long time since the, somebody in the blue uniform has taken it to the other people. Hit it a lick. Cowboys have beaten the Giants nine straight times. Clipping. Dallas. That's the first penalty of the game so far. A little fracas on the other sideline was unpenalized. Roger Staubach, by the way, is Personal 14 foul. and 1. Blocking below the waist, number 54 on the run back. First down. 54, of course, is Randy White. Roger Staubach, I started to stay, say, is 14 and 1 against the Giants. There's, Larry, there's Randy right there, and he is mad. Sitting alongside Larry Cole. Giants lead 7 3 with 10 33 left to play in the first half. Salvi in motion. Also almost lost it. Almost looked like he might want to give it back to Roger Staubach. Brad Van Pelt on the tackle. Well, Pat said it. Watch Jay Saldy come back and try to trap Mendenhall, but Mendenhall's penetration was so good he kicked the ball loose. And only a great athlete like Dorsett comes out alive. Good penetration by the nose man. They had Fitzgerald and Saldy trying to block him, and he beat them both. Did you say something to Mendenhall before the game? He really wants to play. He really does. Two-yard loss. Cowboys are lucky they still have the football. Second and 12, Mendenhall after him again. Jeter with a good play this time. Mendenhall was all over the top of Roger Staubach. And Jeter did the job on the outside. I think the crowd has a definite edge for this game. I think that the New York fans came out to watch this team and really cheer has a big edge right now for New York. Look at this play by Jeter. They're being appreciated. There's nothing like that for a pro athlete. More than money is appreciation. I'll tell you what, there are a lot of arguments you hear about what is the best sports town in the country. But I'll tell you what, also there are no better sports fans, no better football fans than these Giant fans have been over the years. Tom Landry knows that. He played in front of them too. From the shotgun. Starback with all kinds of time throws for Drew Pearson and oh. got him. And Drew held on. And he really took a couple of shots on the way down. I love the way he goes back to the huddle number 88. That's his 30th catch of the year. Always one of the high average fellows, but forget stats. He catches the ball and gets hit. Watch him give himself up. No pass rush, folks. Even with eight men deep, you're not going to cover Drew coming across. That is class. And go back to the huddle like nobody touched you. Did you read what he said after the game in Pittsburgh last week? What did he say? When he caught five passes, he said, you know you're going to get hit. You might as well not worry about that. You might as well just concentrate on catching it. Good advice. 
First down, Dallas, and the handoff is to Newhouse, and he might get two or three, but no more. Mendon Hall again, and Dan Lloyd on the tackle. Lloyd has really done a job playing the 34. Uh, we saw him earlier in the year against New Orleans playing defensive end, defensive tackle on the old four-man line, and now he's found that inside linebacking spot's good. He goes out right now. It'll be second and nine for Dallas. Dan Lloyd is one of those guys who just likes to run into the stadium, whatever. This is Matt Barr's 21-yard field goal, and the Steelers are on top of Washington early. Giants now go to a four-man front. Four-man rush as Drew Pearson goes in motion. And Starbuck is safe. And down he goes, George Martin. Nobody blocked him. Of course, the premise was that the fake would take Martin out. What's the left part of your screen? They pull the offensive right tackle down, Cooper, and Martin should follow that to the inside, but Martin is a great outside rusher and a very good athlete. He used to be a darn good basketball player. He caught Roger that time. Third and 18. Both Tony Hill. Drew Pearson split wide to the left, and Ron Springs is also flanked left. Now he shifts back into the backfield. Stall back, back in the shotgun. The Giants do not blitz a lot. The 30-second clock expired, and Dallas will have five more walked off against them. And every time that happens, the crowd stands to its feet. I wonder how big a play that is emotionally, to have to go in and recall a play. Delay of game, number 12, offense, third down. Contending teams are supposed to make mistakes once in a while, but Super Bowl teams are supposed to get the play called and get it off. Tom Landry is about as upset as you'll ever see him get after that delay of game, and now third and 23 it is. They fake a blitz, but they don't come. Three-man rush. Stallback. Pearson. Shy of the first down, Ray Rhodes on the coverage, and Dallas will have to punt. Danny White enters, 6.52 left. First half, Giants seven, Cowboys three. A standing ovation now for the Giant defense. How long has that been between ovations for them, huh? Since Yankee Stadium. Sounds good here. That's a great football stadium here, though, you it's know? It's one of the best, if not the best. What did Tom Landry say about Danny White throwing the pass last week? Said he had discussed it with him, and he doesn't think he'll do it again. <laughs> Good high kick, and Hammond up with the fair catch signal. Does just that at his own 15. 42-yard kick by Danny White. But the Giants own the lead in this game at the moment. They lead the Dallas Cowboys 7-3. The Washington, D.C. International, one of the big horse races of the year, and you'll see it on CBS next Saturday. Tampa Bay has the football, first and 10 at their 43-yard line. Frank Lieber along with Paul Horning as you look at Doug Williams, bringing his Buccaneers up to the line of scrimmage. They haven't had the football much, but they've done quite a bit with it. Oh, they we get 7 nothing. Oh, Frank, I hope we can get a good close shot of this kid's hands. He's got the biggest pair of hands of any quarterback I've ever seen. Jerry Eckwood. Rookie, number three draft pick from Arkansas, started off strong and stapled off a little bit, but in fairness to him, he's got a bit of a uh, well, with hand injury. Take, look at those big mitts. When he puts his hand on the football, I watched him warming up down on the field about two weeks ago. He just engulfs that football. Looks like a little, looks like a baseball. In Owens breaks wide to the left side. Higgins is split to the right. Take a look at the hands of Doug Williams. It's below the center's knee. <laughs> Second and 11, quick dump pass out to Eckwood. Run out of bounds at the 45 after picking up just three yards. Frank Reed, number 28, moving up quickly from the secondary. Tough man to sack, Frank. Doug Williams only been sacked twice all year long, and one was last week, right? Yes, against Minnesota. They caught him once, and it was unbelievable. And another thing, you know, a guy who who doesn't get sacked much, obviously he gets rid of the ball quickly. Normally a guy gets rid of the ball quickly, throws a lot of interceptions. He doesn't do that this year. 
In fact, he has a string of 41 consecutive passes coming into this game without an interception, which is currently the longest streak in the NFC. Now watch the three linebackers lined up in there and see if they blitz. Here comes one. There they come. Third and eight. Pitch out to Ricky Bell. Bell got a block along the way from Hanna, but Dewey McLean, number 52. Good call. Now, the three linebackers were on the inside, and I'm sure that Tampa Bay has picked that up in the film. So what do they do? They throw a little pitch. Now, they didn't get the first down, but what that's going to do to that Atlanta defense, they're going to be cognizant of that, that they might run the pitch or the sweep on third and eight. Pearson back deep, fastest man on the Atlanta team, standing on his 12-yard line. Blanchard to do the punting. That's his third punt. We get a flag thrown as the ball bounces at the five and on into the end zone. I think we may have had a uh, receiver leave the line too early. Now let's see if it, if it would go against Atlanta. It would give Tampa first down. And if they do that Lehman Bennett. And they got they indicate tripping. Against. Atlanta. Maybe they tried to trip up the receiver coming down. Well, that penalty should be marked off at the 20 then. Of course, if it happened after the punt, it then becomes a, a matter of decision on uh, where the ball was and the uh, possession. And I tell you, folks, if you ever read the NFL rule book, it will mess you up. It, well, <laughs> you Almost have to be a Philadelphia lawyer, but these guys at the pinstripes, I don't care what you say, they do it. On the Great job. Team post possession. They still keep the football. Uh, Number 26. We got you there, Ben. Okay, it happened after the putt, see? So Atlanta no longer had possession of the ball. I mean, Tampa no longer had possession of the ball. Uh, he said 26, probably 27. Tom Prodmore, there's no number on the program, number 26. We'll be back 7 to nothing in Tampa Bay. Buddy Hardiman, who played quarterback in college at Iowa State, now a kick returner and a running back in the pros. Matt Barr's boot, short, running up on it. And the ball is caught there at the 20-yard line by Harmon. And Harmon gets it out over the 35 and goes down on the 36-yard line. Start your evening with a brand new edition of 60 Minutes, the CBS News Weekly Magazine. Then the new cook starts dishing out the comedy at Archie Bunker's place. The last continue on One Day at a Time, followed by Ellis and the Jefferson. All on CBS tonight. First down. Washington on their own 36. That's Riggin. Did you notice uh, number 53, Dennis Dirt Winston, got turned around. Riggins got by, and then Winston went over and helped push him out of bounds. So Riggins goes out on the 39-yard line of the Redskins. The play went for three. It's second down seven. We talk about the Steelers leading the league and losing the ball by fumbles the most. The Redskins have lost only five fumbles this year. They're tied with the Giants for low in the National Conference. Second down. Seven. Roll out. He's got some room. He throws. Complete. Noah, he had it and then dropped it. John McDaniel was there. Wayne Woodruff on him. Daniel never really had control of the ball. No, the ball, he went down and, and uh, drove the cornerback back, got him turned, stopped in front, was in a great position to make the catch, but for some reason just dropped it. It looked like he might have taken his eye off the ball. Clarence Harmon and Hardeman come in the backfield. Clarence Harmon, by the way, is the father of a baby girl this morning. These Redskins produce them. Brad Dusick's wife had twins during training camp. Mike Bragg's wife had twins about two weeks ago. Very productive, this club. Third down. Seven. Ross missed him on the break. Ricky Thompson started the break, and uh, he was open, but the pass was just a little bit beyond his reach. 
So it is fourth down seven. And we'll have Mike Bragg into a punt formation. That's 83. Theo Bell back to receive the kick. There is no win today. This is just an ideal day for football. This November afternoon. Wobbly spiral. Bell, fair caught it at the 22 yard line. Oh, the Steelers have the ball back again. Our score here with 12 minutes to go and a half is 10 7 Pittsburgh. Tom Landry, obviously very concerned at the moment about the developments here. Benny Barnes is out of the game, and Aaron Mitchell has taken his place. Barnes with that always bad foot. And Doug Coder pushes his way for four or five yards. Is he an amazing ball carrier, though? He had a fumble two years ago, a fumble last year, and so far this year he has one fumble. That's in three seasons, folks. Little guy from Kentucky, and he doesn't overpower anybody, but I'll swear he does get in there, doesn't he? He's got five yards. The Giants got him from the Pittsburgh Steelers. There it is. Doug Cooper. Doesn't quite make it back to the line of scrimmage. Dave Stalls was the first man to hit him. He's not laughing. Just Dallas winning. and Dallas was anticipating the rush. They had the flex defense to that side. Here's the handoff to the on the second man on the eye. Now Young Sims is five of seven for 72. A very crucial play coming up. This pass play will tell you a lot about the young man. Whether he's willing to just maybe get a first down by inches or if he's trying to go for the whole shoot match. He's going to have to face that huge hook on the left side of the defensive line. That's the person that John Dutton again. 78. Chase and Sims fires to the ground. Just as he was hit by Aaron Mitchell on the blitz. The blitz from the offside. Now the Dallas team has cut down to about 20 some odd percent blitzes. That's one out of five. But it's a good thing they did it. I have a feeling the young man had something zeroed in, and Mitchell's a darn good tackler. Good defensive play. And Dave Jennings. Back to punt for the Giants. Steve Wilson standing at his own 41-yard line for Dallas. Jennings. Ooh. Gets it well. Chases him back inside the 40. Wilson. Breaks a couple of tackles, but gets back to about the 44, 43 yard kick for Dave Jennings, which is exactly his average for the season. He leads the NFC as Keith Eck made the tackle. New York, seven, Dallas, three. Live from Laurel, Maryland, see the 29th running of the Washington, D.C. International. Post time is 4 p.m. next Saturday. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Now you're looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers in their huddles. They're hard to beat here. Since they opened this stadium in 1970, they won 63 and lost only 13. Of course, that was the start of their dynasty here. Running out of the eye for the first time now, unless they shift. Ball on their own 21-yard line or 22-yard line. Bradshaw cranks it down the middle. There's Lynn Swan. Swan. Down on the 49-yard line. Another 27-yard gain. Swan caught one earlier for 41. Looks like he's on the way to a big day, Hank. Yes, he is. And, of course, uh, any time he's healthy, he's always capable of having a big day this time. But from the eye formation, he goes back into the pocket. And Swan is lined up on the right side, comes all the way across the field on a crossing pattern. Terry throws the ball up there beautifully, makes the catch. Great-looking play and a great touch on the, on the, on the pass. Yeah, he laid that in there, feathered it to him. He didn't just bang it in there to him. First down, Steelers on their 49. Look at all the room on the left side here on Lavender. But Bradshaw staying with that passing game. There it is. It is overthrown, intended for Stallworth, and he was up in it in the air by Joe Lavender, who is the, uh, I think, the tallest cornerback in the NFL. Mean Joe Green over there. Said, boy, I, I, I wouldn't want to be a receiver. Just let me... 
stay in those pits. That's a lot quieter. <laughs> Who said that? Well, Joe's saying it. See, he doesn't want to go up here and have to catch oh, a pass see, yeah. if somebody's going to hit him. Got it? That's, that's a matter of opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Compared like to where he plays with all the traffic inside. That time, Lavender Riddy was licked on the play. Terry Bradshaw just threw the ball too high over the top to Stallworth. Bradshaw has attempted 14 passes and hit eight. That's Thornton. And he's tripped up, crossed the 50, reached the 45 of the Redskins. Carl Lorch, the left end, took him down. Franco Harris that time got a nice block on the outside man that time, which provided him with a little running room inside, but he did a good job of knocking him out of the out of the play. Right, they have a third down and four. L.C. Greenwood left end of the Steelers on defense. We have 10.35 to go in the first half. 10 to 7, Pittsburgh leading Washington. And a third and four for the Steelers with a slot right formation. They throw the ball here, I'm sure. That's one in motion. And they blow the whistle. Too much time? Now we saw what the play was. Well designed to Thornton down the middle. That's the legal delay of the game against the Steelers. And that'll put the ball back to the 50 yard line and make it third down and nine for Pittsburgh. Hundred and sixty-four yards of passing in this game. Boy, he's got tremendous confidence and poise in his passing ability and the pass protection and the routes that the receivers run. But they're very efficient, one of the most efficient teams passing-wise in the league. Slot left formation. Third down nine. Big rush on him. Throws on the run. It's complete. That's Jim Smith who caught the ball. He could play first string with most clubs. Jim Smith. Ex All American University of Michigan, and he's in his uh, third year here. And what are you going to do behind Stallworth and Swan? Yeah, they put him in on the past obvious passing situations. Terry looks to his left, rolls to his right, and then throws right down the middle to Smith, who makes a fine catch in traffic. Finally tackled there, but it's another big down uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You talked about Bradshaw. When he's right, when he wants to run, and he's not running much in there. And he's right throwing. He can dominate a game completely. The one quarterback who I think can do it. Paul Smith making the hit. He's in there tackle now along with Dave Butts. It'll be spotted down on the uh, 27 yard line of the Redskins. Going out is Pete Wysocki. Monty Coleman comes in. One of the reasons it's so tough to, to rush the Pittsburgh Steelers is the fact that they trap you so much and you're a little dubious about the trap and so that's why you slow down your rush a little bit. That first and that last play, a first and ten situation, was a trap with Jerry Mullins trapping the defensive right tackle, Dyron Talbert. Paul Smith has gone out. Now they start the clock again. Took time for that injured player. Smith out. Lamar Parrish, by the way, we've just received word, has bruised ribs and has been taken into the Redskin dressing room. That won't help the Redskins. Big rush on Bradshaw. Then loads it to Thornton again at the 20, 15, 10, out of bounds. Sidney Thornton coming on as a future star, already a star, but a uh, another one in the making is out of bounds and is first and goal Pittsburgh. Thornton, the number 38, goes out at the linebacker and he has the option of running outside or inside. He ran inside of the linebacker that time, got him turned, Monty Coleman, and was wide open in the middle, did a good job of running down the left sideline, and it's another big play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But a good option run by the fine fullback or the halfback, I should say, Sidney Thornton, and an option on the linebacker. First and goal for the Steelers on the Redskins' seven-yard line. Steelers ahead, 10-7. to seven. Just under nine minutes to play in the first half. Franco Harris at the five, and he rolls in there. 
where he's right out on the goal line, but a flag went down on the run. Franco Harris, who in the last four games, this is holding against Pittsburgh. It will set him back. They'll have to go back to the 17 of the Redskins and make it first and 17 for a Steeler touchdown. Franco Harris has really been rolling himself. In the last four games, he's gained 431 yards, and he's on his way to another 1,000-yard season. Since he started that 1,000-yard stuff back in 72, he's missed only one. You know, and as well as he's running, Kurt, which is a good point that you just made, he shows a lot of quickness, doesn't he? At this doesn't stage well, what were they saying? That he was all washed up here. He's lost two steps or something. I think they were talking up. about his uniform being yeah. all washed. I could give you a shot of uh, the right pants leg of Bradshaw. He's wearing patches on the pants leg. Here he is to pass. Screen back Green. over to the side. At the 10. That's Benny Cunningham in for a touchdown. They love that play to Benny Cunningham, the big tight end who is almost like a wild Brahma bull when you get the ball to him. He just rolls over people. And it's very important when you're a quarterback to have the kind of size that Bradshaw has. He rolls to his right. Look at the Coy Bacon chasing, but he stops, and he's tall enough to throw the, the ball over the top. You see good blocking downfield uh, on the play by John Cobe, and he goes in for the touchdown. Misdirection, screen pass, roll right, Screen back to the left to the tight end Cunningham. It went for 17 yards, 8.36 to go in the half. And the boot by Barr's up. And again, the passing arm of Bradshaw has taken those Steelers right back down the field. And so it is 17 to 7. The Steelers out in front. Again, the Atlanta Falcons saddled with poor field position at their 10 yard line following the punt and the penalty. Falcons trail by a score of 7 nothing. First down, 10 yards to go, 11 minutes left to play, second period. Barkowski, sideline throw, and this time he completes it for the first down at the 28-yard line to Jenkins. Jarris White back there defending Alfred Jenkins, number 84. Well, they gave Barkowski some time to throw the football off a play-action pass on his own 10-yard line. It's good deep turn in. He was wide open. I don't know why teams don't throw more turnings, Frank. And you watch this game week after week, and they're just open, and they only call about three or four or five a game. Seems to me they should call at least 10 or 12 turnings, deep turnings to these receivers. 17 yard pickup on the play. First and 10. Atlanta now from the 27. Andrews up the middle, breaking several tackles, gets out for eight yards to the 35 yard line. Knees pumping hard all the way. 25 yards now for William Andrews, a fine rookie. You know, we're talking about these rookie running backs. You being a former running back, uh, they always say that that's one of the positions that a rookie can probably excel at faster than most other positions in the league. Well, I have to agree with that, uh, especially when you look around the league and you see so many teams that do not have good running backs, and you'll probably see losing teams. You need one, at least one good running back able to break a play. Kane diving for the first down. As you talk about quarterbacks, takes them four or five years to get ready, but a rookie runner can come in and really help a team yeah. run immediately. It takes usually a quarterback five years. That's what they say, right? CBS tonight, 60 minutes leads the way. The highest rated program on television last week. Brand new edition. And the new cook starts dishing out the comedy at Archie Bunker's place. The laughs continue on one day at a time, followed by Alice and the Jeffersons. It's all on CBS tonight. Third down. Less than a yard needed for the first down. Frank, getting back to that quarterback, what I was going to say is you put a rookie quarterback with Pittsburgh and see how well he do. He'd do well. Andrews diving for the first down, and it'll be close. So close that referee Ben Drive to indicate that uh, we're going to have a measurement. Wally Chambers made the stop. Seven nothing, Tampa Bay leading. Eight minutes, 56 seconds left to play in the first half. He joined the slate, a 64-yard bomb from uh, Doug Williams to Morris Owens, put the ball down on the one, and then Ricky Bell took it in. They did not make it. But a punt, maybe. <laughs> James can throw the football. 
Well, oh. I, you can't take a chance here, can you? No, I wouldn't say so. Down seven points. And this they need the this game. one. This is like a playoff game for Atlanta. They need to win today. Fourth down and inches. James in to do the punting. The deep man is Danny Reese, number 46. Jenkins caught that pass a moment ago, extends his pass catching streak to 50 games. They'll make it 51 games as of today. Still got a little ways to go to catch Harold Carmichael. Reese, he just will not fair catch. Dropped at the 28 yard line by Tom Moriarty. Took a little gamble there. Right. Sure, Moriarty had his back to the ball, didn't know exactly when it was going to come down, but had he been able to time his hit, probably could have forced a fumble there. Coming up Monday, the White Shadow Mash and my man Johnny Fever of WKRP in Cincinnati, followed by Lou Grant. Great evening, Monday. CBS right here. Harlem Globetrotters are involved in that White Shadow oh, show tomorrow night. That's I right. Forget. I saw that promo. They are something. First and ten. Ball just inside the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 30 yard line. Equid on the pitch from Doug Williams trying to get outside. He turns that corner. He can move. He's out beyond the 35 yard line. Fulking uh, Kuykendall number 54 making the stop. There's a good shot of that myth. Doug Williams 6 4 perfect side boy. And his brother. is a great quarterback coming up. At Grambling. Be second down and five needed for the first down. The officials spot the ball at the 34 yard line. Williams did not throw a touchdown pass last week against uh, the Vikings. That snaps a streak of nine in a row that he had. Eckwood taking the pitch this way. This time he does get around the corner. And more than enough to pick up the first down as he carries to the 45, Frank Reed, number 28 on the stop. Well, Johnny McKay on the sidelines. Looks like an SC sweep to me with Charles White out there. Nobody touched Eckwood until he's about seven yards downfield. There's John McKay. Enjoying it this year. Is he ever? 30 years in coaching, 19 as a head coach. And uh, he figured it'd take the Bucks five years to get with it. He's a year ahead of schedule. Pretty good. Pretty good competitor on that golf course, too. First and 10, Tampa Bay at its 44 yard line, leading 7 0. Doug Williams, oh. far sideline throw. Hagan fumbled the football. Atlanta picks it up. That's Tom Pridemore down to the 25. Pridemore is dropped at the 20 yard line. Well, Tampa Bay could almost have this game out of reach had it not been for drop passes. Isaac Hage, Higgins early in the first quarter dropped the touchdown pass. Watch this quick hitch right there. It's complete. Gets close to the first down. That's 81. Higgins dropped it again. And down the sidelines, Tom Pridemore cuts back. And Atlanta's got a big break about the 20. Let's see if they can capitalize. First and 10 from the 21 yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Atlanta trailing by seven. Kane, he's been a busy runner this afternoon, down to about the 15-yard line. Back inside the 15 to the 14, he picked up seven. Leroy Selman, number 63 in the stop. You know, I don't know why this always happens in professional football. I played for 10 years and still can't explain it. After a turnover, it usually seems that that offensive team comes in, and they're way up, they're sky high. The first play usually picks up seven or eight yards, or it's a completed pass. It just turns right around. Second down. Three needed for the first down. Atlanta at the Tampa 14 yard line. Kane on the delay driving for the first down and he looks like he's got it. They shove him back. Jarris White number 45 on the tackle. And he broke a tackle by number 58 Dewey Selman. Dewey Selman had a shot at him. Couldn't hold on. It is a first down at the 10 yard line. First and goal to go. Well, they're going back and forth, Frank, at, Cle at Philadelphia. Wilbur Montgomery scored from 62 yards out to put the Eagles in front, 13 to 10 over Cleveland. Now.
nothing there. Leroy Selman and Mark Cotney doing the job that time. Kane been busy this afternoon. 14 carries, 27 yards, and he'll get a rest. He's coming out of the ball game right now for the first time. Billy Rickman comes into the game. Only caught two passes, and that was last Monday night. Both of them for touchdowns. They'll go upstairs here. They go with one running back. Three wide receivers. Second and goal to go from the 13-yard line. Barkowski over the middle intended for Rickman. And knocked down two yards deep in the end zone by Mike Washington. Good Number coverage. 40. Good coverage by Washington. He took away the inside. Watch him take away the inside of Billy Rickman here. He's still on his inside. He guessed perfectly. Now he comes up, takes it away, almost a good interception. It'll be third and 13. That's just a guessing game, Frank. Now, if Rickman would have been called on a square out, it would have been six points. He just guessed perfectly. You know, you should have been a coach. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound awful easy. Third and goal to go from the 13-yard line. Francis in motion, back to throw, goes Barkowski. All kinds of time, and finally has to throw it away. Rickman had no shot at all, but he gave it a great effort, as you can see. Billy Rickman, number 82. Well, Barkowski lost control of the football. It popped up. He was lucky to get it back and get a pitch off. Breakdowns. This is what has happened to Atlanta all year long. They get something going, and then, boom, two or three plays in a row. Falcons will have to settle for the field goal. That brings on Tim Mazzetti. Maybe. And he's had, yeah, he's, he's had, had some time, problems. Right? He missed a 25-yarder the other night against Seattle, and that could have made a big difference. This will be a 31-yard attempt. Also had problems with extra points. All right. Got it. So Atlanta is on the scoreboard with four minutes and 58 seconds left to play in the first half as they get three out of it. Turnover on the fumble by Hagens, the return by Pridemore, putting the wheels in motion for the 31-yard field goal by Tim Mazzetti. Monday night on CBS, the White Shadow. Coach Reeves' team... Learns a hilarious lesson in humility from the Harlem Globetrotters. That's a good show with Kenny Howard, though, isn't it? That'll be followed by MASH and WKRP at Cincinnati. And then Lonnie Anderson in live and in color. Oh. Then gambling takes a special toll on Lou Grant. It's all on CBS Monday night. Stallback throwing on first down with good protection going for Tony Hill. He's going to be out of bounds, but a flag goes down. They're going to call Ray Rhodes for interference. It was an out and up. And Tony Hill, of course, had his first big day receiving in this league against Dallas in Dallas a year ago. He had two TDs and over 100 yards. Good pass blocking. Watch to the right of your screen. Donovan takes on Jeter. And then they pick up behind him. That's right. Defensive pass interference, number 22, first down. All is against Ray Rhodes. Tony Hill is really getting bullish and strong, though, isn't he? He had a tough day against Pittsburgh last week, and Mel Blunt didn't catch a pass. 22 yards on that penalty. I used to hate to get the receiver that was shut out the week before, especially if he's a great one. Dallas at the Giant 35. They'll sit. Comes for a couple. Brian Kelly got the hand on him. Yeah, he first slowed him down. You know, receivers used to come out in the old days and try to con you. Like a Tony Hill would come out and be dragging a leg and barely able to walk. And then the first or third time they had you man on man, they'd run right by you. But now they're all very honest people. It's really put the game in a much different light. Than just... <laughs> what about cornerbacks? Are they all honest people? All dishonest. You had to be to play cornerback. Second and nine. Set eight carries has picked up only 20 yards. As Hill and Pearson both come left, and Dorsett goes in motion to the right. Yes. To the right side for just a couple, not much more. Dan Lloyd and John Mendenhall roll into the ground. Newhouse coming off a two-yard rushing effort against Pittsburgh, and 
It's a crazy statistic floating around right now that teams that throw over 40 times a game in 28 games where this happened, they only won once and the losses were 27. If you have to throw over 40 times, the odds are really against you winning the football game. How many times did Dallas throw last week? 42. The score was 14-3, Pittsburgh. Third down. Shotgun. Ball juggled a bit by Roger. Looking for some place to go. Threw it to Jay Salvi and he dropped it. Well, they're going to call Martin for piling on on Sportsmanlike. And Roger might be shaken up just a bit. Roughing the passer. Yep. And remember, Roger ran around before he threw. Remember that Martin now is fighting blockers and getting to him. The thing is that this year, once the quarterback has released the ball, you better get away from him. Watch the left part of your screen. See where 75 comes from. He's going inside. That's Martin. He gets by Cooper. Oh, now he's away from Rafferty. Now Roger throws. Ah, oh, hit him in the back. I think it was a good call. Wasn't there a time, though, when you left that little zone, that five-yard area back there, that you lost that immunity? Well, if you become a ball carrier, you should. Personal foul. Looking the passer, number 75, defense. First down. I think Martin had a chance to hold up, uh, particularly since you're coming from the back. I really mean that. Now, you can't, you can't tell a guy not to rush the passer, and I don't blame him for being mad. Not the most popular call at Giants Stadium. 3.31 left to play first half. Giants lead 7-3, and some of the Giants asking for quiet as Jay Salvi operates in front of Dorsett, and Dorsett gets around the corner. Ray Oldham knocks him out of bounds at the 15, or about the 10 make that. I don't know if Danny Reeves set down that play, but to run right at Martin after he's been called for that's a brilliant, brilliant play because Martin is hot, and they go around that left side, they catch him to the inside. I think Billy Joe Dupree comes in and walls him off. And you know, instead of being aggressive, you can lose it by just getting hot. Sometimes you can just charge yourself. 75. We'll see what on. Six yard pickup for Dorset. Make it second and four. They're at the 11. That's Laidlaw. Laidlaw banging down to about the two yard line before Ray Rhodes makes the tackle. I don't know if that was a misdirection, if they decoyed or not. Looked like it was, and I noticed Donovan and Mendenhall almost slugged each other when it's over. Let's watch and see what happens. No, Scott went straight through and got a good block on Carson. Now watch at the end of this play, Donovan comes downfield, continuing a little bit longer, and there, there was almost some action. <laughs> Just straight ahead, zone blocking. And Dallas has it first and goal. Just inside the two-yard line, the Cowboys trying to go back ahead. Salvi in motion, handoff Newhouse. Didn't make it. Oldham again. All right, if you want to play pro football, don't think about being a quarterback. Think about being a defensive lineman or an offensive lineman. I'm telling you, it's hell up there. And if you give a little guy the ball like Newhouse, it's hard on him, too. Here it is, folks. And Carson, number 53, might be the best linebacker playing this in the league. About the one foot yard. One foot line, less than a yard. Starbuck, knocked back. There's Carson, over the top. Don't try to come over the top against number 53. He'll hand you your head. Look at the line of scrimmage. The Giants looked like they were darn near off sides they wanted so badly. Good motion by the inside defensive lineman. That's the location of the football, and you can see how far they have to go to score that touchdown. And we get the two-minute warning. Stadium's going crazy. And Staubach comes over to talk to Landry. Maybe he can calm him down. 7-3, Giants lead. Buddy Hardeman to receive the kickoff. Bradshaw, incidentally, has already over 200 yards of passing completed in this game. Hardeman at the 4, out to the 15, 
They chase him and they down him on the 16 yard line. And it was Rick Moser down to cover that kick. I've had a couple of 400 yard games or maybe more than that. Two of them by the same gentleman Mr. Joe Namath one in the famous Heidi game when Maynard caught 13 in that game. And the other was when Namath threw for over 400 yards and Johnny Unitas for 386 yards in the same game. But passing for 400 yards is a real hallmark for a quarterback in this National Football League and Bradshaw may do it today. Who knows? See if they do something to the right here. First down. They're going to roll right. And it's over the head of Benny Malone and it's in front of Bug. I don't know which man he was going to. I don't think Heisman knew either. Second down, 10. Heisman, 6 out of 14. Ted Frisch goes into center. Bob Kozil is over to the sideline. Well, one thing is very tough to do against Pittsburgh is to move the ball when you have to play catch-up football. Clarence Harmon has replaced John Riggins. Down he goes on the 18, 19 yard line. Kurt Winston, Elsie Greenwood, and Jack Ham. It'll be third down. Seven to go for the Redskins. Tampa Bay. And Atlanta. Rosetti just kicked the 20 yard field goal after Ricky Bell had plunged. One yard for scores. Tampa Bay seven, Atlanta three. Five to go in the first period. And a third and seven here for the Redskins with the Steelers leading 17 to seven. <laughs> Five defensive backs in for Pittsburgh. Ooh, was he hit by J.T. Thomas, Buddy Hardiman. Thomas is normally a cornerback, but Johnson's hurt today. They're out. Dwayne Woodruff. A rookie starting a cornerback. Wagner's out. So Thomas has moved to a safety. And that's the hardest hit of the day. And Hardiman is down. And here's J.T. Thomas, the man that hit him. Watch Hardiman swings out of the backfield. And J.T. Thomas really gives him a shot high. Ooh. Keeps him from falling forward. That would have been the first down possibly. But he knocked him back into the turf. Great tackle there by J.T. Thomas, number 24. Mike Bragg will punt again. Fourth down and a foot to go. Theo Bell is a safety man and they're attending to Buddy Hardiman. A real find of this year for the Redskins. Came into camp as a free agent. And won a job right away. Looked good in preseason. Been valuable and running kickoffs. Punts back. Coming out of the backfield. Catching the ball. Running it now and then. Good all-around player. Yes, he is. He certainly is. Seemingly, he's all right, which is always good to see. Crowd gives him a hand. Another sellout here. Three River Stadium. Mike Bragg. is putting for the fourth time. He's averaged 37 yards a kick in the game. Wind them up, says the referee, and here we go. The Redskins really lead the league. They do a great job with their specialty teams, covering punts and kickoffs. You're right, Henry. Fair catch call on the 42-yard line. The Redskins, in covering kickoffs and punts, have allowed the least yardage of any club in the NFL. We'll be back in the second period at 17-7 Pittsburgh. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire at Giant Stadium. And it is Giant Stadium. All right. Today. How many times have they suffered through? Oh, there's a Cowboy fan. The fans here have really earned the right to have some fun in the sun today, right? That Cowboy fan doesn't have the best seat in the house. Got to be careful, too. Way up top in the third deck. It's <laughs> third down, Cowboys. Or set a new house behind Roger Starback and new house. He lost yardage. Dan Lloyd. Did you see that 
giant defense jump around. I have never seen them this fired up since Robustelli and Cat Cabbage were your defensive ends. A simple play and a simple answer to it. Boy, this is good football. Look at the penetration. There's Rhodes up, the quarterback. And Lloyd came right through in, in the scene. Another angle. Enjoy it, folks. It's been a long time between goal line stands. Fourth and goal. Happiness is the goal line stand. Look at this. And remember, they are appreciated for the first time in their own stadium. Very big factor. Watch the left center of your screen for 53. He gets caught. If the ball is lobbed a little bit, he's dead. But this is what they pay off on. It wasn't. Great play. Intended for Doug Cosby, who stands about 6'6". But Harry Carson, with that superb quickness, got a hand up and knocked it away. And the Giants will operate from their own end zone. With one minute, 11 seconds left to play first half, both teams have all their timeouts left. Billy Taylor to about the five. A little bit of breathing room. Aaron Mitchell on the tackle. Young man is very old beyond his years. Here's that giant bench, Bill Austin, and Perkins still has the headset on. They're all up. I don't see anybody doing any sitting over there in the sun, do you? Look at Mendenhall. Of course, this young man will give the ball probably to Coder for the next couple of plays and go in with a lead at halftime. Incredible. It'll be second and five. I am surprised that Dallas has not called a timeout by now. Still running with 30 seconds left to play in the first half. Surely they'd like to make him kick from down there before halftime. Billy Taylor out to about the eight. And still the clock runs. I think Dallas is in a little bit of a blue funk about not getting the touchdown. And now, down now there. they have called a timeout, finally. Okay. Long overdue. I th Some of the great arguments are after you have not scored a touchdown on the sidelines after that. 7-3, the Giants lead. Here's Mazzetti kicking off. Ragsdale is the deep man at the 10. 20. Flags all over the place. Must have been a rather obvious clip there. What a great effort 39 James Mayberry made on the special teams for the Falcons. McKeska made the stop for the Atlanta Falcons. Blocking. Below the waist. That's a new rule in the NFL this year. Can block on any special teams, on any punts or kickoffs. Below the waist. That is not to be confused with a clip, which is hitting the guy from the back of the Personal foul. Blocking below the waist on the repeating team number 46. That's Danny Reese, number Danny 46. Reese. And he was not too subtle about it because we had at least three flags. That moves the ball back to the 10-yard line. This is perhaps uh, Tampa Bay's worst field position. Terry Bradshaw has thrown another touchdown pass. That's two for him. They lead the Redskins 17 to 7. Ricky Bell. Knocked out of bounds at the 17 or 18 yard line. Don Smith, number 65, makes the stop. Smith, the number one draft pick of the Atlanta Falcons, been doing a good job on that defensive line. Has six quarterback sacks in the year coming into this game. Philadelphia and Cleveland have tightened up a bit. Still in the second period. Second down. Four needed for the first down. Well, they can do a turn in now and it'll be wide open there. And a three deep defense back there. One of them's got to be open. Eckwood, as they bounce it around, it goes incomplete. Tried to catch that thing, kind of rolled up over his shoulder and couldn't one hand it. Robert Pennywell, 59, back there defending. Pennywell came on to replace Ralph Ortega at that middle linebacker position about a year ago and has done an outstanding job. But uh, Smith there, 65, as we said, is uh, out of Florida. 
Uh, he's done a fine job. He's got seven or eight sacks on the year. And he will put the pressure on the quarterback. Tampa Bay is 0 for 3 in third down conversions. Watch Frank Reed, number 28. He's cheating up from the safety position. They got a blitz working. Williams gets it away. He's got Mucker out there. Intercepted by Atlanta. Roland Lawrence at the 50. 45, 40, flag down. 30-yard line. Lawrence down to the 20, down to the 10, but there's a penalty marker down back at the 40. I think Atlanta will get the ball, but it'll be closer to midfield. Well, the ball's inside the 15-yard line. 28, Frank Reed is really hot on the sidelines. Could be against him. Doug Williams went for the home run. Roland Lawrence came up with a great interception, a great return. It's going to be clipping. It's going to be Atlanta's ball, but way back. That'll snap Williams' interception or non-interception string at 50 passes. I see I was talking about number 28, the, uh, Reed, the safety, was cheated way up into the line, so Williams knew he was going to have man-to-man -man so coverage down the far sideline. Number 28. On the run back. Frank Reed, that's Frank Reed. Here's Roland Lawrence on the run back, Frank. Let's see if we can pick up the clip. Right there, they called that a clip. I'd say that's borderline. That's huh? a flip of the coin there. Yeah, because he was kind of turning. Ball has moved back to the 41-yard line of the Atlanta Falcons. First down, 10. I could see where Frank Reed would be a little bit hot, though. 3.44 left in the half. 7-3, Tampa. Bartkowski after the fake to Kane, setting up the screen to Andrews. 40-45 and upended at the 46-yard line. Nifty one-headed catch there in the screen. Take another look at that interception a moment ago. One-on-one, -on -one, Mucker and Roland Lawrence. Now, see, Reed's caught in the middle. They did a stunt, picked it up, and there's the quick release of Doug Williams. Great interception. Roland Lawrence took it away. At the 45. Pennywell, number 59, put a lot of pressure on Williams. A big blitz. Forced him to hurry his throw. Second down. Five needed for the first down. Atlanta at its 46-yard line. That was Rollin Lawrence's fourth interception on the year. Bartkowski feeds it to Kane. Kane is at the 50, 45, 40. Down to the 35-yard line, and Leroy Selman runs him out of bounds. What a move. Lynn Kane put on Jarris White. This is what a running back likes, Frank. He gets one of those cornerbacks man to man. Watch this move. Watch this plan on the left foot. Boom. And Jarris White was left looking at that fake. 18 yard pickup on the play and an Atlanta first down at the 36 of Tampa Bay. Hey, Kane came on against Oakland several weeks ago, scored three touchdowns, set a club record, caught a half dozen passes, started the next week against San Francisco and then last Monday against Seattle. And that's been most of his playing time so far this year. Bartkowski, a lot of time, and then the pocket collapses. He runs out of it to the 30, and down to the 28-yard line, fumble the football. But it may have been whistled dead. Again, a quick whistle because the quarterback runs the football. Much quicker whistle for the quarterback when he runs it. Randy Crowder on the stop. I don't know how he got out of this jam. He was completely surrounded by white shirts. Right here, ducks him underneath. Now, let's see if he goes down. He hits until the football was gone by the time he hit the ground. But they whistled it down. That's where it goes. Ball is at the 29. Pick up on the play of seven yards. It'll be second and three for the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know. <laughs> you don't, you don't, well, you don't I, like that whistle. I was going to say, I had an argument with one of the referees. I said they call much. They do, do not call a fumble uh, today like they used to call it, but he said they... Exactly. Jittery because the injuries he's had in that offensive line. He's got some people hurt, and he's throwing under a lot of pressure. On the other hand, the Vikings have instituted a new era. For so many years, it was Francis Tarkenton, and now it's Tommy Kramer at quarterback. Compare the two for me. I think Kramer probably has a little stronger arm than Fran did. He can get more people involved in the offense because he can go to the outside receivers. Very confident young quarterback doing a good job for him. The Cardinals, even though they're 2-7 and seven for the year, come in here as five-point favorites. And as we're getting ready to go, the Cardinals will receive, and kicking off will be Dan Meyer. Back 
the leading kickoff return man in the NFC, Roy Green. He's joined there by Whirlwood Harrell. Short kick, but Green's got it. Green to the 25, to the 30, 35, he fumbled the football. I think the Cardinals, however, have recovered at the 37-yard line. And the Cardinals, who are third in the NFL in turnovers with 27 for the year, almost had a very costly one. Well, John you, Clancy came up with a fumble recovery. Watch this. As he runs through, the ball just gets ripped up. He finds a seam to go through. Very first plate right there. You see reaching in. Tim Baylor reached in and knocked the ball loose. Isn't that something? You start out a game like that, and that's been something the Cardinals have had trouble with all year long is turning the football over. They've thrown 15 interceptions, a total of 27 turnovers. Pat Tilly goes in motion from the 37. Hart back to throw. And he has Mel Gray, and Gray now has continued his consecutive streak of at least one pass caught to 83 with that grab. Let's go back and look at it. Good opening play, a little play action, faking the ball in there to Anderson, just moving slightly in the pocket. Sideline pattern makes a very accurate throw. It's good to get Mel Gray involved in the offense early. We have an update on that Giants. Dallas game, a flash in. The Giants held Dallas inside the five-yard line, and they now lead that game 7-3. to three. We'll keep you posted on that one. First down catch by Gray. Back to throw Hart. Same vicinity, different receiver, Pat Tilly, but he's out of bounds. Pat Tilly trying to make the catch at the 35. Let's check now offensively the Cardinals. The running backs of Morris and Anderson. Anderson is second in the NFL in rushing. And now Bill Morrell going in place of injured Gary Paris. That's another bad break for the Cardinals because Gary Paris got hurt in practice this week. And it was just on a passing drill. And up front, Wartman is not starting. We just noticed now that Brad Oates is starting at the left tackle spot. That's another injury. Wartman is shelled with an ankle. Here's Anderson. Anderson breaks it inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. It'll be three yards short of the first down, getting up slowly. Tim Baylor with the tackle. I talked to Jim Hart on the field. He said, I said, what are you going to do? He says, give it to Anderson and throw it. When I don't throw, I'm going to give it to Anderson. And you see what, why he wants to give it to Otis Anderson. Good run. And if he stays healthy, he seems to be a shoe-in for a 1,000-yard year. He has 836 yards coming into today. Four 100-yard days. Second in the league, isn't he? That's right. Only behind Walter Payton. Third down and three. Tilly again in motion. The Cardinals moving the football effectively. Here's Anderson going for the first down. He's got it across the 40 to the 35. Inside the 35-yard line, first down St. Louis. Let's check now the Minnesota Viking defense. A different look, some new faces since Carl Eller and also Alan Page left. Look at that, Jim Marshall. What is he, the only grandfather in the league? 41 years old. Now, Darrell Luce is playing in place of Fred McNeil, who has a bad toe. And back deep, well, some new faces there. Turner only a second-year man. And Tim Baylor starting in place of Paul Krause, I think because of the AstroTurf. First down now at the 34-yard line. Anderson again. Tough sledding, but look at him run with the football. He has another first down inside the 25-yard line, and he looks like he's headed for a big day. You talk about second effort. What about third and fourth effort? You see what kind of runner he is. What an exciting young football player. He breaks a tackle, comes out of a tackle here. Baylor comes up to make a play on him. He runs by him. Jeff Seaman bounces off. Takes a lot of white shirts to get him down. He did not get the first down. He's about a half yard short. So to bring up a second down just inside the 25-yard line. Gray and Tilly come to the bottom of the screen. There's 35-year-old Jim Hart. He's thrown 13 interceptions this year. Has 1,300 yards passing coming into this afternoon. Give to Wayne Morris. Morris chugging for that first down. It looks like he has it. As Matt Blair, the leading tackler for the Minnesota Vikings, comes up with that stop. Minnesota, during the month of October, allowed more yards on the ground than any team in the National Football League. They've had a tough time against rushing teams. And right now, the Cardinals are trying to exploit that as they have a first down at the 22. Back there, ranked, what, 14th in the NFC against the rush. There's the stats on Jim. Gives off to Anderson. Anderson to the 20. 15. Anderson to the 10. Very close to another first down, and you can see how tough this big guy is to bring down. Terry Steve, one of the most underrated guards in the National Football League, threw quite a block on that play. They've been much better since Terry has returned. Uh, and they're talking with Jim Hart about it. He said it's nice to have him back in the lineup. 
Now let's see. They may measure to see if he, in fact, got the first down. They're going to bring the chains across the field to see if, in fact, they do. This St. Louis team, even though they're 2-7, and seven, Sonny, they potentially are quite a football team. Well, everybody says they're better, better than their record indicates, and they've just had so many injuries. I think they're more concerned about injuries than they are their record. They can be spoilers the rest of the year. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals and the National Football League is prohibited. As you can see, he got the first down. The ball resting just outside the 11-yard line. Anderson already with 36 yards on four carries. And you look at this Cardinal team being two and seven. Is the they have beaten themselves more than the other teams have beaten them with fumbles and turnovers. Two losses early in the year to both Pittsburgh and Dallas really took the toll on this team. Gray goes in motion. Hart to Anderson. Anderson to the 10. Anderson, as a flag is thrown, is to the six-yard line. Nothing fancy about that play. They just sent everybody ahead of him. Mark Mullaney made the tackle for Minnesota. But let's see what the flag's all about. Well, I was just getting ready to say, you know, this was, has been an error-free drive. And uh, this is something they haven't been able to do. And they get right down inside of the 10 yard line. And they're going to have a penalty on them. And it's going to, it could halt the drive right here. That is a 10 yard penalty of holding. Now, the interesting thing about this St. Louis team, they lead the National Football League in penalty yardage by unnecessary roughness. <laughs> so it's been one of those years where they've been frustrated. That's, that's, I think that's the right word, but they're just frustrated. Now Lapore stepping it off. Let's listen. Holding 2-0 offense, first down. I beg your pardon. Who I that don't on? believe I have that number. <laughs> Thought he said too old. Oh, <laughs> number 20 was what he was saying. I guess I would assume it might be Morrell, number 80. He's the only man on that forward wall that has a zero on his jersey. Anyway, it's first and 20. Hart on the first and 20. Pressure put on, far side, and that ball has been intercepted, picked off by Nate Wright, and Wright brings it back out across the 20-yard line, and that is Jim Hart's 14th interception of the year. Uh, he was late with the throw right here. The square out pattern by Gray. Jim was a late delivering the ball. It's a low throw, and you see right in front, picking that pass off, Nate Wright coming up with his second interception. Nate Wright, who had a broken arm last year that slowed his recovery, but he's back in the lineup right now. Sixteen seconds left to play in the first half. What's going on in that Philadelphia-Cleveland game? Well, it's an important game because Dallas plays Philadelphia next Monday night. Philadelphia on top of Cleveland now in the second period. Wilbert Montgomery, a 62-yard touchdown. It'll be a third down situation. Maybe just a yard. And Billy Taylor may have it. Harvey Martin, one of the Dallas tacklers. The indication is that they do have the first down. And now that'll probably do <laughs> the first half action. Another standing ovation for this team. And listen to the crowd. The Giants hit the locker room leading Dallas at the half, seven to three. Gill set in, got the 27-yard field goal for Dallas, and the Cowboys led 3 nothing. Bill Sims hit Johnny Perkins with a touchdown pass, and the Giants took the lead, and they have it, 7-3. Yeah, the Steelers are first in offense in their conference, and they're second in the entire league in scoring. New England is first in scoring, and Pittsburgh is second. And the Steelers have... 219 yards passing from Bradshaw already. They've thrown the last three times on first and 10. Let's see what they do here on first and 10. They're on their own 42. They run it this time. That's Franco Harris. And he bangs his way to the 50-yard line and edged over into the Redskin territory. Where he was tackled by Wysocki and Mark Murphy. Pittsburgh on the 50-yard line. Second down. And a short two. Time remaining, 6.40 in the first half. Franco Harris, 34 yards and five carries. He's averaged 4.8 a carry this year. Look out, look out. 
Wade be at offside. I think it's 79. Coy Bacon offside. Charge trying to get back. That looked like Bacon. Unless he was drawn off. No, I think it was definitely your, your first observation. It was a good one, Kurt. I, I think definitely it was against the Washington Redskins. Offside, the veteran Coy Bacon in his 12th year, Jackson State. Uh, Asked him in the lobby today, I, I mean, how come you, you keep going every year and you're up? He said, hey, every year there's four or five young kids coming to camp trying to take the money away from me. <laughs> They've got their hand in his pocket. Yes, sir. He says, oh, Coy wants that salary. <laughs> he ought to throw here on a first and 10 situation. Let's see if he does. All right, Hank, first down Pittsburgh on the Richmond 45. And he is going to throw. They set it up, and it's a bad pass intended for Stallworth, or for Swan. But he had a hard rush on him that time. Perry Brooks, the left tackle, an excellent pass rusher, was in there from Southern University. You know, the Redskins are starting to play some youngsters now. They're very high on a rookie, Monty Coleman. Sam Huff told me today he thinks he's going to be a great linebacker. Brooks is in his second year, and next year, the Redskins, in the upset of all upsets in pro football history, have six draft picks in the first five rounds, I hear including their own number one. I hear they're trying to trade them, are they, Jack? Or no. Kurt? No way. <laughs> no way. Second down, ten. Down the middle. Complete to Benny Cunningham. At the 31-yard line, he was down. Boy, how he gets the ball over the top of those linebackers know. like he does, just incredible. But he just did it again The Cunningham, had pressure coming inside. Watch him, goes back into the pocket. Throws it right over the top. What a battery of receivers, it doesn't matter. Stalwart, Swan, Smith, Grossman, Cunningham. Goes to them all, Rocky Blair is in support now. First down. Steelers on the Redskin 31. Swan in motion. About a three-yard pickup. Wysocki tackled Franco Harris there. Remember, uh, Cunningham last year was injured. Got off to a great start. He was the number one draft pick. This was his fourth year. And this year, he... Stormed away from the starting gate in starry style and was hurt again. Now he's back playing today. He's got two passes and got a screen for a touchdown. Second down, six. Morton back in. Second and six for Pittsburgh. 27 yard line of the Redskins. Bradshaw, quickie, hops away. That's a legitimate hit by Mark Murphy. He was just trying to. Go for the ball along with number 38, Sidney Thornton. Sidney was running the same option pass that he ran pre uh, just a little while ago for a big gain. He has the option again, as I mentioned earlier, to run inside or outside of the linebacker. That time he, he ran inside again, but the ball was deflected and almost intercepted on the play. Cunningham is out, and Jim Smith goes in to become a third wide receiver. Well, the aerial circus is spread out across the field now for the Steelers. Bradshaw looks him over. There it is. Ah, it is nearly intercepted and not quite by Tony Peters. The pass intended for Swan. Peters has had the last month a vast improvement, and he's going to be in there at first team soon. And may stay in there for a few years. They, they got him over from the ground. And they're very high on him. Another one of these younger players. All right, here is a 45-yard field goal by Matt Barr. He has kicked four out of eight between 40 and 49. So he's 50% from this range. This kick is up. It has the distance, but it looks wide to the left. He missed it. And Washington will take over on their own 28-yard line with the first down. Remember swine flu and the shots President Ford urged all of us to take? 
you probably thought they were safe. So did a lot of other people who today are either dead or crippled. Watch 60 minutes tonight right after NFL football except on the West Coast where it'll be run at its regular time. 60 minutes following NFL football today. Redskins on their 28 with a first down. They're trailing 17 to 7. Ron Riggins. After Riggins was slowed down behind the line, number 58 Lambert came in to put the finish on him. Jack Lambert. That was another counter play. It looked like they were going to run to the left. He took a step to the left, ran to the right. Jack Ham got penetration, forced him inside, and Lambert and the rest of those the troops inside made the tackle. A little over four minutes to play. There's the rushing average we were talking about earlier. Score here, 17 to 7, Pittsburgh. Brazil is the center again. Redskins are not running on the skater club. Very few teams do. Riggins outside, cutting back. Look at that pursuit, the gang tackle. I thought he was going somewhere that time, Hank. Yeah, but it was a draw play, a, a very delayed draw play. He looked like he was going to have some running room. There was a cavity on the left side, but by the time he took it, tried to take advantage of it, it was all closed up. Brad Sean, Jim Smith talk. Their next offensive series over when they get together. Ike Forte in for Buddy Hardiman. Hardiman evidently was shaken up. Third down, seven. Forte will be number 30. That's Thompson out in motion. Draw play to Forte. Goodbye. Joe Green has him. Fumble. Joe Green got Lambert came up with the ball. But they'd already blown the play dead. Lambert thought, come on. Fourth down and again the Steelers. Steel curtain. Lamb good on. Mike Bragg will kick the steel bell. Bragg is making his fifth punt. Last week, Colquitt kicked nine times in the game against the Cowboys. This is a good kick. Take it on a 34 and downed immediately on the 38 yard line. Don Harris went down to make the tackle. NFL on CBS Regional Game. The Cardinals and the Redskins next week. Tampa Bay, Detroit. That's where Hank and I'll be. The Silverdome in Pontiac. Los Angeles and Chicago. Minnesota, Green Bay. San Francisco, New Orleans. And Atlanta and the New York Giants. Consult for the local listings in your area. Our score here is 17 to 7. Pittsburgh leading Washington in a conference game. First down on the 38 yard line of Pittsburgh. Bradshaw's handoff. That's Sidney Thornton. Thornton and Harris coming into this game had combined for 1,131 yards. That's the best rushing tandem of any club in the league. Thornton has over 500 yards, Harris over 600. And Thornton now is limping off. They've got a, another young running back here they're very high on who's injured. Who's Greg Hawthorne. He may come in here, but he's not exactly right. Well, they like him. Bradshaw said he's very quick and I can get him outside. Here's a two minute warning. Two minute warning. Toward the end of the half, 17 to 7, the Steelers on top. Back live in New York, I'm Brent Musburger, and Al Harold Carmichael has the record for the Philadelphia Eagles. 106 games he has caught a pass, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are doing it again, this time against the Redskins. Here is Bradshaw. With time, looking for Grossman, and Grossman down at the 12-yard line. From there, the Steelers struck. It was John Stallworth with the first touchdown for the Steelers. They led Washington 7-0. Theismann drove the Redskins back down the field. Went to Ricky Thompson, who made a fantastic catch at the four. Then in the second period, John Riggins to the outside, swung in. But the Steelers came back, and it was Bradshaw 
looking for Benny Cunningham on the tight end screen. It is now 17-7 Steelers with the lead. And of course, the game you're watching, what a great goal line stand by the Giants who are trying to win for the fifth straight time. Tampa Bay leading Atlanta 7-3. Ricky Bell plunged in from a yard out. And the game, the highlights you just saw, 17-7 Pittsburgh with the lead over Washington. And the skins could be tied, but they'd have to come back. Now, Philadelphia leading Cleveland 13-10. Wilbert Montgomery ran 62 yards for a touchdown. That is the longest run of his career. Seif went 21 yards to Rucker. That's the 19th touchdown pass of Seif's season so far. New England trailing Buffalo 6-0. Two field goals by Nick Mickemeyer for the Bills in that game. Minnesota and St. Louis are just underway. They are scoreless. Cincinnati and Baltimore. Burt Jones back at quarterback. No score in the first. San Diego and Kansas City also scoreless. And that game is in the first. And Jane, you've got a story involving Irv. Yes, I do, Brent. When the great Dallas Cowboys arrived in New York late yesterday, CBS had a cassette of Too Tall Jones's bout ready for them to view. Irv Cross asked Cowboy General Manager Tex Schramm his reaction to Jones's debut. Well, it wasn't one of the great uh, fights of the century, I don't imagine, but I think a lot of people are today are overlooking the fact that it's a uh, it was his first fight, just like a first fight of an amateur. And I think that the fact that he got through the sixth round, uh, there was a little kind of a stumble, I think, and an illegal hit at the end. But the fact that the judges and felt that he won the fight, it's uh, one step further for him on his new career. Tex, if Too Tall decided to come back to football, will the Dallas Cowboys take him back? We would love nothing better than to have. We would love nothing better than to have Too Tall. Uh, come back to us. He left under the finest of circumstances. Before the draft, he came in and told us confidentially that he would not be back so that if that would make any difference, we could change our plans. Uh, he's been very complimentary to our football team, and uh, if the boxing does not ever work out for him, uh, he'll be very welcome with the Cowboys. Now back to the New York Giants. Young Phil Sims, their top draft choice out of Moorhead State. And, of course, quarterbacks are such a valuable commodity in the National Football League. Who are some of the top prospects coming out of college football this year? Not very many seniors. Mark Wilson at Brigham Young is rated number one by the Pro Scouts. He's 6'5", and he is extremely consistent. Number six, Mark Wilson of the unbeaten BYU Cougars with a sensational throwing arm. The only question is about his mobility. When they put the pressure on in the NFL, can Mark stand in there and throw touchdown passes like that one? And watch here. Rolling to the left, throws back to the right, and Wilson demonstrates why he's number one according to the Pro Scouts. Number two is a young man from Ohio State, only a sophomore, Art Schleister. That's how you pronounce his name. And he can run as well as he can pass. Watch Schleister's passing arm in action here for the unbeaten Buckeyes. Why, he's going to be a good one. Mark Malone of Arizona State is probably the best running quarterback coming out of college football this year. Malone for Arizona State is a senior. This is against Utah State. From the two-yard line, Malone found daylight, turned it on, and ran 98 yards for the touchdown. The quickest release belongs to Mark Herman at Purdue. He is a junior. Now watch here as Herman hits his receiver right now. What the pros like because there's so much pressure on the part of defenses in the NFL. The smartest of the quarterbacks is Paul McDonald out of USC. He will remind you a little bit of Ken Stabler. The scouts say that there is possibly one drawback. He might not have a strong enough arm. But there's no question that Paul McDonald has a marvelous throwing touch and hits his men just as they break. He is a senior, like Malone and Wilson. And yesterday, there was a freshman who impressed everybody. His name is Danny Marino. He's out of Pittsburgh, but he may elect baseball over football. And the NFL today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Frank Lieber with Paul Harding. We're at the two-minute warning here in the first half. Frank, let me clear up that point I was making before we went away with the commercial. 
I really think that they call the whistle too quick on fumbles. I think it should be a back's responsibility or even a quarterback to hold on to the football. If they go down and the ground causes them to fumble, it is not ruled a fumble. I think it's a responsibility of the running back to hold on when he hits the ground, the initial impact. Second and three, Atlanta from the Tampa 29. Andrews powers up the middle down to the 21-yard line. He's a better, he's a better runner when he's running north-south, isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. First down. Falcons with a chance for the go-ahead touchdown. Dewey Selman made the stop. Atlanta Falcons, a team that's lost four ball games by four points or less. They've lost six of their last seven, but they're still very much in that race. There are only two games behind New Orleans, and New Orleans and the Rams, the two teams ahead of them, both have tough te uh, teams to play today. First and ten. Atlanta at the 21. Bartkowski handing off, but not fooling the Tampa Bay defense as Andrews is corralled again by Leroy Selman. Let's take a look here. One remaining back. There it is. Little quick pitch underneath. Delayed traps what it is. It didn't fool Leroy Selman one bit. Clock is still moving less than a minute. Left to play in the first half as Lehman Bennett looks on. Falcons have the timeouts left. Second and 11 from the 23 yard line. Bartkowski has to put it up. Lips. There you go. David Lewis, number 57. Crashing through from the left side. Now they're going to have to call time. Well, they 36 call, seconds. Right, they call the Atlanta defense a grits blitz. And you were right when you caught it in the first quarter. Tampa Bay is doing more blitzing than Atlanta. This time, Barkowski didn't even see David Lewis from the blind side. That'll move it back beyond the 30-yard line. Now they're getting to the point where uh, they could be out of... Mazzetti's range at this point you figured take almost a 50 yard field goal if they don't get it any closer. Well, you're always trying to pick up the first down here but I wouldn't get crazy here. I would settle to get the football to the 20 or the 17 or 18 yard line and at least get three points on the board. Atlanta still has two timeouts left. So they're still in pretty good shape from that standpoint. As they try to move ahead in this game. Another reminder, CBS tonight, 60 minutes starts it off. And Archie Bunker's place, the laughs continue on one day at a time. Alice and the Jeffersons all on CBS tonight. And don't forget CBS reports, a special on Teddy Kennedy. Mazzetti's longest field goal attempt this year, or longest success has been 47 yards. Right now at the spot they are at, he'd have to kick at 48 if it gets to that point. But keep in mind, they do have two timeouts left. However, they're looking at third down and 19. Following the blitz with the ball at the 31-yard line of Tampa Bay. Garkowski has put it up sparingly in the first half so far. Atlanta's trying to run the ball on Tampa. Three man blitz. And Wally Chambers has got him. I was going to say, they only rushed three men. They dropped off the linebackers. And this is when you have a great defense, Frank. When you can go into a prevent defense and still the three man rush gets to the quarterback. This is Wally Chambers on the outside, number 60. The top of your screen going gets Warren Bryant, man to man. He beats Bryant to the outside. Grabs Barkowski around the legs and they'll have to punt. And now obviously they are out of field goal range. Letting the clock roll on inside of 10 seconds left to play. They just let it run out. They're just going to try to let it run out but they may have enough, not have enough here. See if Tampa Bay calls time or well, now Atlanta's going to call time. Now why would they call time with four seconds to go for letting it go that far. Well, they want to try that home run ball down the right sidelines called it. Big Ben here at Atlanta. That's right. They won two or three games last year. I think the New Orleans Saints know what Big Ben I, is. I worked both those games last year with oh. the Saints. The one down in New Orleans, uh, which they wanted with that type of pass, and another one here that uh, they won in the waning seconds, too. Didn't take that type of pass, but 
Let's see if they line up three receivers on one side of the field and throw the home run. Jim Mitchell comes out. They'll have Francis, Alfred Jackson, and Alfred Jenkins. Next week, another doubleheader on CBS. First games, Tampa Bay at Detroit. Third game on this road swing before they return home. And then it's followed by Minnesota against Green Bay, 49ers against the Saints, and these Atlanta Falcons go against the New York Giants. Next Sunday, right here on CBS. The surprising New York Giants. Well, they sure are. Of course. Led by a kid from Louisville, Kentucky, Phil Sims. Is he from Louisville? Oh, I imagine. Uh, oh. Moorhead State Teachers College. That's right. That cradle of great pro football players. <laughs> Here we go. See the three wide receivers up at the top of your screen. They'll dash down there. Barkowski will throw it as far as he can, hoping to get the interference call or maybe a tip for a touchdown. If he can get it away. There it goes. Let's see what happens. Up for grabs. Incomplete. Time runs out. Ending the first half. They had Jenkins, they had Jackson, and they had Francis all down there in the end zone. And they get a lot of booze as they head to the locker room through the Atlanta Falcons trailing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the end of the first 30 minutes of play here at Fulton County Stadium by a score of 7-3. We'll be back in just a moment. There's Bud Grant, 13th year as a head man of the Minnesota Vikings. What a career he's had. Very stable man. He's the kind of guy that's given a real continuity, hasn't he? 221 victories is a good First down now at the 15 after the interception. And wait a minute. We have a whistle stopping everything. You just joined us. The Cardinals moved the opening drive down inside the 20-yard line, had a 10-yard holding penalty, took 4 minutes and 13 seconds, and then suffered the interception by Nate We're Wright. having a problem with the 30-second clocks. Bear with us for a minute. <laughs> okay, right. girl, we won't go anyplace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll give us the opportunity now to set offensively the Minnesota Vikings there's Ricky Young all he did last year was catch 88 passes and Ted Brown they really like him don't they they are he, you know he's got to be a good back if he's starting in front of Foreman there's the all-time leading receiver Ahmad Rashad for the Minnesota Vikings he has 44 catches this year 66 last year Sammy White and the veteran Bob Tucker and that line a little change today Jim Huff is going in place of Charles Goodrum at left guard other than that, it's as anticipated with Riley and, of course, Ron Yerry. They say he could play for 20 years in the NFL the way he's going. So we're ready to go. First down for the 15-yard line, and there's Tommy Kramer. Third-year man out of Rice, their number one draft pick in 77. Gives up the middle, and Ted Brown trying to struggle up the field. Can't get it done, and this is the problem Minnesota's had trying to establish their running game. Let's set defensively now the Cardinals. Bob Pollard was hurt last week in the first quarter, but he's back despite a knee that really has given him some difficulty. Boy, they need him in there for the pass rush. And then the linebackers, now well, look at the change there. Fabron's replaced Arneson, who's back today, by the way, and Bearfield is going to place a Steve Neal. And in the secondary, boy, Ken Stone has six interceptions this year. He said he'd like to get a couple a day. Second down, a gain of one. Second and nine. This is Ricky Young, and Young gets a yard. Minnesota this year has averaged only 101 yards a game rushing. And on two carries, they have two yards. Alderman and Bearfield combining on the tackle for St. Louis. Now you look at the job that uh, Kramer has done, Tommy has done for them. And he's done an outstanding job because you have to consider this almost his rookie year, even though he's been around three years. Uh, he was hurt last year, and, he, and this year is like his first start and he's done a good job for he him. has done a good job he's thrown 13 touchdowns look at that that's not too bad he's thrown 288 passes already they, they throw it up don't they third and eight nice protection for Kramer over the middle Ricky Young and that will be enough for a first down Ricky Young boy is he an excellent back coming out of that backfield Roy Green with a tackle I tell you something, watch Tommy Kramer here. He waits to give this pattern time to develop. Shows a lot of poise, just waiting to the last second. He kind of hesitated on his throw to deliver the ball. Real good throw. Let's go back and pick up Rashad on that play. Coming off, he's just running a clearing pattern, trying to work his way in. Oops. <laughs> feet, feet went out from under him. You know, they're glad to be playing on artificial surface, though. They think it'll help them, the wide receivers. On the first down, Ted Brown. Brown out to the 31-yard line. And we've heard a lot of superlatives about this rookie out of North Carolina State. John Bearfield with a tackle. 
The Vikings feel that he is their answer for their running game in the years to come. He's a tough guy. He's had a knee bruise that slowed him down. He had 85 yards last week, and that's the best output of the year for any Viking running back. And he's only 5'10", 198 pounds, uh, being a fullback. He had his number retired at North Carolina State, and the only other guy is an old buddy of yours, Roman Gabriel. He retired right. those two numbers down there for the Wolfpack. Well, he had quite a career there. Second down, five. Up the middle, Brown again, stumbling forward across the 35 to the 36. He's going to be a yard short of the first down. Brown was their number one pick. He was a first-team All-American last year, and in his career, he gained over 4,600 yards. That's the fourth best in the history of the NCAA. There's Kramer. They say about Kramer, Sonny, that he has great moxie. He came in as a rookie, and he got along with the veterans right away. Talking with their coaches, they said the thing that the attitude that he has, he said if he gets knocked down, sacked, or intercepted, anything like that, it doesn't bother him. It doesn't stay with him. Third down and one. You look at the conversion factor. Minnesota hasn't been very successful, but they got this one. Ted Brown, he's hit by Carl Allen, but Brown has enough for the first down. And so Minnesota trying to establish that running game, something that's deserted them throughout 1979. How many years is Minnesota in a crucial situation where they need to pick up a first down, run behind the blocking of Ron Yerry? Boy, he's a good one, isn't he? 6'6", 255 pounds in his 12th year. Brown now on four carries has 13 yards. First down at the Minnesota 39. 6.57 to go. No score. First quarter from Bush Memorial Stadium. Kramer to Rashad. And did he get it inbounds? No, no he, he did not. Looked like he might have had one foot in, but Rashad could not stay in. Let's check a halftime score on that Dallas Giants game. And the Giants are trying to win their fifth in a row. Seven to three at half, isn't that something? I tell you, since they put Phil Sims in a quarterback, they've turned things around. Well, that's how they scored. He hit Perkins with a 32-yard pass for the touchdown. He's for real, isn't he? Second down now, 10 from the 39. Sammy White, Ahmad Rashad, the wide receivers. Brown, Ricky Young, the running backs behind Kramer. And you see the tight end, Bob Tucker, now going in motion. Kramer. Pressure put on. He gets rid of it, but he had to get rid of it because blitzing through was Eric Williams. And that messed up the timing on that play. Well, good defensive play here by Williams coming through on the blitz. Nobody picked him up. He had to, Tommy, he had nothing to do, but he did save a lot of lost yardage by throwing the ball away. So that's going to bring up third down and 10 now for Minnesota. The Vikings after the interception by Nate Wright that stopped a drive that took over four minutes. Now trying to keep this one going. They send Rashad to the bottom of the picture. And to the top goes Sammy White. Two excellent wide receivers. A lot of trouble for a defensive team. Kramer on third and ten. Flag on the play. Being chased by Mike Dawson. Gets away. Over there is Charlie Davis. Complete to Sammy White at the 50. That would be enough for the first down. But let's see what the flag is all about. Well, the flag was thrown very early too, Gary. Could be a holding call of some type. And a preliminary signal, illegal motion against Minnesota. So that'll bring it back. But I like Kramer there. He showed the ability to be under control and throw the football. He waited till the last second till he found somebody open, or he could have run with the football, but he did find White open, but it's going to be called back. You know, Tarkenton also was good at scrambling, but they say one thing about Kramer. He runs for the game more than just getting more time. He's a very good north-south runner. In other words, he can cut it up and go very well. Illegal motion, 6-1. Offense, third down. That would be Wes Hamilton, the right guard for Minnesota. So instead of a first down, it's now third and 15 from the 34-yard line. They now have... Terry LeCount in at wide receiver. He's number 80. Minnesota on third downs thus far is two for two. They're trying to make it three for three now. Kramer back. And broken up by Perry Smith at the 50-yard line. Rashad, the intended receiver. And Smith, who has one interception this year, made a nice play. And a turn in pattern trying to get enough for the first down. Very close to being intercepted. You see Smith backing off. He reads the pattern. The ball was hung a little bit you see him coming in right here I think it had an interception but the ball got kind of knocked out of his hand and another flag Sonny holding 5-1 offense 
Kelly's decline. It's fourth down. That's Jim Huff, who's starting at guard in place of Goodrum today. Both teams in their first possession stop themselves. This is Greg Coleman going back to kick. Very good point. Coleman averaging 40 yards. He's ninth in the NFC. This guy last week kicked two of them out at the two and the three yard line against Tampa Bay. Willard Harrell deep for the Cardinals. Up with a snap. Takes it on one hop. Willard Harrell inside the 25 yard line. Trying to get to the picket to the 30 and Willard Harrell out to the 33 yard line. Harrell coming in here was third in the NFC and punt return. And he gives the Cardinals good field position with a 12 yard return after a 44 yard kick that time by Greg Coleman. It's halftime with Tampa Bay in front of the Atlanta Falcons 73 and with me here at halftime is a very happy man, Hugh Culverhouse, the owner of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What can we say? Welcome. We're glad you're in the National Football League and what a year you're having. A little different from what we've been having too, Paul. Well, I tell you, this team has really been the surprise of all professional football. Would you have believed that they'd be 7-2 and two and an excellent opportunity to go to the playoffs this year? No, it's rather unbelievable, but uh, I must say Coach McKay had the courage to play the young players like he's starting two rookies in the offensive line. That takes a lot of guts, and I think our fans have stayed with us, and it's coming around. Well, Hugh, when you go on the road, I know you take an entourage with you, and uh, this year has just probably been as good a year as you've ever had, and I'm counting in business, too, because you've been a successful bad in business, and the Tampa Bay sure has been a success. Well, this is a great experience. It's wonderful to share with so many people, and we're having fun, and I think it's time some of the people that travel with us rode home on a winning flight. Well, that's good. Hugh Culverhouse, the owner of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now let's go to New York with Brent Irv and Jane. <laughs> Fouts to Lord Jeff and San Diego now is ahead of Kansas City, 7 to nothing. Irv, show me some highlights from that Dallas Giants game. <laughs> okay, there's only one touchdown, of course, scored in the first half. The Giants got it, and they lead 7-3 at halftime. And Phil Sims, a young man we've been talking about all day, connected with, his, with Johnny Perkins on the only touchdown of the day. Sims here on a third and two in a Dallas, 32, fades back under pressure. Hits Perkins right on the run there. He goes in at 7-3. One of the biggest plays of the game came on the goal line. Fourth and goal from the two. Roger Staubach faking a run here. Throws to Cosby, and the ball is tipped by Harry Carson, and the New York Giants are ahead at halftime, 7-3. Carson is inspired by that picture of Jane Kennedy, which hangs there in his locker over there at Giants Stadium. Another good young quarterback, and he's going to be in the playoffs, is Doug Williams of Tampa Bay. On the play fake, looking for Owens Long. Check that shotgun out. Cameraman can't even find it. He threw that ball so far. He was down at the one. Ricky Bell storm into that end zone. Pick up six for the Buccaneers. Now, watch Williams again. Hits Higgins. That's his favorite target right there. And when you know, Isaac cuffs it up. And here they came, the Grits Blitz. It was Pridemore. And he is brought down, but they couldn't cash in a touchdown. That is 7-3 at the half. Tampa Bay is leading Atlanta. Let's send you back now to Pat and Tommy. What a second half that's going to be in the Meadowlands. Halftime at Giants Stadium, where the Giants lead the Dallas Cowboys 7 to 3. Another good half coming. Two minutes to play in the first half. Kurt Gowdy and Hank Stram with you from Three River Stadium. There's your score. The late tuners in. The Steelers scored first. Bradshaw passing 11 yards to Stallworth. 7 0 first period. Riggins ran for a touchdown. 
of four yards to tie it up. 21-yard field goal by Barr and a 17-yard Bradshaw to Cunningham pass. And that's been it. This is a second down and six. They have a draw play. And it maybe had a yard, and that's all. Franco Harris brought down by Coy Bacon. For the ball on the Steeler 42-yard line. They'll have a third down. And still six to go. They take Bernie uh, Benny Cunningham out of the game, the tight end, bring in Jim Smith. So you'll have three wide receivers. And at the same time, a slot to the right with two receivers on the right side and one on the left. Smith over here on the left side. Lavender is covering Smith. That's a uh, look at that opening there. That's Stallworth. Stallworth, first down. It'll be on the Redskin 48 yard line. Bradshaw told me, Hank, he says, I always thought that Stallworth was as good as Swan, but he's just more subdued. They're both great. Yes, they really are. And they run, they, they both have such great hands and the great capacity to spot the open areas and get open, which is so important. You know, Bradshaw right now is up to 242 yards passing in the first half. They came, off, they came off the bus throwing the ball here this afternoon, oh. and he continues to throw it. They call the time to stop the clock. He has attempted 21 passes. He's completed 13. We told you the Steelers are tough to beat here. There goes Thornton into the locker room. While the Steelers are tough at home, losing only four games here in the last five years, the Redskins are no slouches on the road. Redskins have won four out of their five road games this year. Yeah, you know, and the other thing is so tough uh, when you play Pittsburgh, I mentioned it earlier, they trap you so much that going into the game, you're so concerned about being trapped that you don't rush the passer as well. And if you don't rush the passer, you're really in trouble. And the only way you're going to do that then is to shoot linebackers. Then you have one-on-one -on -one coverage, and then you're really in trouble. That last catch by Stallworth was his 46th of the season, and that's an all-time season high for him. First down, Steelers, and the Redskins 48. Bradshaw again. And it is intercepted. No, incomplete. That was number 47, Ray Waddy, who's playing in place of the injured Lamar Parrish. Nearly had it, but not quite. We've had no turnovers in this game, and we've had no sacks. A minute four to go in the half. Second down, 10 Steelers on the Redskins 48. Steelers all thought they were in for a difficult afternoon because of the Redskins' solid type of team and outstanding defense. They didn't come in here expecting any breather, even though the AFC knocked the NFC over six out of six last week. And Perry Brooks that time, 69, really got good pressure on Terry Bradshaw and made him throw an errant pass. Bradshaw, again. Here it is, deep to Smith. That's an interception by Lavender. Lavender has the ball, and the Redskins take over. Smith was double teamed. That's the fourth interception for Lavender. Parrish leads the Redskins with seven. Smith didn't do a very good job of trying to come back and knock the ball loose from Lavender. He should have fought for the ball to knock it loose, but he didn't, and finally he wound up making the tackle. But the damage was already done. It was an intercepted pass. This is hard for me to believe, but it probably is true. Somebody just handed me a note that Terry Bradshaw's had only one career 300-yard passing game. I remember that when I did it. It was in the Super Bowl last year in Miami, but he al he's already had 240-some yards in this one. And this is still the first half. Ella Redskin keeping her own territory. She'll throw the ball. They get it out to Ike Forte, who fumbles it. Up with it is the Steelers. I was about to say the Redskins are not going to play it safe, and they didn't. They completed the pass, and then Forte fumbled. Mel Blunt picked it up. Watch this. He hit Anderson in the left foot. Boy, I... There's Mal Blunt, who recovered. 
And now the Steelers who lost the ball with an interception have a chance to score 44 seconds to go. And we've just had our first turnover of the game. Boy, isn't that something? Mm. When they last had the ball, the Steelers, they were on the Redskins 48. Now they're on the Redskins 5. And a timeout called by the Redskins. They have two left. The Steelers have two left. Bradshaw and Noel talk it over. You know, the Steelers are the only National Football League team to start 1979 with all their own players. That is, none acquired via trades or free agents that played for somebody else. Dallas began the season with two outside free agents. Washington began the season with only 13 of the 45 man roster who were originally Redskin draft picks or free agents. So each team has gone a different route. The Steelers believe in home cooking. Redskins have patchwork their lineup, but I think you'll see that change, Hank, now. They have the draft picks coming up. Yes, year. I'm sure they will. And we talked to Bobby Beathard right before the game, and he was very enthusiastic about what might happen uh, in the 1980 draft. Grossman's in there, tied in. They have a double tight end set up. First down, goal to go, Steelers. The motion is Blyer, Bradshaw. Wide open. Robson, it's a touchdown to Grossman. Third touchdown pass of the game for Terry Bradshaw. Nice looking play. They rolled to the right. Grossman, the tight end on the right side. Looked like he blocked down momentarily. Went all the way over to the left side on a crossing pattern and was wide open on the play. Randy Grossman says his greatest thrill as a stealer was seeing his picture on a bubblegum card. He rides a bicycle, by the way, to and from practice. Well, the Redskins handed the Steelers that late opportunity and they took advantage of it. That bar will boot it. It's up. It's good. And what a day Terry Bradshaw is having. Three touchdown passes in the first half. 246 yards in passing in the first half. What did Major Bowles used to say? And around and round she goes. And where it stops, nobody knows. <laughs> you know, it's hard to get that many yards in a pregame warm-up in passing. That's right. There's your score, 24-7 Pittsburgh. Stay tuned for the NFL today here at halftime. Barr will kick it off. Bradshaw. What a great half he's had. I don't think anybody's still giving him enough credit for last year and guiding that club to 17 out of 19 wins. Buddy Hardiman, left side and jaw, was injured when he was hit high on that kickoff return, or that pass receiving return. Mike, four days deep, he's the fellow that coughed the ball up after a pass completion. A kick by Barr. to the 25. Tackled by Tom Graves. First year player from Michigan State. There's a distinction between a rookie and a first year player. Rookie, look at that. <laughs> what a drive that was. Four yards. Uh, a rookie's never been around before. First year player could have come up and then been put on injured reserve or had to sit out the season because of an injury. Hung around the club didn't have a chance to play. We have 32 seconds to go in the first half. And Theismann throws it to Riggins. Riggins comes out of the backfield. Boy, he's strong, isn't he? He kept going, picked up another 10 yards after the completion. He's not only strong, but he's got good speed, too. A lot of people uh, don't realize that he runs a 40 and 4-6. He and uh, the Jet front office got all crossed up over money. Well, they traded him away, and it's been a good reception of the trade by the Redskins. The Redskins had the ball, a first down on their 48-yard line. 24 seconds remaining. Joe Theismann, many think of him as a kid. He's nearly 30 years old. Three years in Canada, 
He was drafted originally by Miami, and he very wisely said, hey, Bob Greasy's there. Am I going to get to play? No. Bob Greasy is still the number one quarterback there. You know, we tried to get him when I was at Kansas City, too. We tried to get him when uh, he came back from the Canadian League, but we didn't succeed in, su succeed in doing it, of course, and he wound up in Washington. He went to, up to Canada for three years and sat behind Jurgensen and Gilman. Now he's a regular. He shoots it to Danny Buggs to 35. Buggs is down there, and the Redskins make him in and call timeout. The whistle blows with the ball dead in the first down, and it is the last timeout that the Redskins have left to them here in the first half. The score would help them. They just gave up a score that will be hard to take when they go into that locker room. 17-7. They had intercepted a long Bradshaw pass. They had taken over in their six. They completed the short pass and then a fumble and gave the Redskins the ball right back again. Yeah, with the game going like it is, it's very important for a team to get, to get uh, some kind of points before the half. It kind of gets you pumped up a little bit and gives you a lot of encouragement and more enthusiasm about what you might be able to do in the second half. Prior to the 1970 merger, the Redskins and the Steelers met 70 times. But since the merger, they've met only once. That was in a Monday night game in 1973, and the Steelers won it 21-16. First game they ever played against each other was back in 1933. The early days. Bob Bailey directed that game in 1933. <laughs> First down. Redskins ball. Heisman. They're running out of bounds and stops the clock at the 30 yard line. Now there are 10 seconds remaining in the half. He can move out of there behind that center, Hank. What's that? That he can really move out of there oh, behind that yes, center. Yes, he can. Especially with somebody chasing him. You always thought that was important, didn't you? A quarterback that could move. Yes, we always thought it was, you know, vital if you're going to move the ball consistently and go all the way because a quarterback who moves by design creates a lot of problems for the defense. Well, they have 10 seconds to go. It look like they're going to try a field goal. Feisman will spot it. 47-yard attempt. The kick is up, and the kick is no good. One of the few Mosley has missed this year. Mosley had booted 15 out of 19 and had hit five out of seven between 40 and 49, but he missed that one. I'm surprised they didn't try another pass. They uh, had 10 too. seconds uh, to try another pass and hopefully get a little closer, take a shot, and then if you make the completion, then of course you don't have to kick the ball so far, but it was surprising that they tried to kick it without trying one more time to get closer. Steelers ball, their own 30. Four seconds to go. I doubt if they'll play it safe, Hank. See if Bradshaw may try and unload one. He is. And they get him. Number 79, Bacon to fumble. Still loose. Doesn't make any difference. It's the end of the half. The half is over. A few more seconds than they might have wished they'd have played it safe. There's the end of the first half in Three River Stadium on a gorgeous November day here in Pittsburgh with a score the Pittsburgh Steelers 24 and the Redskins 7. Bud Wilkinson, since taking over the Cardinals, his team has lost 17 to 25 games, but this man's kept his poise, and he's trying to struggle along with them and get them out of it. From the 33, after a 44-yard punt, a 12-yard return by Willard Harrell, Jim Hart, and the team with the ball for the second time. We have an end-around reverse to Mel Gray. Gray to the 35, to the 40. Look out! He's to the 45, the 40, and he's going to be run out of bounds on the near sideline in the vicinity of the 25. Coming over to make that stop was Tom Hammond, who is the strong safety, or he would have gone all the way. Boy, I like this kind of football. What a good play. The pitch back to Anderson, everybody going that way, even Jim Hart was going that way, and he comes around, 
good blocking. He found a nice little lane to go through. Bostic pumping and pumping. Can't quite catch up with Gray. Finally run out of bounds by Tommy Hamm. They're going to mark the ball at the 29-yard line, a 38-yard run by Mel Gray. Well, Hannon did, did a good job of running him down. He was the last man. In motion comes Pat Tilly. The Cardinals, a little wrinkle on that play. Otis Anderson, look out. And he gets maybe a yard on the play, just good resourcefulness on his part. Jeff Seaman, the middle linebacker, making the tackle. Good defense this time because watch the Viking defense slide and get over there to cut off. No running room. You see Seaman, everybody, Sutherland moving, Darrell Loose moving. Everybody over, he has to cut back. And all he did was survive there to cut back in and just get a yard to keep from losing more yards. Second and nine for the Cardinals. Now from the 28-yard line of Minnesota. Cardinals the last time had a 48-yard drive come to an abrupt halt on an interception. There's a give to Wayne Morris. Morris spinning his way, and he backs across the 25-yard line. Wayne Morris, who always seemingly can hang on to that football. He's tough to jar it loose from. Tom Hannon again making the stop for the Minnesota Vikings. It's third down and still five yards to go. Something like 91 times he's uh, carried the ball or, or caught a pass without a fumble. Look at that stat, too. 182 yards against Minnesota. Best of his career. He had a good game last year against the Redskins, you remember, 123 yards. Third down, a long five, almost six to go. Hart. Protection is there. He hits Morris. Morris trying to get up the field, and he's not going to gain anything on that play. It's going to bring up fourth down, and that means Steve Little will be coming in with a field goal attempt. I think they're in his range right now. Well, he kicked a 51-yarder earlier this year, which tied the Cardinal record, and now this will be a 42-yard attempt. Roger Worley will hold, and Little for the year is 6 of 11. That 51-yarder was against Dallas earlier this year. 42 yards away, Little. And he's got enough on it, and he got it. And the Cardinals have taken a 3 to nothing lead at the 4-17 mark of this first quarter. So the end around reverse of 38 yards sets up the field goal of 42 yards for Steve Little. Hi, I'm Drew Pearson of the Dallas Cowboys. I learned a lot about football on a chalkboard, but where you really learn is on the field making your own decisions. That's what growing up is all about, making decisions. You know, alcohol abuse is a real problem today. Part of the answer is helping young people make the right decisions about whether or not they want to drink. There's a free booklet that can help every teenager make decisions about drinking. Write ECS, Box 687, Denver, 80201. Be a winner. Hi, I'm Dave Jennings of the Giants. Teamwork is important in the NFL. And quality education requires teamwork, too. Learning takes place everywhere, in the school and in the community, all the time, at all ages. The leaders who will solve today's problems and tomorrow's challenges are in your school right now. Call your local school to find out how you can become an active member of the education team. Right, kids? For more information, write Box 57020, Washington, D.C. The preceding public service announcement was brought to you on behalf of the National Football League. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Lincoln Mercury and the exciting 1980 Cougar XR7. And by Olympus OM10. Great shots automatically. It's been a long time, Tom, since the Giant fans have been this enthusiastic and this happy. And before the game, too, which I think had a, a big uh, input into why the Giants felt so bullish. Uh, young Sims has looked at the Dallas defense now under third down situations, and I think done an incredibly good job. His touchdown pass uh, to Perkins was really smooth. What about the statistical situation? Well, I, you know, time of possession, Dallas had it. They didn't get the touchdown from in close, and I personally think the roughing the passer call, while mm -hmm. it was a good call, was probably the biggest uh, play uh, uh, against perhaps the uh, you know, keeping that thing alive and even getting it down to where they missed on that short thing. But you need, is, if you're a good team, you got to get the touchdown when you're down that close. That is the fourth time in the last three weeks 
that teams have had first and goal against the Giants that have come away with no points. And that's got to give you a big psychological lift. Now Dallas's big scoring quarter is the second period, which is already passed. Mm -hmm. But they have so many quality people under this quality person. Don't count them out. And don't think, oh boy, we got the big upset until it's over. Uh, the Giants are going to have to earn every bit of it. And Dallas will make sure of that. If the second half is as good as the first half, we're in for a great afternoon of football at Giants Stadium. I can't believe it's going to be anything else because the Giants were the first team back out this time. And let's get down and pick up the action and see what's happening with Ray Perkins' group, who've won four in a row. The longest winning streak in the NFL at the moment. And how long has it been since you've been able to say that? But it belonged to the Giants. Well, since 1970 was the last time they won five in a row. And the team that they happened to beat the fifth week was the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. I was thinking about that win against uh, Los Angeles last week, the first time they've beaten the Rams since 1961. My gosh. At, at Yankee Stadium, Y. Tittle was the starting quarterback. Del Schofter was a receiver. And Y. and Dell couldn't get it done, and a guy named Charlie Connolly came off the bench to bail it out. Well, that doesn't seem that unusual now that you mentioned it after all. Charlie was a great quarterback. I tell picked you, an extra point in that game. You I did? Think How so. many extra points? I don't remember the score. 21-10, I think. You had to get three of them, then. It was easier then. The goal post was on the goal line. Intensity-wise, have you seen any fall off of the Cowboys? I think they played pretty good football. They just missed that touchdown from in close. Tom Landry said during the week, uh, Tom Brookshire, that he was afraid there might be a letdown after that loss last week to Pittsburgh, that usually his team, this particular team, <coughs> had a fall off in efficiency after a loss like that. We'll see. Cowboys haven't scored in eight quarters now. That's a lot. And scored a touchdown. A touchdown. Since uh, the game against St. Louis, as Hammond operates from out of his own end zone. Operates outside the 20 to about the 22. Mike Hegman and Bruce Huther down to break the wedge. Crucial series for a young quarterback. Now watch what happens now. Aaron Mitchell and company come down. The Giants, though, here's Lloyd blocking high enough so it's not a call. Remember, anything below the waist is really a no-no. Pretty good coverage by Cowboys. They got a lot of good people. That was Mike Hegman, number 58. The Giants operate with the same offensive lineup that went the entire first half. Perkins split wide to the right, Ernest Gray to the left. Coder and Taylor, the running backs. And Taylor ended right at the line of scrimmage by Randy White. Opening play of third period means forget it, the door is closed. What a great tackle. That time Taylor did a complete flip. It's called a tuck one flip. Watch number 38. 54 seems to be a little mad. He spins into the hole. All the way over. He gets about a 9-5 in my card. He beat a double team. Spun out of it. The center and the guard, Clack and Van Horn, tried to take him on, and he beat them both. Second down, and Sanders gets on a prompt by the corner. And again, 54. Somebody must have said something to Randy at halftime again. He was still hot over the bad call, he thought, when he was picked on for clipping. And if you get this guy from Wilmington, Delaware, all heated up by the fourth period, it's, it sounds like the express coming through the train station. <laughs> Smoke comes out of those ear holes. He is tough, especially so, in the second half. The monster. <laughs> half man, half monster. They need four for a first. Line of scrimmage, the giant 28. Sims. That's great. Benny Barnes slipped down. Sam stayed cool, but Randy White almost got him. Watch the left part of your screen. Van Horn makes pretty good contact early, and here comes that big bowling ball. White almost gets through. Got to be careful with Gray and Perkins. The giant receivers are 9-300 men. You got to be careful. Look at this action up front. They cut off the blitzing Mitchell, who was coming from the secondary. It's a pretty good offensive play, I'll tell you. Giants are cool. They get a first down at their own 40. Billy Taylor again, and Taylor gets good yardage, about five. Bob Brunig made the tackle. 
First down, it used to be hard to run against that Dallas defense, particularly on first down. That time, though, I noticed, and of course Perkins and his staff did, that they weren't in the flex. That time, they were in more of a, a mid-down type defense. The flex is gone on first down. Billy Taylor now 15 carries for 56 yards. Guy Brown on the left side, the linebacker in place of Thomas Henderson. There is that defense, and this time it is flexed. And Sims goes straight back. Hit by Randy White. The Giants got it back. Harvey Martin tried to pick it up. Couldn't find a handle. Billy Taylor made the recovery. Well, 54 hasn't slowed down since he came out for the second half. The center of your screen, watch him. He throws Van Horn aside, runs by Clack, runs through the back Taylor, and nails the quarterback and causes the fumble. And Harvey Martin was coming around the great circle route for the recovery. Woo, that's some effort on the line of scrimmage by White. Another one of those times when perhaps it might have been a wiser choice just to fall on it instead of trying to pick it up. Pittsburgh 24, Washington 7. Brad Shaw to Randy Grossman, the tight end for a touchdown. Sims back, White chases again. Sims runs and wisely ducks his head and does the hook slide. And Randy Hughes made the tackle. Little pressure put on by a Dallas team that puts Randy White on the outside, plays a three-man rush with a lot of people in that secondary that run like deer, and Sims was very smart in putting it away and coming back. Steve Wilson is number 81, the deep man for Dallas, and Dave Jennings back to kick for the Giants, who lead 7-3. We're in the opening minutes of Ooh. quarter number three. Wilson in the sunshine. Will not get around the corner. Number 29 is Eddie Hicks. 43-yard kick by Jennings. And he hung it up there a long time. So we have 11 minutes and 14 seconds left to play in the third quarter. <sighs> Dallas will have the ball at their own 32. They trail 7-3. We're back in Atlanta and visiting now with Eddie LeBaron, an old friend of ours, one of the great quarterbacks, and now the general manager of the Atlanta Falcons. And it's been a little different this year for you, hasn't it, Eddie? Frank, this has not been one of your great years as far as uh, what we've been doing. Uh, we played probably very similar to last year, but we lost four games in the last play of the game this year. Last year, we are winning those. Well, maybe you got all the luck last year, and now some of it is catching up to you this year. Well, I think it's more than luck. I think, uh, I think a good team will win close, and a team that's not so good will lose close. So we just have to get back on the track and start winning these uh, tough ones. But you got you still got a shot at the division, even though you're three and six. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, but uh, you have to start winning sometimes. You can't uh, win by default for, forever. But uh, uh, you know, Tampa Bay's an awfully good football team, so we're going to have a tough time today. And each week from now on is going to be tough. And we appreciate you stopping by and visiting with your old CBS cohorts. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Yes. Eddie LeBaron, the general manager of the Atlanta Falcons, and uh, one time, of course, a CBS analyst, and prior to that, one of the great quarterbacks in the National Football League. Second half kickoff time, getting close here in Atlanta. Tampa Bay leading the Falcons 7-3, to three, and we'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Steve Little, who just booted a 42-yard field goal to kick off. And back deep is Jimmy Edwards. He is second in the NFC in kickoff returns. We have the number ones and two men in kickoff returns in the NFC playing here this afternoon. Edwards out of northeast Louisiana, number 32. Boy, he's going back for that one, but he's going to bring it out. Jimmy Edwards, a former Canadian Football League star, has a little running room, and he's out to the 28-yard line. Edwards was the MVP in the Canadian Football League in 1977, playing for Hamilton. And they're going to mark the ball at the 28, first down Minnesota. Tom Lott with the tackle. There's that last drive culminating in the field goal, and look at that score. Boy, Washington must have made a mad tying that thing up at seven apiece. Brad Shaw has thrown three touchdown passes in that game. I think maybe they're back to where they were. You know, there was a moment in the season where people thought they might be vulnerable, but I believe they've reestablished control of their game, don't you? I would say so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> From the 28, first down, Minnesota. Sammy White in motion. He's picked up by Carl Allen. Kramer back to throw. He's going to dump it to the far side. With the catch is Ted Brown to the 25, and all he's going to do really is get back to the original line of scrimmage. Calvin Favron. That play just didn't develop well, <laughs> did it? 
it detonates. Look at this, Philadelphia. And Philadelphia, I understand Carmichael caught a pass today and established a new NFL record for at least one catch in 106 straight games. You know, that play you were talking about, Gary, I, th I think the defense really diagnosed this for fairly quickly, and you see that's why it didn't pick up more yards. He fakes the ball there, and he's already looking back to the other side, and you see red shirts already out there. Linebacker in good position. Davis is over there. Just took too long to develop. Nothing to go. I think maybe the way he's carrying that ball makes the <laughs> coach nervous. They're going to give him a yard on the play. Second and nine. Kramer. White falls down. And with a chance, with an interception, flying across the near side was Allen. The ball got away from Kramer that time, and if it hadn't, as you said, it would have been an interception by Carl Allen. It's a couple of times now, Sonny, we've seen the receivers fall down for Minnesota. Well, they've had trouble just finding a place to practice this past week, and, uh, you know, they, first time in a long time, I guess, on Astor Turf for them. Well, they thought they were going to like it. They thought it would help their passing game. Kramer now is 2 of 6 for 11 yards. Third down coming up thus far. The Vikings two of three, third and nine. Kramer, protection excellent. Ted Brown, Brown won't get the first down though as he's across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Again though, he showed the ability to stick his head in there and he fought for an additional yard or two and it looks like he'll be short. Went to the secondary receiver this time. Didn't have anybody open deep, gets good pass protection. Throws the ball short, hoping that Brown can pick up the first down by running with it. Doesn't quite pick up enough for the first down. They'll have to kick it away. And so, coming in to kick, once again, will be Greg Coleman. A drive stopping for Minnesota. The Cardinals defensively, if you look at them this year, are seventh overall, sixth against the rush. But they've had problems against the pass. They were tenth coming in here today. As you look at Willard Harrell. Harrell this year. Averaging 9.3 on punt returns. That's third in the NFC. And in one punt earlier this year, he returned one 68 yards, the longest of the year in the NFC. Errol at the 35, and he's still on his feet. He's out to the 45. Excellent run by Willard Harold to the 46 yard line. What? He does an excellent job here. Watch what happens. Uh, Coleman doesn't get all of this ball. He doesn't get a real good kick. He kind of falls down after he kicks the thing. He lost his footing. Looked like he had hurt his ankle a little bit on that. He sure did. A 28-yard kick that time by Coleman. An 11-yard return by Willard Harrell. That's summer all with Tom Brookshire at Giant Stadium. Dallas. Ron Springs is one set back and Tony Dorsett is the other. And Staubach goes on first down. Timid for Springs and he's knocked out of bounds. Good. By Beasley Reese. Good help for Reese deep as Van Horn went out and took the short zone. Here's the battle of the line of scrimmage. Mendenhall, the nose guard, who played so well, working against Fitzgerald. Big John this time really heads him off, gets help from Scott, and Roger throws his tenth pass. They rushed the Cowboys did for 20 times in the first half, and we'll watch that ratio very closely. That's a Steve Little 42-yard field goal, and the Cardinals draw first blood. Baltimore seven nothing over Cincinnati. Touchdown pass for Burt Jones. Staubach to Newhouse, draw play. About five, Brian Kelly, the leading tackler. Pretty good call on second. Second down, the draw. Newhouse now has, at the first half average, only two and a half yards a rush. That was his eighth carry. The Cowboys have got to get the ground game going. And one of their concerns is their lack of performance from the fullback position. On third and five, it'll be Springs. Back in the backfield with Staubach. Four wide receivers they have. Puts Johnson and Salvi both in the game, and the Giants put the rush on. Salvi, the intended receiver. And Staubach was wild to the right. Brad Van Pelt close to him, and the Giants hang on. Van Pelt ought to wear that flak jacket to bed at night. 
Super job he just did then. He's a big enough guy and fast enough to cover almost man to man. That time it was a great play by the linebacker. The Cowboys up until the last two weeks who were so very successful in their third down conversions are two out of nine today. That won't do it. Danny White will not throw it, will he? Uh, let's see. Line drive spiral hits at about the 21 and goes out of bounds. Right at that point. 45 yard kick for Danny White, who is in an individual battle with Dave Jennings for the conference leadership. Would you adopt a child who is handicapped? It takes a lot of patience, a lot of guts. I'm Steve Wilson of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I'd like for you to meet some people who are doing something pretty remarkable, finding permanent homes for handicapped children. It's a United Way agency, and they place kids that other adoption agencies just can't find homes for. A lot of parents who have already adopted a child with special needs also volunteer to come in and talk with the parents who are considering adoption. It made me think, what would I do in their place? These kids and their parents, they're really amazing. This is a unique service here in the Tampa Bay area, but it's typical of the way the United Way works. <laughs> thanks to them and thanks to you. <laughs> it works for all of us. The United Way. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Lincoln Mercury and the exciting 1980 Cougar XR7. And by Olympus OM10. Great shots automatically. Frank Labor with Paul Horning back in Atlanta at halftime. Capacity crowd of 60,000 looking on. Here are the first half statistics. Yards passing, you can see Tampa Bay has a very big edge, largely because of that one play when you get right down uh, to 64 it. 64-yard pass. Uh, Doug Williams also had a 50-yard pass dropped for a touchdown. Let's take a look at the first half highlights, Frank. The first touchdown for Tampa Bay was set up by this. 64-yard bomb to Morris Owens. Right beautifully. Beautifully thrown right perfectly. Perfect thrown pass, Frank. Letting perfectly. Roland Lawrence saves the touchdown here. It's marked at the one. And then Ricky Bell on the very next play goes up and over. Tampa Bay's only touchdown of the first half. Ready for the second half kickoff. Atlanta will be kicking off to Tampa. Beautiful afternoon. Temperature at 60 degrees. Tight football game. Atlanta's had the best of it running the football. Tampa Bay throwing the football. And Atlanta disappointed because they didn't go in just before the half. A couple of sacks cost them even an opportunity at a field goal. George Reichsdale will be the deep man. Number 23 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's their kickoff return specialist. And Tim Mazzetti as we said, has been under fire. In fact, there's some debate in the Atlanta newspapers this week about some comments that Lehman Bennett made that perhaps he's thinking about uh, giving Mr. Mr. Mazzetti a short vacation <laughs> to work out of his slump. Well, he said that was a misunderstanding. He had no uh, idea to, you know, let him take a vacation. But I'm sure it made Tim Mazzetti think oh, a little bit. I imagine so. Nice high floating kickoff. Ragsdale at the 7, 15, 20, 25, hit at the 27-yard line. Hey, Mazzetti had a string going, a 31 straight extra points, and then when he went bad, he went bad. He missed four out of his next five extra points. And he was kicking them low. He had a two or three of them blocked, Frank, but they actually were kicked low into the defense. First and ten. Tampa Bay's ball at the 27-yard line. Larry Mucker in at a wide receiver. John McKay alternating his wide receiver, sending in the plays. Muckers wide to the right side. Isaac Hagens is split to the left. That's Mucker in motion. Pitch to Ricky Bell. Trying to get outside. Bell reaches the 30 before Lawrence, number 22, makes the stop. Pickup of three. Second and seven. One thing impresses me about Ricky Bell, 
Obviously, he made a lot of money when he signed as a first-round draft choice, first man picked in the draft. Yet, uh, these last couple of years, while he's been uh, at Tampa, he has gone back and he has completed his education, got his degree. For a lot of people with that kind of money in their pocket, so, probably wouldn't have bothered. You got to admire that. I tell you, you talk about a young football team. Dave Revis, the left tackle, is the oldest veteran starting on offense, and he's a five-year veteran. All the rest of them, four years and under. Bell, big hole up the middle, and he jets through for the first down. Out to the 40-yard line, first and 10. Start Back. of the second half, looks like Tampa Bay wants to run it. Steve Wilson anchors that offensive line in the center. Look, he takes it. Wilson Falmawina way to the left, creates a gigantic hole for Ricky Bell. First down, Tampa Bay. No, so the ball just inside the 40-yard line, down at the 39 is where they mark it. Mucker to the right side, Isaac Hagens to the left. San Diego Chargers in front of Kansas City, 7-0 in the first period. That's Bell in motion. Johnny Davis, who's in the backfield with Bell, is caught at the line of scrimmage, drives forward, and gets a yard or two, and then is stacked up. Pridemore, number 27 in there. Lawrence, number 22. Eichendahl, number 54 for Atlanta. Tampa Bay Buccaneers have already won more football games this year than they have the first three years combined. Dan Fouts, a touchdown pass to John Jefferson. What a hookup combination that is. Fouts Second down, Jefferson. nine. Tampa with the ball at the 40-yard line. Doug Williams unleashes that rifle arm intended for Morris Owens. He had Lawrence all over him at the 42-yard line. In Atlanta's end of the field, we had a flag back at the line of scrimmage, roughing, roughing the passer. I tell you, he almost put this right on the numbers. I thought it was a good pitch, a little bit high, but that's the kind of catch you got to come up with at least 50% of the time if you're a receiver in the pro. That'll move it down to the 45. Personal foul. Rough. 74. That's a first down. You catch that number? Was it 74? It'd be 74, 54. Kuykendall, maybe. Pomwina, 74. I believe it was Kuykendall, though, 54. But it's a first down for Tampa Bay at the Atlanta Falcon 45-yard line. Early in the third period of play, John McKay. A lot of Tampa Bay rooters on hand here. We got a lot of orange over on the far side of the field, banners and everything else. I guess you might say this is the battle for the southeastern supremacy in pro football. <laughs> of course, Miami may have something to say about that. Ricky Bell couldn't get outside. Lawrence, number 22 over there, and Famuina, number 74. There's the orange. Spattered across the way. We must have two or three thousand people here from Tampa, Tampa Bay area. Roland Lawrence uh, came right up and met the run head on, made penetration across the line of scrimmage from his cornerback position. Loss of the play back to the 49 of Atlanta. It'll be second down 14. Falcons put in an extra defensive back and take out Edgar Fields, number 77. Eckwood doing a little jitterbugging down to the 45 pick up a four in the play Dewey McLean number 52 makes the stop Eckwood broke a bone in his wrist earlier this year and still uh, has that left wrist rather heavily bandaged and they say it has affected his play somewhat that play there a good illustration of the confidence in the Tampa Bay offense this year over last year last year second 15 they would have thrown the football right away. Here they come back with the draw and pick up six. They're still 0-3 in third down conversions. This is a third and 10 for Tampa Bay at the Atlanta 45. Quick pass. Hagens downfield. Lawrence down there with him. Out of bounds. So it goes as an incompleted forward pass. We'll come back to the line of scrimmage, and Blanchard comes on to do the funny. I good. think Tampa Bay's been a very good come-from-behind team. They haven't been behind in this ball game. 
but of their seven victories prior to this five have been come from behind wins that's Dennis Pearson number 81 the deep man Blanchard ready to do the kicking looks like a 10-man rush they're gonna try to block the kick and all they pulled off they dropped three guys back rather quickly high hanging punt fine effort in an attempt to save it from going into the end zone by number 44 the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Cesar didn't work out and Atlanta will get the ball offensively for the first time in the second half of play trailing seven to three Bill Sims the quarterback pitches back to Doug Coder and Coder goes down Billy Taylor got a good block out in front of him Rudy made a great tackle on the outside Enough penetration by the middle linebacker. Watch him right in the center of your screen. Go right through when he sees the guard pulling. Actually, it was the center pulling Clack. Coder had nowhere to go. In fact, that's the best thing that could happen to him. Get down early. Leading tackler on the Dallas team. That's only had three middle linebackers in their history, right? Only three. Second and 11. Cubs and Jordan. Bill Sims under five. Gets away from the rush. He is now getting away from everybody. Sims will have a first down. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Cliff Harris and Bob Brimick finally herded him out of bounds, but Phil Sims showing what an athlete he is. Well, he came, he came in with a scrambling five-and-a-half-yard average, so the 25-yarder is not unheard of. What is unheard of is where did the Dallas defense go once the pass failed to materialize? There's Stalls goes by, gets a little bit on it. Now watch this. From now on, people should be saying, hey, it's run, run, run. Nobody showed up for a long time until Harris forced this young man sort of out of bounds. He and Brunick. First down, Giants at their own 45. 9.26 left to play in third quarter. Giants lead 7-3. Big draw. Sims steps up. Sims again evades the rush. It's Gary Shirt. And Shirk slips down. Randy Hughes makes sure he stays, but another first down Giants. Dallas is frustrated because that time they broke down the Giants blocking but didn't get the quarterback again. Watch the left part of your screen. Randy White and Van Horn, that's a standoff. Cole makes a pretty good run, forces him up. Well, that time, Harvey Martin just missed from behind, and the throw is coolly done and not overthrown. And right there. The edges of the field are a little bit wet and a little bit slick because of yesterday's rain. Back live in New York, I'm Brent Musburger, and the rookie wonder is doing it again. Phil Sims has the Giants ahead of the Dallas Cowboys on this touchdown pass that we're going to show you. Perkins, the intended receiver. Sims had already thrown one interception at the Cowboy 32-yard line. Perkins makes a fine catch and then gets into the end zone. It was 7-0. Cowboys with fourth down decided to gamble. Staubach went for the pass. Watched Carson, the middle linebacker, to the deep zone, deflected away. 7-3, third period, could be the biggest upset of the day. And Tampa Bay heading for the playoffs under John McKay, leads Atlanta 7-3. Ricky Bell, one yard out. Pittsburgh dominating Washington, the game that you are watching. And in a good one, it is now Philadelphia 13, Cleveland 10. Yes, Carmichael did it, 106 straight games. Sipe, 21 yards to Reggie Rucker, 19th touchdown pass of the season for Sipe. Montgomery, 62-yard touchdown run. And New England has just tied Buffalo, 6-6. They are in the second period in that game. St. Louis has a field goal from Little, 42 yards away, 3-0. Burt Jones does it, 20 yards to McCall. What a different team that is with Jones at quarterback. They lead Cincinnati. And it was Fouts to Lord Jeff, 13 yards and a field goal, and it was 10 to nothing. Good old Lord Jeff. They can't stop him now, James. Yeah, okay. you got him a nickname now. He said, <laughs> when the Dallas Cowboys arrived in New York late yesterday, CBS had a cassette of two tall Joneses bout ready for them to view. Irv Cross asked Cowboy general manager Tex Schramm his reaction to Jones's debut. Well, it wasn't one of the great uh, fights of the century, I don't imagine, but I think a lot of people are today are overlooking the fact that it's a, uh, it was his first fight, just like a first fight of an amateur, and I think that the fact that he got through the sixth round, uh, there was a little kind of a stumble, I think, and an illegal hit at the end, but the fact that the judges and felt that he won the fight, it's uh, one step further for him on his new career. 
Tex, if Too Tall decided to come back to football with the Dallas Cowboys taken back? We would love nothing better than to have We'd love nothing better than to have Too Tall uh, come back to us. He left under the finest of circumstances. Before the draft, he came in and told us confidentially that he would not be back so that if that would make any difference, we could change our plans. Uh, he's been very complimentary to our football team. And uh, if the boxing does not ever work out for him, uh, he'll be very welcome with the Cowboys. They could use him this afternoon. Let's go live to the Meadowlands. The rookie, Phil Sims, has the Giants on the move again. In motion, Johnny Perkins. And offers to Taylor. A couple up the middle. Larry Cole led the defense again. Pat Sims is 7 of 10 now for 104 yards, one touchdown, one interception. But right now, the Cowboys are playing with lightning in a bottle because the speed outside that this Giant team has when they're fired up like that can beat and burn you. Very careful time for the secondary. Gary Cheater over on the sideline enjoying this day. Second and eight for Phil Sims, the rookie from Moorhead State. Draft choice number one, Billy Taylor. Dives over to about the 25 30. Let's make it. Pretty good call. That time the safety blitz by Harris saw the Giants trapped inside. They almost broke Taylor up the middle. You might recall the Super Bowl when Franco Harris scored on that play. Good recovery by the Dallas defense. That'll make it third and five for the Giants. Larry Cole, the leading tackler on that last play. Brad Van Pelt over on the sideline, flak jacket and all. of Perkins hurried and he had to throw it out of bounds Benny Barnes on the coverage what football he's been playing of late two safety blitzes in a row watch number 43 come into your screen there's Aaron Mitchell playing linebacker on the prevent everybody storms in there you can see Harris got the number 11's ribs but like two tall Jones yesterday in the fight he didn't knock him out or down <laughs> Joe Danello will go from 48 yards out Randy Dean will hold. Danello had a 49 and a 31 yarder against the Rams a week ago. He's got plenty of strength to get it there. And he does. And just barely wide to the right. Not good. And the score remains. 7 3 Giants. The line of scrimmage will be the 30 when the Dallas Cowboys take over. So it'll stay at 7-3, and the NFL today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. This is Sonny Jurgensen. I'm Gary Bender, and the Cardinals with excellent field position at that 28-yard kick, 11-yard return. The ball at their own 46-yard line, and they lead it 3 to nothing. Jim Hart, play action. Wide open, Melgren. Gray with a first down catch across the 40 inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. And Gray, when he's healthy, gives him an added dimension. Boy, it does. Exactly what I was going to say. When he plays, uh, they're a different offensive football team. He's been out with an ankle. He's had really had problems throughout the year staying healthy. And you see, tough man to cover. And he knows what to do with it when he catches it, too. But we saw him here one point with 70 some yards he caught against Philadelphia. You know, that's only for the year 13 catches, and that shows you how inactive he's been this year. 15-yard pickup at the 38-yard line, in motion comes Gray. Otis Anderson. Anderson getting a block for Morris, but uh, not much going on that play. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Maybe got a yard. Randy Holloway, a number one draft pick in 78 for Minnesota, in on the tackle. They really strung the play out well defensively then. Seem to be playing the sweeps better than the straight ahead stuff. Looking at Jim Hart there, you saw that ninth. He is the 15th player to ever go over 20,000 yards in his career in passing. He's had 10 ever to go over 2,000 completions in his career. So he's thrown a lot of footballs and had a lot of success. Second and nine. 
flag on the play, and that play just didn't go at all. It looked like Anderson had a little mix up on the exchange with Hart. And nothing got on track. They had kind of a screen pass going, but uh, Tim Baylor coming on a safety blitz showed it real early and didn't slow up enough and uh, actually ended up coming right on offsides. Baylor's the guy playing in place of Paul Krauss and also Kurt Knopf. His first start ever. They picked him up on waivers from the Baltimore Colts. And now the explanation. See if it isn't on. Upside 47 defense, second down. That's who it was, Tim, Tim Baylor. Tim Baylor coming right off sides on the safety bits. He tried to time it perfectly, but he got a little hit start. So that brings up second down now. Four yards to go for the Cardinals from the 33 of Minnesota. Three to nothing, St. Louis. Tilly in motion. Anderson. Anderson breaks it to the 25. That'll be a first down run. And again, I can't get over his ability. Look out, we've got some people. Oh. One of the officials was pushed out there. A flag has been thrown. That's Fred McNeil who's very upset. And he, I believe, is going to have a penalty tacked on that one. I don't think you push the officials, do you? <laughs> I don't believe he's going to get away with that one. Boy, he gave him a shot. I think he was just frustrated because somebody hit him late on the play. McNeil is playing with a bad toe. He did not start the game. Darrell Luce did, but he's back in there. They're going to explain that to Bud Grant. So that would be 15 yards tacked on. And that puts the Cardinals in excellent position. Let's go back and see what made him so upset. Yeah, as a late hit, I don't know who, if it's an intentional late hit or not. You see McNeil at, at coming in. He's trying to trap Anderson behind the line of scrimmage. Follow number 54 now. He goes down, and he gets right back up. You see him? He's back up into the play. Now he's, you see him on the left of your screen. I think number 65, Brad Oates hits him. Brad Oates came through and just turned him a flip after the play was over. On Sportsman Light, number 54, defense, disqualified, first down. Well, that means his services will no longer be needed as McNeil has been banished from the football game disqualified yes sir so it's a 12 yard line now is where the ball is marked after the penalty first down for st louis well you can't mess with those zebras can you oh. gray in motion on this first down hart to anderson anderson to the five touchdown but a flag there is a flag back at the 15 yard line it's going to be against whom it's against St. Louis, illegal motion, so they'll bring it back. Boy, take a look at this. Illegal motion. Looked like the right guard may have, looked like Terry Steve moved a little early. He may have been the man in motion. We'll have to check it. Number 68. And Boy. that's right where the play went to. Let's illegal listen. motion, number 6-8. Offense, <laughs> first down. Boy, when you can't get things going, it just keeps haunting you, doesn't it? Beautiful run, and you saw Jim Hart go running into the end zone to congratulate Anderson, and now they're going to have to try it again. That's why you're two and seven instead of seven and two. It just kind of raises its ugly head and smacks you right back down again. All the problems. First and 15 now instead of a touchdown at the 17-yard line for St. Louis. Play action. Hart to Gray intercepted by Nate Wright. His second interception, and he is ruled down. The ball has been blown dead back out to the 22, and that's the same area and the same man that intercepted the ball earlier against Jim Hart. It's a quick screen to Gray. You see him coming back, getting the ball. The ball is thrown, and it just ricochets up out of Gray's hands, intercepted again very alertly. Wright picks the thing off. The second of the day. That ball was thrown too hard. Gray just couldn't hang on to that one. I think because he had to throw the ball around the defensive line when Mullaney came in his view and he kind of sidearmed the ball and he threw it a little more upfield than he wanted to. Well, that's one of those that gets away from you. You're going to look back and that could haunt you before the day's over. Again, they stopped themselves. They've had a touchdown. They, they made a mistake again with a motion penalty and they followed up with an interception. That's twice it's happened to them. And that's 29 turnovers this year. The Cardinals have committed two interceptions today. Kramer up to Ted Brown to the 25 and this rookie from North Carolina State is out to the 30 yard line. 
Who does he remind you of? He reminds me a little bit of Wilbert Montgomery of Philadelphia. Uh -huh. That's a good analysis. He's a very tough runner. They, I think that's a primary thing they kept saying about Ted Brown is he's tough. And he's not very big, really, 5'10", 198. He got his first start last week. He's beaten out Chuck Foreman. And they're going to have a tough time getting him out of that starting job now. Brown, 20 yards on five carries. Second and three. Again, Brown. And Brown trying to turn it up the field for the first down. And he just fought Carl Allen off, and he got the first down. Again, you can see he's not afraid to take you on out there. Good play this time. Just a, just a sweep. Uh, nobody leading the play. It's kind of, you saw Ricky Young go in and make a good block for him. Get some good block from Sammy White also. And uh, nobody out in front of him kind of surprised the Cardinals. One thing he's given them is better outside speed. And there was an example of it right there. First down at the 36-yard line. As you mentioned earlier, Gary, they've had a tough time running the football. They have, but now Minnesota after the two big interceptions trying to keep this one going. Ricky Young and Young to the 39-yard line. They've moved Young around. They've moved him as a deep back in that I formation, giving him a chance to read the hole a little bit better. And they think he can be a good running back, obviously an excellent receiving back. Comes up to a second down seven, gain of three. First quarter score, Baltimore Colts leading the Bengals seven to nothing. A Burt Jones touchdown pass. New England and Buffalo all tied up in the second quarter, six apiece. Burt Jones came back in Baltimore. It was an entirely different football team. Just short of the 40-yard line, second down seven for the Vikings. They trail it three to nothing. Kramer back as this will be the last play of the first quarter. Young hit immediately, but he stays on his feet. Young to the 50. Look at this run by Ricky Young. That's just sheer determination. And that'll be another first down for the Minnesota Vikings as the first quarter has come to a close here at Bush Memorial Stadium. The Cardinals lead it 3 to nothing, but they've lost two golden opportunities. Let me show you Doug Williams from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As you know, the Buccaneers apparently are going to go to the playoffs. They are dominating the NFC Central. And watch this shotgun. Deep drop. And there it goes. Cameraman can't even find it. He threw it out of his range. Ricky Bell then bounced in for the Bucks touchdown. Williams' favorite target on the Bucks is Isaac Higgins. This time, Higgins coughs it up. Pridemore picks up the fumble. But Atlanta had to settle for a field goal by Mazzetti as their offense bogged down against that talented defense. And so it is still 7-3. to three. Let's send you back now to Kurt Gowdy and Hank Strand. And there's the halftime score. And it's been a passing show by Terry Bradshaw that we'll be talking about later. The score again. The Pittsburgh Steelers 24 and the Washington Redskins 7. did a great job, number 53, of stripping the defense. It's a pretty good play. Good blocking on the outside by Donovan. But Harry Carson came through and took Rafferty and Newhouse and stripped the play. And Reese made sure. That's not easy either. Wow, Mendenhall a little bit late. And over the top, those are four mobile good linebackers that the Giants present to you. Second and 13, Scott Laidlaw in the backfield with Dorsett. Dallas is illegally in motion. Flags go down. Confusion over on the right side. Number 61, I believe, uh, jumped a little bit. Big offensive tackle. Yeah. 
614 left third quarter. Roger doesn't seem to mind the crisis. All start, number 61, offense, second down. Voice of the referee, Jerry Mark Bright. Right. Second and 18, and Ron Springs, number 20, brings the play in for Roger Staubach. And he's a good pass receiver, and that's what Lloyd and Carson might be talking about right now. Tony Hill splits wide to the left, Drew Pearson to the right. Throw is to Dorset. Dorset hurdles up to about the 34-yard line. Gary Jeter in good pursuit and a good tackle. Some play by Lloyd, number 54. Look at him. He's up in the line on the left part. Watch this. He'll fake, fakes the draw, clears that. Now watch him go all the way over and make a good tackle. Good block here by Scott. Watch this play by Lloyd. Long way to go for an inside linebacker. Good pressure by George Martin. Third and seven. Another one of those third and long situations for Dallas. And again, they operate from the shotgun. Tony Hill with his first deception in two weeks has a Dallas first down. Beasley Reese took him to the turf. Artificial turf it is. Big battle on the line of scrimmage, and Mendenhall that time was really handled by Fitzgerald. A good pass by Roger. Watch the battle now as Fitzgerald sets up on 64, gets some help, dumps him, and gets the ball off to Hill. What's the blocking now? Fitzgerald straightens him up. Scott will be looking because Mendenhall has been in their side the whole time. As Jay Salvi, who came in to help out on the blocking. First down, Dallas. At their own 42, they trail. Screen back to Laidlaw. Looking for some place to go. Bounces off one tackler, gets to midfield. Harry Carson reacted quickly. This whole series smells like Ermel Allen and Reeves upstairs. Okay, they're in the 34. They're not really accustomed to it. Let's screen one way or fake screens and do into a draw screen series. And that's what we've seen now since they've been moving the ball. If we're going to run around, we'll run you out of position and sort of sneak in behind you a little bit. And it stands to reason if you're just going to rush three and drop eight, you're not going to beat them with a home run, are you? Or set back in the tail end of the eye tandem. He gets the pitch out. Mendenhall met him first. Very important. Notice how many people in the big blue jerseys are still on their feet when the tackle is made. You count them. Martin gets taken to the inside, but there's one, Mendenhall. There's Kelly, the linebacker. Jeter. A lot of people have not been cut down. Look at what Dorsett has done. 42 yards on 11 carries for Dorsett. Three. Just shy of midfield as Dupree comes in motion. Catching good. Dorsett has the Dallas first down. Just manages to hang on as he's hit. And maybe Dorsett needs a flag jacket. Tell you one thing, that's a tough catch. The ribs are aching. He's another one, though, that takes a lot of taunting and a lot of scratching to get the ball away from him. Even some tough hits, like last week when he ran into young Johnson. Johnson isn't playing this week, and Dorsett is. Watch this play. Roger is really zeroing him in, too. He's not being soft with it. Van Pelt weighs 235. He used to be a safety man in college. Double tight end situation. And here comes through in motion. The fake. Starbuck looking for some place to go. Jeter chasing. Can't get him. Starbuck goes down. And a flag goes with him. George Martin. The hit and the violation will again be against George, I believe. And he's got the flag. I'll tell you, he's got a right to be mad, too. I haven't seen the replay either, folks, but I don't think this was a good call. The other one I thought was. Watch number, Jeter number 70 now will turn the play back in. That's the way he should. Roger is still a great athlete on his feet. Now let's see what happens. Now there's a late spear on the left side. 
It was not Morton. I beg your pardon. It was Dan Lloyd, 54. Lloyd was late, but Martin was right on. Cowboys have the first down now with two minutes and 22 seconds left. Third quarter. But the Giants still lead 7 3. And as the seconds tick away, you wonder about whether or not the Cowboys should have gone for a field goal instead of a touchdown in those closing minutes of half number one. Hindsight is always good, isn't it? <laughs> Slowback is going to take off. And he slides down to about the 12. Harry Carson made sure he stayed there. But Roger, again, as Tom Brookshire pointed out a minute ago, still is a marvelous athlete. And I'm telling you, he's been hurt. As you know, uh, last week against Pittsburgh, he was hit in a very vulnerable position, uh, plus being hit on the knee. And he continues when everybody was closed up. Instead of running out of bounds, he turned it inside and I think made a remarkable run of it. Couldn't find anybody open. Scrambled for the first down at the Giant 12. Again, the violation appeared to be on the right side of the offensive line. I think it was Jim Cooper again, the young tackle who's done such a heck of a job for Landry. First guy, number 67. Oh, Pat Donovan. Let's see who moves. Yep, Donovan moved. Remember, the defensive players can move and stun around. They don't have to be as legitimate as those on offense. And so it'll be first and 15. Fourteen nothing, Baltimore over Cincinnati. Joe Washington's on a bench. A six-yard touchdown run for the Baltimore Colts. Baltimore has come to life. Looks like they're going to stay in Baltimore. Dorsett gets the handoff. George Martin, another good play. And also Dan Lloyd. Brendan Hall, the whole defense. Looks to me like the Giants have a new computer. What's this play? What's the left of your screen? Martin takes the inside and gets away with it. And beats Cooper across the line of scrimmage like he knew that play was coming in that particular situation. Jim Cooper's having a tough time with George Martin. And so it's second down, 18 yards. They need for a first. The line of scrimmage, the 20. Better get Tony Hill. Better get that thing in the air. Fires. Caught at the goal line by Drew Pearson and dropped. Incomplete. He couldn't hang on. Right on the goal line. Pearson had it once, maybe twice. What a great leaping catch that time. Take a look at the three-man rush. Eight people deep. Roger gets away from Jeter. Donovan handled him. Here's the throw, and it's really rifled. It was once, twice, three times. Well, that was close to a reception. Terry Jackson and Ray Oldham wrapped around him, and then Harry Carson arrived to make sure. Landry. How many times you ever see Pearson knocked away from a ball that he really has since to put away? Not very often. Not often at all. And Dallas now faces a third down situation. All the wide receivers in the game, including Butch Johnson. And they operate from the shotgun with good protection. High over the head, intended for Drew. And Raphael Septien will enter. Beasley Reese, Ray Rhodes on the cover. We've all done this, but we either overstrike the golf ball or overthrow the football. And Roger just flies the elbow and sails this right into the end zone. The person is pretty well covered anyway. Standing ovation again for the giant defense. Staubach and Landry not happy. It will be 37 yards away for. Raphael Septian with Danny White holding. He's 9 of 10 up to the 40-yard line. Snap is good. The hold looks good. And the kick is too. 7-6. The Giants lead with 31 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And fans, this is a good football game.
think you like that uh, cheerleader portion of the it's sports nice spectacular, weather part, right? isn't it? Yeah. Like the Atlanta cheerleaders are a portion of that. Uh, I hope it stays warm all year long. <laughs> man, up there. St. Louis, three to nothing, early first quarter lead over the Vikings. First and ten, Atlanta with the football at its 20-yard line. Falcons are kind of huffed and puffed up and down the field, but haven't had much to show for. It. Andrews carries out to the 24-yard line. Pick up a four. Dewey Selman, number 58, makes the stop. Dewey, of course, calls the defensive signals for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the linebacker position, and he and uh, Leroy have an audible where they pull one of the tricks where he loops outside and Leroy goes inside or vice versa. And they asked Dewey, he said, what is the audible call? And he says, I get back there and I yell, Leroy, and he knows what I mean. Give the ball, give the ball to Leroy. No, that's, that's another. That's offense. Second and six, Kane does a good job of breaking several tackles. Boy, he runs hard. Short of the first down at about the 28-yard line, Cecil Johnson, number 56, on the stop. Russ McKeska checks in now for Falcon. Double tight end. Third down, they'll need about a yard and a half for the first down. Kane is 49 yards and 16 carries. Andrews, 35 yards and 10 carries. Great passing situation here. He's reading your mind. Mitchell, the tight end, picks up the first down at the 35-yard line. Mark Cotney, number 33. Old James Mitchell isn't the ball player he once was, but he can still catch him. Well, this is the easiest time in the world for a receiver to get open when it's third and one. Everybody on that defense, especially your linebackers and your front four, has to play the run. Here's Mitchell, one of his very infrequent catches of the year. That's only his fifth catch the whole 79 season. Got two today. First down, Falcons at their 34-yard line. They trail by a score of 7-3. to 9.45, left third period. Barkowski loosens it up, gets it out to Francis. At the 40, Wallace Francis is to the 45-yard line. Francis working on his best year ever. That's his first catch in the afternoon, Frank. Here it is off the left side. A little roll out right. Francis just in front of that zone. You'll see Mark Cotney, number 33, missed the tackle. Finally pulled down by Dewey Selman. Another Falcon first down. This one at the 45-yard line. Atlanta in its own end of the field. But driving here in the third period on its first offensive possession. Little delay goes to Kane. Caught at the line of scrimmage. Selman had him first. He started to get away from Dewey and then David Lewis. Number 57 closed on him after a pickup of short yardage on the play out to the 47-yard line. Bill Kohler now playing nose guard in that 3-4 defense for Tampa Bay. Second and eight. Kohler missed all of last week's game against Minnesota because of spasms in his back. He did not start today. Uh, Kohler's out of left defensive end. Place of Chambers. Randy Crowder's playing those guys. On second and eight. Barkowski. Andrews doing the juggling act at about midfield. Pass is incomplete as Washington came up quickly from the secondary, number 40. At that time, he, he missed the pass, Frank, but number one. He did not run a deep enough pattern. He hooked up way too sharp. Third down conversions, Atlanta third or three out of eight. They've got a third and eight here from their 47 yard line. They're gonna double cover both the outside receivers. Barkowski in trouble behind the line, gonna run it. He's to the 50. And stopped short of the first down. He lost the football. But again, it may have happened after the whistle. Well, the last time he scrambled, he got popped, popped up the football, but it was ruled dead. And let's see how they rule this one. Oh, he really got cream. I tell you, quarterbacks take their life in their own hands when they run. I think defenders take an extra hard little shot at a quarterback, oh, too, when he's sure, running, right? I sure do. Here it is. 
They want to make him think you run it again. You've got to get it twice as hard. They're going to go for it. Atlanta retains possession on the fumble. Fourth down. Less than a yard needed for the first down. Lehman Bennett doing a little pacing. Well, last time on third and one, they went upstairs. I think they'll keep it on the ground here out of the eye. Quarterback sneak by Bartkowski. Got it. First down for the Falcons at the Tampa Bay 45. You know, talking about hard hits reminds me of one of the great stories I ever heard down near the goal line when they used to have the goal post many years ago. Dick Nolan told me he was playing defensive back for the Giants and Tank Younger, the Rams, took a handoff and put his head down and moved forward and bounced into the goal post and just went down and was almost knocked out. And Nolan looked at him and said, boy, you come this way, next time I'll hit you even harder. <laughs> It'd take a goal post to stop Tank Younger, too. First and ten. Bartkowski with Jenkins on the far side make it Wallace Francis at the 40 yard line a pickup of five on that play Mark Cockney number 33 back there Bartkowski starting to go now a little bit more to Wallace Francis same thing happened last Monday night you didn't know Francis was in the game to the fourth quarter here a little square out pattern from a slot formation 33 is Mark Cockney second down Little less than five needed for the first down, actually closer to four, as the officials have it marked at the Tampa Bay 44-yard line. Falcons have a pretty good drive working here, started back at the 20-yard line. Kane, that's another Atlanta first down, this time at the 34. Curtis Jordan, number 25 on the stop. Straight ahead, par football. Double wing, got two blockers on each corner. We got Kane, the remaining back. And they're just trapped. The tight end block down. The tackle pulls out. You see Warren Bryant, 66, getting a good seal block. First down. Ten yards to go for the Atlanta Falcons at the Tampa 34. They trail 7-3. to three. Five minutes, 15 seconds left in the third period. Francis in motion. Andrews. Maybe a yard or so, and that's all. See, that's that's the down it hurts, Frank. They're moving, they're moving the football, picking up four, five, six yards on first down. They get close, scoring position, and they only pick up one. Now, in fact, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage here. Now it's second and ten. That changes your whole thinking offensively. Baltimore in front of Cincinnati. Burt Jones must be back. Have they lost since he's been back? Well, he's just thrown a touchdown pass to Reese McCall. Joe Washington scored. Second and ten. Blitz by Tampa. Pass is caught. Let's see if he was out of bounds. No, sir. He did catch it at the 23-yard line on the far side. It was Alfred Jenkins, number 84 for the Falcons. Great pitch. Watch his pitch. There they are. Slot formation left. Rolling to his left. Barkowski right on the money. Now, this is a good catch. Actually, it was good coverage over there by Mike Washington, number 40. It was just a good execution. Ball marked at the 23-yard line of Tampa. Another first down for the Atlanta Falcons. The fifth in this drive. Now we go back to running the football. Now we're back in first and ten. Payne caught at the line of scrimmage. Fights his way forward for two or three. Close to the 20-yard line. Johnson... 56 and Lewis 57. This is the way this defense has been playing Frank all year long. Now Tampa Bay is giving up grudgingly, so a few yards at a time. So long they Atlanta's held the ball now for three or four minutes. But the law of averages, an offensive team, they'll have a breakdown when you have 12 or 13 plays in a row. This is the way that Tampa Bay defense has been playing all year long. They make you earn every yard. Second and seven from the 21 yard line. Payne and Andrews, the two rookie setbacks. Bartkowski, little pitch underneath. Andrews at the 10 and down to the five-yard line. It's almost a college play. Well, it? it's ruled actually a forward pass. It's a completed pass to Andrews. Well, here's that breakdown again. Now watch it. Delay, rolling to the left, a little left-handed pitch. 
to Andrews. Now they tried this play in the first half. Leroy Smel uh, Selman got the play from behind. This time it worked, but they're going to bring it back. Holding against Atlanta. Holding offense number 66. Warren Bryant guilty of the holding call, and just as you were saying, this Tampa Bay defense gives him a few yards and uh, waits for him to self-destruct, more or less, either a penalty or a turnover. That'll move it back to the 28-yard line. It'll be second down and 13. Make it 14. Needed for the first down. Now Barkowski's got to throw it. He's under pressure. Three. Dumps it off to Andrews at the 30, 25. Andrews is down to the 20. They need to reach the 13 for the first down. Good play and good hard running by Andrews here. He got almost half of it back. Picked up eight. Watch a screen form. And watch number 70, Dave Scott. He gets a piece of a block right there. Barely trips up Andrews, but he's going straight ahead. Chambers finally on the stop. Pressure on Bartkowski. Right here. That's Randy Crowder. Ball is marked at the 20-yard line. It is third down and seven. Big play for the Falcons in this drive. They've come a long way. A catchable pass. It came out a little hot, but Jenkins couldn't hold it. It was right there. He knew he was going to get popped for that safety man. On those quick posts, you hear everybody talk about footsteps. You've got to be able to catch the football in traffic. And those receivers, they don't like to run that quick post. They know no. they're going to get their head torn off. So it'll be fourth and seven. Mazzetti has hit one field goal from 31 yards away. This attempt will be from 38. James will put it down at the 28-yard line. And it is no good. He missed it off to the left. He hooked it. That has got to be terribly disheartening, not only to Mazzetti, but to the Falcons, who held the ball for that long period of time, came all the way from their own 20-yard line, and they wind up with a big, fat goose egg on this drive. Right. Two minutes, 39 seconds left to play in the third period here at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta. Tampa still leading 7-3. Hi, I'm John Riggins of the Washington Redskins, and this is my mother Mildred, a very brave and determined woman. We're here at the YWCA, where the United Way supports a program to help rehabilitate women who have had mastectomies. Mom, why don't you tell them your story? Let's go in, John, and I'll tell you about it. You know, John, when I had my mastectomy, they didn't have a program like this, so I volunteered my services to help other women. There are specially designed exercises and discussion groups. Volunteers help provide the physical and emotional support these women need to feel whole again. It's so important to have someone who cares. A lot of volunteers, just like my mom, make this program work. Thanks to them, the United Way works here in Washington. And it works in your town, too. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. Right, Mom? Right, John. Preceding announcement furnished to the public service by the National Football League. 24-7 Steelers ahead, but the story of this game is the passing of Terry Bradshaw, who's on his way, Hank, to his all-time personal high in the Steeler uniform. Yes, he's completed 14 of 25 for a very impressive 246 yards. He came off the bus throwing the football. Kurt, as you know, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more passing in the second half. Three touchdown passes for him. And we're spreading out now for the kickoff second half. Let's go down the field. Here we are, lads. The Redskins are going to kick it off. Three hundred eighteen yards in a game is the high for Bradshaw in his career and that was in last January Super Bowl. This is uh, Larry Anderson who's deep. 
24 to 7 as we begin the second half. Pittsburgh in the lead. Throwing with surprising ease today. That is a sustained inbound. He was looking at the sideline. It'll be a touchback. First down, Pittsburgh. Bradshaw's high in a regular season game in his 10 year career has been 291 yards. 246 in the first half. You know, he hasn't had to throw that much in the past and had, had, hasn't had any 300 yard gains because they've always run the ball so, so well, Kurt, but they're throwing the ball extremely well here this afternoon. Now, there's a story behind that. Flyer and Franklin Harris in the back. Thornton, I believe, injured his ankle. That's Rocky Blyer. He's to the 20. Pulled down and out of bounds on the 24-yard line. And Brad Dusick, number 59, drove him out. The Steelers were a ball control running team. Then 77, 78, they switched over to a passing team. More. This year, they're back to a ball control running team up until today. Today, they been the aerial circus out here but they've got a lot of confidence in their passing game and of course as you mentioned they used to take the bus to where they wanted to go now they're taking the jet second down six well the Redskins are a solid defensive team and they're not easy to run against well that's why Bradshaw's throwing so much Burt Jones is Baltimore ahead there's Blyer Blyer has the first down Rocky Blyer what a sport he's been when you get up against him, he's, he's a small-looking back, although he weighs 210, a very compact 210. He's not very tall, 5'11". Big player here in his team, leading the blocking for Harris, running the ball. He and Harris one year combined for 1,000 yards apiece, and Rocky's averaged six yards a carry this year. But gradually, they've moved Thornton in ahead of him and used Blyer sparingly now. First down, Pittsburgh under 33. He only ran for 52 yards in the first half. I'm sure they're going to try to work on their running game some in the second half. That's what they are doing, working on the running game. As Blyer, he stopped at the 35-yard line, two-yard gain. Dave Butts stopping him there, second down eight. This is Kurt Gowdy, Hank Strand. We've just opened the third quarter here in Pittsburgh. 24 to 7, the Steelers in the lead. And we are in the first minute of play of the second half. This would be a good time for a draw or some kind of a trap, Kurt, because uh, they're going to be coming. And they are going after him. Pass is incomplete. It was being covered. It was intended for Cunningham. It was covered by Mark Murphy, third-year player out of Colgate. Safety man. Third and eight. Well, that was another bad-looking pattern. The tight end and the flanker were very close yeah. together. They could have shaken Quark. hands on the they play. Were, yeah, they were right there together. Going out is Carl Lorch. Joe Jones comes in to rush. Better pass rusher. Third and eight for the Steelers. He's got it. What a catch. Stallworth still going. Stallworth will score. Stallworth in. And that play goes 65 yards. Boy, what a fantastic pitch. But in conjunction with that, what great presence. Watch, he goes back into the pocket. Delivers a strike to Stallworth right between two defensive backs. The ball was deflected. He caught it, maintained concentration, took off right down the middle for the goal post, and he goes into the end zone and changes the scoreboard. A beautiful play. Bradshaw now has broken a couple of his own records. The first time he's ever thrown four touchdown passes in a game in his 10-year career. How many yards does he have now? We'll count that up for you. Kick coming up by Matt Barr. It's good. And the Steelers are pouring it on now. 311 yards for Bradshaw. The score, Pittsburgh 31 and Washington 7. 
Just a moment ago, Ricky Young on an 18-yard run. And, Sonny, let's go back and look at this good run by number 34. Look at the good run and also the good effort by Ricky Young. But look at the missed tackles right here. One missed tackle. Really had a shot at him. Oh, Allerman has a shot at it and misses him. Down the sidelines, finally <laughs> breaking another tackle. You know, it was just poor tackling more than in, the, in a great effort on Ricky Young's part. We start the second quarter. Three to nothing. The Cardinals with the lead on the strength of a 42-yard field goal. They've been deep in the Vikings territory on two other occasions, only to end up with interceptions. Look at the time and possession. St. Louis with the better of it. From the 42, first down, Kramer back. Excellent protection. Wide up at Sammy White. The ball was underthrown. Ken Stone had a chance at an interception, but White was open, but he had to wait on the football. Well, he had him beaten so badly, so quickly, that uh, Tommy wasn't ready to th deliver the football. He's real late, he's open now, and then he winds up and tries to get a lot on the football, and it does hang, and it is underthrown, and almost intercepted. You know, White did not have a catch last week, and that was the first time ever. It ended his streak at 52 consecutive games with at least one catch. Boy, he had him beat on that one. Second down, 10 from the 42. White in motion again. I'm sure they'll catalog that one and come back with it later. A gift to Ricky Young. Young to the 40, flag thrown as he makes it to the 39-yard line. Kurt Allerman again on the tackle for St. Louis. A lot of penalties in this football game. Last week, the Vikings had 10 penalties for 87 yards. It's holding against Minnesota. Gotta set them back again. Minnesota is four and five. They trail Tampa Bay by three games in the Central Division. Bud Grant said it very well. He said, we can't worry about the race right now. We just worry about the game against St. Louis. Well, they need somebody to help them in uh, knocking off Tampa Bay. And Holy 6-7 offense, second down. That's Dennis Swilly, the center who replaced Mick Tinglehoff this year. For the Vikings, they have four penalties now for 32 yards. Just looking at a halftime score, Tampa Bay is leading the Atlanta Falcons 7-3 to three at halftime. Tampa Bay, you know, they won all those in a row, five in a row, then they dropped a couple, and now they've come back and reestablished a, a pretty good football team. Talking to, talking to the Viking players, they said they are for real. Foreman said that. Second down and 20 now from the 48, Kramer. Pressure from Eric Williams, Ricky Young. He's dropped immediately by Fairfield, but almost... You had the feeling Bearfield had seen the football. He might have had an interception. Well, what a dangerous play. He had got nothing on the ball because he couldn't find anybody open. Watch him when he drifts to his left. You see how off balance he is when he delivers the ball back across the field. Just nothing on it at all. And you see, if the man had been playing the football, he would have scored with it. And that's not indicative of Kramer now, Sonny. He's underthrown a couple of passes. He has a strong arm. He does, but he was in such a bad position to deliver the football at that time. All right, third down, 20 yards to go. A holding penalty now, and the Vikings trying to fight their way out of it. Kramer back, Dawson putting on pressure, steps up, throws. What a catch is made. Beautiful catch by Ahmad Rashad at the 35. Now that is apparently a couple yards short of the first down. Roger Worley defending. The pressure is outside, and it leaves him a pocket to go right up to. See Dawson coming around. He has a good pocket to run through. You get an indication of how strong his arm is right there because he threw that on the run. And Worley tried to come over the top to knock the ball away, but he couldn't quite do it. Rashad joined the excellent hands. A former number one pick for the Cardinals in 1972. Look at the yardage for him in 79 coming into this game. That was a 16-yard gain. Fourth down now. Still three yards to go, and they're going for it. On fourth down, they bring in two tight ends. Stu Boyd, Bob Tucker in. That's Tucker in motion. Kramer gets to Brown, and Brown has it, I believe. It looks like Brown got the first down. He had three yards to pick up, and the way he knifed forward, he did get it. First down, Minnesota. I think it caught him by surprise a little bit by going this. Surprise, the Cardinals going for it. Good play, good gamble. You can say good, Gary, I guess, because it worked. <laughs> and so at the 31, the gamble pays off for Minnesota. First down, 12.43 to go till halftime as Bud Grant looking on. Four Super Bowl appearances with his team. 
six consecutive NFC Central Division titles. First down from the 31. Brown, 30, 25, spun around there, and he may have had a tackling by face mask by Eric Williams. The way he was spun around, you got to believe he picked up the face mask. Official right there on it, and I think they are going to call that. Well, this Brown impresses me. Brown looked like he got hurt a little bit. Um, no, I guess he's okay. He's going back toward the huddle. Take a look at it and see if he came. Number 55 coming over, Eric Williams, right here. And you see right there, yep. left arm, grabs that face mask. Now it's a case where there's flagrant as to the extent of the penalty. And they're stepping off. Yardage inside the 15. Let's listen. Personal foul, face mask, 5-5 five five defense, first down. And so to the 12-yard line. There's Brown. He's kind of checking to see if he has everything still there. He actually took his helmet off uh, walking back to the huddle to check it. And so the rookie from North Carolina State has 37 yards now for the day. First down at the 12-yard line. Here he goes again. They're going to stay with their main weapon right now, and this time doesn't work. Good reaction, particularly by number 82, Bob Pollard. Pollard with five sacks this year for the Cardinals. They really missed him last week when he injured the knee in the first quarter. In fact, they thought at first he might have to undergo surgery, but he's bounced back and recuperated in a hurry. Second and ten. Was it Steve Neals, their linebacker? Didn't even realize he had a broken bone. He ended up playing the game. Went 72 yards for a touchdown on a fumble recovery on a broken leg. It's not a weight-bearing bone. Doesn't have to have a cast, but he'll be out five weeks at least. Kramer back on second and ten. Touchdown catch. That's Sammy White. <laughs> he trapped it. Let's look at that one again. It looked like he had it. I thought he did too. Let's take a look at it. The official, official is very close. Maybe the official, I tell you, being as close, take a look at it. He has him wide open. Tommy should have had the ball a little bit in more in front of him. You see where he threw the ball, kind of behind him. And from our viewpoint, it's hard to uh, see, but evidently he had it off to the we side. Have Carl Allen's right there, too. I tell you, he must have lost it down on his hip. Not much uh, complaining about it, so it had to be the correct call. I tell you, those officials do a job, don't they? I tell you. Judgments that they have to make in the split seconds that they do them in. It's remarkable that they do such an accurate job. So it's third down again, third and ten. Boyd is in at the tight end spot. Three receivers split out. Kramer with only one running back rolling out. Rashad dropped immediately by Perry Smith. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Fourth down again. They gambled before. Perry Smith's seen a lot of action now. And so fourth down, this time they're going to go for the field goal. So earlier on a fourth down, they went on a fourth and three and picked it up. But this time coming in will be Rick Danmeyer. And Danmeyer has been very effective this year. He's hit 10 of 12 field goals, his longest from 43 yards. And this is going to be a 25-yard attempt. Danmeyer has not missed inside the 40-yard line this year. 25-yard attempt by Danmeyer. And the kick is no good. It bared off. And so the Vikings with a chance to tie up this game. They don't get it. Danmeyer missing the 25-yarder with 10.50 to go until halftime. Raphael Septien was the end of that drive with a 37-yard field goal. And number one is about to kick off. Cowboys had the ball for six and a half minutes. The referee in motion. I believe the wind is right into to the face of the Dallas kicker, isn't it? Let's see. Pretty good kick. Bobby Hammond will field it at the four. Hammond looking for some place to go. A couple of good blocks by the Giants. But Larry Bethea makes the tackle. The CBS Sports Spectacular. Next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time features the World Powerlifting Championships and the, uh, that show that you want to do, the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders. Well, the Powerlifting Championship sounds like something I usually would do. And the World Series of Poker. Something I probably should have done better in my days, yes. Maybe uh, when you get one of those shows, 
You'll take me with you. <laughs> All right. Ball at their own 20 yard line. And off is straight ahead of Doug Coder. And perhaps the line of scrimmage before Randy White. Watch him operate. Number 54 sort of set the tone for Dallas in his second half. It's if we don't want to hit, fellas, we're going to lose. There's the cut block by Van Horn, and Randy White is so strong. Oh, man, does he work on the ball carrier. It'll be second and nine. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Giants seven, Dallas six. We now pause for a word from your local station. Here's the field goal attempt once again. Well, they got a natural hook on the football. Looks like it's coming through. Now watch the hook. So important for these sidewinders to aim at that right goal post when they kick. That looked like uh, one of your golf shots. Mm -hmm. You've got to move the right hand that's over. It. Right? That's what it is. Well, this way, you got to move the right foot over again. Right. What he did. First and ten from the 20-yard line as Williams feeds Eckwood the football for Tampa Bay. And the Arkansas rookie gets it out to the 25 or 26. Tom Pridemore, number 27. On the stop, pickup of six. It'll be second down four. Well, Terry Bradshaw and company are taking care of the Redskins. Four touchdown passes by Terry Bradshaw today. They now lead the Washington Redskins 31 to 7. You see the Giants a one-point lead over Dallas. Our score, 7 to 3, Tampa Bay leading. We have not had a score here in the second half. Two minutes, five seconds left in the third period. Second and four for the Buccaneers at their 26-yard line. Ricky Bell out to the 28. Pickup of two. It'll be third down. Still two needed for the first. Robert Pennywell, number 59, the middle linebacker on the stop. There's Bradshaw having a day in that one, as I told you. Four TD passes. Tampa Bay, good road team this year. Of their seven uh, victories, four have come on the road. They are four and one away from home. And uh, as we mentioned, they're five and zero oh against Central Division teams, teams in their own division, and they've won three of those on the road. And the season, uh, the teams that they have to play down the stretch, they're going to be favored, most of them. Probably all of them, right? I would think so. On third and one, they go wide to Eckwood, and Eckwood driving for the first down just did get enough. He did it on his own. Frank Reed on the stop. After they play at Detroit next week, Tampa Bay goes home for three straight against the Giants, Minnesota, and Chicago. And they close with San Francisco and Kansas City. And I would think they're going to be favorites in maybe all those games. Mm -hmm. Would you? I would imagine so. And it might be a little bit early to start talking about this, but wouldn't it be something that had the home field advantage in the playoffs? The well, if they have the best record in the conference, they'll get it. And right now it's uh, Tampa and Dallas, 7 and 2. First and 10. Bucks at their 31 yard line. Safety blitz. Williams. Caught by number 50, Greg Brezina, the linebacker. Now, Brezina has been an interesting case this year. He had something like 10 quarterback sacks last year. That was his first sack this year. Here's Doug Williams. He's trying to get it off in a hurry here. Brezina comes around the outside, and this is only the third sack of the season for Williams. Drop for the loss back at the 27-yard line. It'll be second down and 14. Here's, the Buccaneers. Where, here's where the Atlanta defense in the past has used a lot of blitz, and I don't think you should blitz when you have them second and 15, second and 16, because that puts that secondary back there man to man. And how do you expect a $50,000 defensive back to cover a $100,000 receiver That's man right. to man? That's the quarter. Time has run out in the third period of play. So, at the end of three quarters here at the Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Buccaneers seven, Falcons three. Ike Forte will receive the kickoff. The Redskins have been damaged in the air today. Here's Forte on the seven. 15 to the 20, 25, 30. Still going over the 35 and is rolled out of bounds. 
just inside of his own 40 by Tom Graves. And they're in the third quarter. The Giants hanging on, leading Dallas 7 to 6. Septiano had just booted a field goal with uh, 31 seconds to go. And now Dallas leads 9 to 7. There's that last play. Stallworth, by the way, has 126 yards receiving in this game, six catches. That ties a career high for him. He went in the game with 41 catches. Now he's got 47, of course. He leads the NFL in the most yardage. And he hasn't hurt himself with that performance today. Riggins piled up at the 39-yard line. The Redskins have done nothing running the ball against this very strong steel curtain defense. You know, they've thrown very few passes on first down, too, Kurt. You know, I'm surprised that they don't haven't tried to throw some play action on earlier downs. That's Kruzik, the backup quarterback. Look at Noel with that little smile on his what do you say, son? You want to get in there and get some action? I like to see him see if Bradshaw go for 400 yards. But these coaches don't care about that. I want to talk to Hank about that. Second down, eight. Bison toss, incomplete out of bounds to McDaniel. What about it? Do you ever take a player's records into account if you're way ahead in the game? No, not really and truly. The the only thing that really is important is you win the football game, and during the process, if you can establish some records, that's fine. But I don't think you try to intentionally try to establish records by uh, uh, helping the individual stats of one player. Anderson just passed 67 yards to Isaac Curtis. It's a famous battery out there. Ryan Land, 14 to 7, Baltimore. Larry Anderson becomes a fifth secondary back. Heisman will try and hit this first down. That pass is intercepted by Mel Blunt. Blunt has it, and it's Pittsburgh's ball. That's the second turnover against Washington. There you see him back in the pocket, forces the ball, tries to throw it over the top of Mel Blount. Well, we have a timeout on the field. As Mr. Blunt is congratulated, Pittsburgh ahead, 31-7. Hello there, Bradshaw to Stallworth, 65 yards, the fourth touchdown pass for the Steeler quarterback. Kenny Anderson, a 67-yarder to Isaac Curtis, and the Bengals aren't dead. Just looking at John Dutton standing over on the sideline a minute ago. What do you think of the, the professional pugilistic debut of Ed Too Tall Jones yesterday? You mean out in Las Cruces? Yes. Well, we had a bigger fight than that when our Roswell High played Las Cruces High once when I was a young, young person type. You played against Las Cruces? Oh, yes. The Apodaca brothers used to drive us nuts. <laughs> Where are they now? They can kick with either foot. Second down for Giants. Cowboys have a mix up in their secondary. Sims looking for some place to go. And with lots of time finds or tries to find Doug Coda, who is covered by Mike Hickman. Aaron Kyle and Randy Hughes collided in the Dallas secondary and knocked each other down. Talk about some good coverage, though. They had everybody blanketed, and this is where a young quarterback must not revert and start forcing throws. Pretty good pass protection. Two people on Harvey Martin. Randy White's being sort of screened off. Cole is operating. Now, watch this. Don't throw this ball. Doug Coder, the intended receiver. Third and nine situation. And watch for a blitz coming now. up close to the line of scrimmage. Fakes a blitz, doesn't come. It looks like there was a flag on the field, but that's not. That's a balloon. And that'll be shy of a first down. It's like those strange things you saw over in Pittsburgh last week. Uh, I've been invited to join some UFO clubs because of those <laughs> shiny things. I never did figure out what they were. Looks like See Randy them. Hughes might be shaken up a little bit. There goes that yellow balloon blowing by. That should be illegal. This looks like a leg job. The Cowboys can not afford to lose number 42. There's Dave Jennings. 
stopped by to say hello last night. He's also been having a little pressure put on him as he punts. He's a great punter, but he takes a little time. Uh, Dallas does a pretty good job of scouting. They may try to block one. Next week's regional games here on CBS, the Cardinals at Washington, Tampa Bay against Detroit, the Rams, Chicago, Minnesota, Green Bay, San Francisco, New Orleans, and Atlanta will be here against the Giants. Consult your local listings for the game and time in your area. And don't forget all the action begins with the NFL Today pregame show with Brent Musburger, Jane Kennedy, Irv Cross, Jimmy the Greek Snyder, and Jack Whitaker. <laughs> By the way, Hughes did walk off. You saw him walking off. Uh, he's another one of those academic All-Americans that's a pretty good professional football player. Took the place of Charlie Waters and has handled it well. Steve Wilson back for Dallas. Dave Jennings. Lots of times really hits this one. Over the head of Wilson. Wilson back into the end zone. Out of it. Steve Wilson steps out of bounds. On the five yard line, an almost disaster. Dave Jennings really rooted that one. 72 yards. Is this to a the muff? End zone. Is that a muff or a fumble? Whatever it is, he's in a hurry. And it's dangerous. Washington, D.C. International, 28th running of the Turf Classic from Laurel Racecourse in Laurel, Maryland. Great horses in that Golden Act, who was in the money in all three Triple Crown. Races, bowl game, one of the great turf horse, handicap horse in America. He'll be in there. They're also going to have live coverage of a special tribute to a firm. Starting the final period of play, we had a fumble on the play. The ball is still loose. Who's got it? They're trying to unscramble. Referee Ben Dreith has not given an indication as to which way it'll go. Atlanta has recovered the fumble. I don't know who got it. it was a big scramble but anyway we know Atlanta has it Greg Bazina was around the football again the South will rise again first down for Atlanta at the 28 yard line here it is a pitch around the left side Equus got the football this is his seventh fumble of the year he's had a problem coping up the football when we come back the Falcons are in business Sonny, let's go back on that missed field goal by Dan Meyer. I couldn't tell exactly how far he missed it. We can see it now from the end zone. Looks like the snap is good. Uh, just good. He just hits it. He hits it off conventional style kick. And it looks like he just kind of shanked it a little bit. Sure did. You can't use that word. The field goal kickers and golfers. You know that. I think you jinxed him when you said he hadn't missed one inside of the 40. Don't get me in on this now. From the 20 yard line first down. Both these teams have lost some excellent opportunity. Two interceptions. The Cardinals had the ball inside the 20, and now on this field goal, Anderson falls down. Anderson gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Let's check that Dallas game again. Boy, Dallas is having a tough time getting in the end zone. They've the last two weeks they get three against Pittsburgh, and they have two more field goals today. Where's that high-powered offense? Well, I tell you, the Giants always played tough defense and now that they've had Sims rejuvenate that offense they are a tough football team. Hey, somebody else is having some problems today and that's the Washington Redskins. They trail the Steelers 31 to 7. Whoa. Here's Anderson on a sweep and Anderson's going to pick up four yards to the 24 to bring up third down and six. A lot of white shirts out on that play. We have a Tampa Bay score I understand. Or do it. Third down, Bay. six yards to go from the 24-yard line. The score I have on Tampa, it's still seven to three. Tampa leading Atlanta. Okay, seven to three. So third down again for the Cardinals, and they are one of two on third down conversions. Tilly and Gray flanked out. The Cardinals with a three to nothing lead. They got that on a field goal in the first quarter. Nine and a half minutes to go till halftime. Hart back. And this is Bill Morrell coming in. Morrell seeing his first action as a player from the line of scrimmage with good speed, a former six-round draft pick from Pittsburgh, and he couldn't have been more open on that play. Yeah, he came open right down the middle of the defense, and uh, Jim just overthrew him a little bit. 
So it brings up fourth down. Hart now is three of seven for 27 yards. And, of course, the two interceptions. Little will go back and kick. And there's that Tampa Bay score, Sonny. Seven to three. They in the third period now. Jimmy Edwards back deep for this kick from Steve Little, who's averaging 40.7, and that is sixth best in the NFC. He is the only man in the NFL that's doing all the kicking for a team. And what a boot. Oh, did he get into that one. Edwards at the 25-yard line. 30. Look out. He has a lot of running room to the 50-yard line, to the 40, to the 35, and he's run out in the vicinity of the 30-yard line of St. Louis and Jimmy Edwards, who came in here with an excellent return average, an average of 6.8 on punts, will help his average there with a 42-yard return. And that's just a case Steve Little outkicked the coverage. You hear that said an awful lot. He did that time, and then just excellent running by Jimmy Edwards. Then he, he got through the, the line of tacklers, and he found the sideline, got down the sidelines, Lucky to get him out of bounds. Oops. I don't see very many guys with those high top shoes like that. A 51 yard kick, as you mentioned, probably too long. And then a 42 yard return. What do you get a net out of that? A nine <laughs> yards. That's right. And so from the 33 yard line now, Minnesota with another good field position situation. Kramer ready to go. Kramer to Brown. Brown trying to go wide, nothing doing. He'll try it the other way. Kramer trying to throw a block for him. And Brown to the 25, to the 20-yard line. And all that running around did a pretty good job. He ran 40 yards to pick up 10. Did you see Kramer try to throw a block on <laughs> Bearfield? Look out, Tommy. Don't be throwing blocks like that. You, they take you. Watch number nine here. The quarterbacks aren't supposed to throw blocks. Watch it. No, no room. No room. Here he comes. Come on. Oh, there's. Now he's going to try to throw field. another little block here. He peels back. Oh, <laughs> that's a good quarterback block. <laughs> good piece of running by Brown. Our producer, Bob Rowe, said all good quarterbacks throw blocks. What's he saying? I don't know. First down, now just inside the 20-yard line. It wasn't in my contract. I knew that. <laughs> Kramer. And... Good move up the middle again. The Vikings have done a good job of running the football. Ricky Young that time. This is something that they haven't been able to establish, but they have certainly drawn the attention of the Cardinals. At the 17, it'll be second and eight. Williams, Bearfield in on the tackle. Ricky Young's the man they picked up from San Diego in a trade for Ed White. He's the cousin of Robert Brazil, a nephew, Walter Payton. I'll tell you, he's had some pretty good talent in his family not bad himself on a second eight young again young cuts it to the 15 and that will bring up a third down and still five yards to go <laughs> and so Dan Meyer who missed a field goal earlier is on the far sideline and he has that kicking shoe on if they don't get it on this play Terry LeCount now comes in there's part of the crowd the sixth straight sellout this year for the Cardinals Boy, that speaks well of the fans here in St. Louis, especially when they have yet to see the Cardinals win a home game. They're 0-5 here. They're 0-5, Sonny, and interestingly enough, the only team in the league that's winless at home this year. Third down, six yards to go. Kramer back blitz, and he had to get rid of it too quickly. That was Roy Green on the blitz, and here comes Dan Meyer now with another field goal attempt. Well, they beat him. They surprised him and came with a blitz, a safety blitz this time. It's a, it's a risk, type of high risk type of defense. But you saw they forced him to throw the ball badly, and I have to try to go for the field goal. I think when you're not having things going your way, you have to shake it up, don't you? You have to blitz maybe more, create things. Defense, you have to give him a lot of credit after the big punt return. Uh, they buckle up and held here. 33-yard field goal attempt now by Dan Meyer, who earlier missed one from 25. This kick on the way. And this one is no good. That didn't look good either, did it? Something about the start of that kick between he and Paul Krause, who was holding. And Dan Meyer now has missed a 25-yarder. He's missed a 33-yarder, and the Cardinals still lead it 3 to nothing. Atlanta, Georgia, and some of the Falcon fans. Kiss our grit. That's right out of Alice. 
on CBS tonight. First and 10, Falcons at the 28 of Tampa Bay. Going against the number one defense in the NFC, Bartkowski sends Kane up the middle. Inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Look at this time of possession through the first three quarters. Can you believe Atlanta's trailing in this football game? Opportunities they have had. Well, they've controlled the football. And keep in mind that drop pass by Isaac Hagel. Sure six points. Second down, five. Markowski has the Falcons down at the Tampa Bay 23. That's Kane in motion. Darkowski goes up the middle to Mayberry, who has just come into the game, and Mayberry, another outstanding rookie running back, carries down to the 20-yard line. That'll be close to a first down. <laughs> third quarter, four minutes to go, still in the third quarter, Philadelphia, 16, Cleveland, 10. Third down conversions, the Falcons are four out of 13. They have a third down, and they'll need two for the first down. Ball at the 20-yard line. They might have two downs. They might go for it on fourth down. Kane, who's been their bread and butter man, driving for the first down. And it will be close at the 18-yard line. That's the point they needed. Ben Dreit, the referee, signaling an official timeout. And let's see if we'll need the measurement. Got a player shaken up. They have been... Uh, Oh, Kane was running yeah, hard. Yeah, was Kane. Oh, he really, really went hard into the pile. Well, that's a tough play on short yardage, Frank. You get any penetration on a pitch like this, it's going to foul it up. You'll see the pitch sweep left, and Kane just does it all on his own right there. Good quick block by Andrews. He puts his head down, and he's close, and I think he's got it. The sound of the crowd, he does. They did pick up the first down. Kane still being tended to down to the field. Lynn Kane out of Southern California. He was recruited, by the way. It's another one by John the There goes Chambers. We'll return to Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta after this word from your local station. It was 72 yards from where Jennings kicked the ball to the end zone. I don't know if he had to run out on Muff or if uh, New York could have fallen on a Muff and gotten six points or not. I'll have to check it. Newhouse struggles out to the five. Brad Van Pelt on the tackle. Less than 14 minutes on the clock now, and the Giants lead 7-6. It's amazing, though, that Cowboys come in here with 100 and, what, 170 yards rushing per game. They had 76 yards rushing after three periods. This darn defense from that 34 has played very, very well. They have really put things uh, together in a solid way since they switched to that 34, which they perhaps the eight. Brian Kelly on the tackle. What a defensive stand. Remember now, a good defense that works with a putter like Jennings can have you in bad field position half the afternoon if you don't take it and go on long drives. Laid law comes out, Ron Springs goes in. Dupree comes out and Dorsett comes out. 16-10, the Eagles over Cleveland. It'll be third and six, Dallas and Cheater asking for some support from this sellout crowd, none of whom have departed, which you wouldn't expect them to. Martin jumps, but stays. Staubach from the shotgun. Lots and lots of time throws to Springs and he'll have the first down. Some breathing room for Dallas. Brad Van Pelt, the giant who finally got there. Well, that rookie, the rookie from Ohio State is going to be some football player number 20. He is about Roger's fourth choice. You can see Salty having trouble getting off the line. Roger, though, with a lot of time, is five battle three. Ball is not thrown beautifully. Springs makes sure of the catch. He is really an outstanding receiver. First and 10 and Dorsett this time gets up the middle for three or four. But again, the hole is quickly closed. Harry Carson slammed it. Dorsett unable to really shake. 
In fact, the, the whole year, Dallas has been without that enormously big play. Uh, the longest run by Dorsett has been like 41 this year. And Rogers' longest pass play is like 47. Dorsett, 14 carries, just 25 yards. They shut him off. Dallas has difficulty running. They fake a blitz. Straw back. Straight back. Caught. Tony Hill, first down, Dallas. Beautiful pattern. Number 80 just drove Rhodes off and then came back. Just enough to make the first down. Watch the left part of your screen. Let's see what kind of time against the three-man rush. No blitzing coming. And they're ganging up on Mendenhall, making sure Rafferty and Fitzgerald. Great comeback pattern. And you have to give number 80 some room or he'll run by you. The back of Jim Cooper in the offensive huddle for Dallas. 7-6. The Giants lead the Cowboys. 11-13 left to play. Two field goals by Raphael Septien. All Dallas has been able to put on the scoreboards. Here is the reverse to Tony Hill. With a blocker in front, which is Herbert Scott. Another Dallas first down fumble. Picked off in midair by Beasley Reese. And the Giants have it. That's the 13th fumble that Dallas has lost on offense. I think Lloyd made the contact that forced the fumble, wasn't it? And Mendenhall in on it. Here's the reverse to the left of your screen. Now watch Scott out in front. Good block here. But Hill was carrying that thing out of his forearm. Mendenhall, one of the tacklers who forced that fumble. That looks like it perhaps is Tony Hill that might be shaken up on the far side of the field. It is Tony holding his right thigh. Here's the fumble. He's carrying it loose. There it is. Pittsburgh's ball on their own 49-yard line. Mike Kruzik is in that quarterback. You're right, Hank. Dolan doesn't care about Bradshaw getting 400-yard passing or breaking records. Well, the worst thing, thing, this worst, thing could, time. worst thing could happen would be if he got him hurt in this kind of a game. It would be tragic. That's right. Rocky Blyer by Mike Kruzik. Speaking of injuries, Bradshaw was injured uh, three or four years ago, and they brought a rookie, and there's Bradshaw, Kruzik, and Kruzik guided him to six wins in a row as quarterback. They had a nine-game winning streak. They went out to play Oakland for the championship, and Blyer and Franco Harris did not play in the championship game because of injury. Oakland won, went on to the Super Bowl, and beat the Vikings. Down, four. Dealers on the Redskins, 45. Franco Harris ganged up before he could reach the 45 of Washington by Dyron Talbert. They tried to run a trap. They tried to run a trap that time, but Paul Smith, number 78, did a good job of getting penetration and stopped that last play. And of course, when we talk about a trap, we're referring to a play whereby you permit the defensive lineman to come across the line of scrimmage like he isn't going to be blocked, and then somebody traps him or blocks him from the inside out. Mike Kruzik, Boston College, his fourth year. He has three wide receivers on the field for him. And he completes the pass to Blyer coming out of the backfield to the 35-yard line for a first down of Washington. Boy, Bacon had a rush on him, but he still threw a good pass to Blyer. Blyer that time had the option to run inside or outside on the linebacker, Dusick, number 59. Started outside, came inside, was open, made a beautiful play, and the ball was right on the money for a big game. 11 minutes to play in the third period. The Steelers have scored already in this half, and they're on top 31-7. to They've taken Bradshaw out, and they want to give this young fella playing time. Mike Cruiser. They don't want him to be rusty in case something happens to Ratshaw. Flyer twisting and turning and going to the 32-yard line where Pete Wysocki buckled down Wysocki took him. <laughs> Number 50, a fighter, fifth-year player from Western Michigan. What was that song on? Buckle down, win Socky. Buckle down. There you got it. There you got it. 
Second down, seven. Steelers, seven wins, two losses. Trying to stay ahead of the Cleveland Browns and the Houston Oilers. Michael Harris had a hole, and he's to the 24. Mark Murphy tackling, number 29. Another nice looking trap play that time with a right guard trapping and uh, blocking Dyron Talbert on the play. Another first down. Now the Eagles on a Tony Franklin. What a kicker he is, a rookie, Texas A&M. Wonder how he'll kick later on when it gets colder with that bare foot. I guess he does all right. 42 yard field goal, 16 to 10. The Eagles over the Browns. First down, Steelers. On the Washington 24. Looks like something left. And you're right. Left they go. Not much. Harris. Trapped right at the line of scrimmage. Hit there by 79. Coy Bacon. Franco Harris. Up in the top five of the all-time rushers in pro football history. Franco. 29 years old. Still should have some productive years. He may go on. Trying to beat out Jimmy Brown's going to be tough as O.J. Simpson found out. Brown didn't miss a game in nine years of playing. Second and nine. A fumble the ball. And it's recovered by the Redskins. Bonnie Coleman's on it. Number 51, the young linebacker. Looked like the young quarterback, Mike Krusek, that time tried to get out of there too quickly and uh, for that reason dropped the football. The mesh between he and the center was bad. And of course, Washington now has possession first and 10 on the 25. Remember Monday night on CBS, the white shadow, followed by MASH, WKRP in Cincinnati. And gambling takes a special toll on Lou Grant. All on CBS Monday night. Malone and Riggins are the running back. Heisman to Danny Bugs on the screen. 30, 35. Bugs fights his way up to the 40 of the Redskins. This one yeah. has enough for a first down. One of the few times he's thrown the ball on first down. A nice looking play. A quick screen to the outside to Danny Bugs. Blunt and Lambert teamed up to make the tackle. There's Coy Bacon. First down, Redskins. They're on their 40. They're trailing 31 to 7. Theismann has 21 passing attempts. He's completed 11. Riggins rolled out of bounds. I bet him alone rolled out of bounds. Number 25 by Jack Ham. Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Defensive ball game in the fourth period. Tampa Bay got by the Vikings last week, 12 to 10. They're not scoring much lately, but neither is the opposition. Yeah, that's a great thing about Tampa. Their defense has really been phenomenal all year long. They've had a, they had a couple of bad games in the middle of the season, right before the middle, but they're they're really capable of doing a great job defensively. The Redskins have a second down eight on their own 42-yard line. Good catch there by Don Warren, the tight end. Warren is beating Fugit out right now. Warren of San Diego State. That's another first down. Look at that score. 6-6 six, six, New England and Buffalo in the third period. And that's it. Redskins hurrying out of that huddle. And the guy grab a couple quick scores here and get back in this game. They protect for Theismann, and that's incomplete intended for Riggins. Dennis Winston and Lambert rushing hard. Going into this game, Pittsburgh was third in total defense, five against the rush, six against the pass. And offensively, the Redskins, 11 on total offense, five rushing, 12 passing. So it's tough for them 
because they really and truly want to run the football as much as they possibly can. Now they have to play catch up football and throw the ball to get back at this game. And it's tough to do that against this fine Pittsburgh Steeler defense. They have McDaniel in the slot. Second down, 10. Redskins on the Steeler 45. Deep drop. Screen to Riggins. Riggins a hit. Great play by Dennis Winston. They call him dirty. Got that in college. However, do we have a flag down? There's somebody down. That's well, Kuzil. Boy, Winston really made a great play on that screen. Somebody thought that uh, he was called dirt because he had his face in the dirt all the time. Other people said no, it's because of his hard hitting in college. He can hit the pros too. He got the game ball last week against Dallas. He's had three game balls over the Steelers and all have been against the Cowboys. Something happens to him. He's played Dallas. Third down, long. Incomplete. Too high for number 30, Ike Forte. And Theisman goes to the sideline. His team will have to go into punt formation. San Diego leading Kansas City 10 0 in the second. Defense gets a hand here in Three River Stadium. Bragg with his figures for the season. Boots a high one. Their catch skips into the end zone. It'll be first down for the Steelers on their own 20 yard line. You know Mike Bragg is really one of the great kickers in the league and the, the one thing that makes him so consistently good is the fact that he drops the ball so well and hits it so a square when it hits his foot. What are they talking about here now? Our microphone to the official is out, having all kinds of technical problems. This looks like an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Half the distance to the goal. We won't be able to get this explanation. It happened on the 10 yard line. Unsportsmanlike conduct was the call. That's the fourth penalty, 25 yards uh, against the Steelers. Steelers have the ball on their own five yard line with a first down. And now a timeout. We have five minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And our score, 31 to 7, in favor of Pittsburgh. Kane is helped to the sidelines, favoring his right knee. Let's pick it up and see if we tell where he gets hit. There he cuts back. Now he's got his balance here. And he gets swarmed under. This might have been a strain. Back to live action now. First and 10 from the 18 yard line. Bubba Bean, number 44, who has come into the ball game, where Kane takes the carry. Being kind of a forgotten man. Former top draft choice of the Falcons. He teamed with Haskell Stanback, their top two runners all of last year. And they're both on the bench now with these two good rookies, Kane and Andrews. And Stanback and Bubba Bean led this team in rushing the last three years. Pickup of a yard, second and nine from the 17 yard line. Atlanta trailing seven to three early in the final period. Nice hole, and that's Mulberry inside the 10 to the five yard line. Fine run by James Mayberry, Jordan, and Washington. Well, Save the touchdown. They caught the Tampa Bay defense a little asleep here. Second 10, they're playing the pass all the way. Hand off to Mayberry, and the fine rookie twist to the five yard line. A pickup of 12 for the first down. First and goal to go now from the five. Fans really coming alive. Capacity crowd of better than 60,000. Mayberry and Bubba Bean are the setbacks. That's Bean in motion. Barkowski calls the signals. It's Mayberry trying to climb the mountain over the middle. 
maybe a yard at the four yard line before he shoved back. It's a little sticky down there. Oh, right? does it ever? Sounds like a man who's been there before. He got pop right here, right over the middle. They give it to the first back. Mayberry goes up and over. All he's trying to do is to get his body over and possibly fall to about the two or the one yard line. Good, solid defense. Mayberry, third round draft choice out of Colorado. Second goal to go from the four. Uh, middle linebacker should really be the key here. He should key on that fullback. Bartkowski, kind of a half roll at six points. Atlanta leads. James Mitchell, number 86, the tight end. That's his first touchdown of the year. And he's having his best day. It's his third catch of the day. He only had four receptions all year long, Frank. And this is a little roll right. He comes back against the green from his tight end position. All the flow goes to the right. And there's Jim Mitchell all alone walks into the end zone. Uh -huh. You he don't was, want to do that. That's about a 50 dollars right. fine. Isn't it? He caught it in mid-throw there. Had he thrown that thing up in the stands, it would have been a big fine. 200 bucks fine. Mazzetti on the extra point. Atlanta has the lead for the first time in the football game. So things are getting interesting here at Fulton County Stadium. 11 minutes, 10 seconds left to play, and the Falcons lead for the first time. 10 to 7. Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see the heavyweights in action in the World Powerlifting Championships, plus part two of the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders and the conclusion of the World Series of Poker. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Tony Hill on the sideline. It appears to be a bruised right thigh above the knee. It's Billy Taylor. Brunick leads the Dallas defense. 76,490 in the stands today. And something to yell about here in Jersey, huh? At the Meadowlands. That, that is an all time record. That's the best field position, by the way, that the fans and the Giants have seen today. The earliest or the best they had it before that was from the 25 on that scoring drive. By the way, some of the fans we understand have been calling saying uh, these are not just New York fans, these are also. New Jersey fans. The important thing is they are giant fans. All right. And they are some of the best. Second down, Taylor the carry. Maybe one. Mike Hegman, number 58 on the tackle, along with Randy Hughes. By the way, we got a ruling when when young uh, Wilson had the ball hit his head on the punt and went into the end zone. The ruling was, according to the NFL of, uh, supervisor, Art McNally, that the ball's impetus carried it into the end zone, and therefore, Wilson did not have to run that ball out, that there would have been no safety had he been tackled in the end zone. And I don't understand that either. John Dutton lined up on the defense for Dallas. Bill sees the quarterback, and somebody on the right side of the giant offense moved. This play will go for naught. Stalls thought it happened in front of him. Dave is the one sort of leading the clapping. There's half undressed uh, young rookie from Morehead State. But it's no longer Phil who is it? Nope. Atlanta 10 Tampa Bay 7. Markowski to Jim Mitchell from close in a four yard TD pass. Of course they come to play the Giants next week. Ball start, number 74, offense, third down, timeout, Giants. Tom Neville, the violator, and the Giants have taken a timeout. It sims over talking to Perkins. Some Cowboy fans are here, too. There's the loneliest man in the ballpark right now, Rick Danmeyer. He's missed two field goals, his last one of 33 yards. You know what he's missing right now is helmet because he threw it over the bench when he got back there. So after the missed field goal, the Cardinals had the ball at the 20-yard line. They still lead it three to nothing. Pat Tilly in motion. Hart, play action. Gets it off quickly to Wayne Morris. Morris to the 30. He has a first down. Wayne Morris out to the 32-yard line. So the Cardinals get with 3.57 left in the third quarter. Philadelphia leading 16 to 10. They could move into a tie with Dallas for first place. Doesn't look like Washington's going to have that opportunity. 
Yeah, Terry Bradshaw's out of the game because it's 31 to 6 now. He's done four touchdown passes. First down from the 32 after that catch by Wayne Morris. Mel Gray in motion. Otis Anderson, and right now he's having a lot of trouble running the football after starting out very effectively. Gain of one. Jeff Seaman, the middle linebacker. He's been in four Pro Bowls for the Minnesota Vikings. He led him in tackles in 78. He's had some leg difficulties that slowed him down. Anderson does have 52 yards thus far on 10 carries. By the way, Bob Young, who's had all kinds of hamstring trouble, is out for the rest of the day. He re-injured it. As they continue to be plagued with injuries in that offensive line. Bob was married on Monday. Hart back to throw. Bostic gets his man away from him, and looks like Anderson couldn't locate the football. Dave Roller, 76, putting pressure on, and looks like he got a hand on it. I think he did. You take a look, he was just going to throw the little outlet pass to Anderson. You see he gets good pressure from Mark Mullaney back there. has to duck back in in the last second. I think Roller gets a hand on this and then tips the ball away. He did. Dave Roller, a former Packer, who's been known for his pass rush. He had eight sacks in 77 for Green Bay. That led the team that year. Out of Kentucky, six-year man. Third and nine. Oh, wait a minute. White, 72, firing off. Might have been George Collins, who's in there now in place of Bob Young that moved, and that's it. Yeah, legal think, motion. I think in the second, in the looks like Anderson. Watch Anderson, the halfback, moves too. You'll see him move a little early at the top of your screen on the left. You see him move, and, the, and then the offensive line set up also. Yeah, Collins was the guy though. I think that made Anderson move, don't you? He may have been. Bolt start, six six offense, third down. So Collins, second year man out of Georgia, who was a fourth round pick last year. And the man that just replaced Bob Young. Got to get used to the cadence. And so it's now third down, 15 yards to go. Hart trying to get him back. Mullaney putting pressure on him. He hits Morris again, and Morris to the 35, but that's way short of the four, first down. It'll bring up fourth. John Turner making the tackle. Mullaney doing an excellent job then, again, getting a good pressure on him and kind of forced him to throw, take again to the secondary receiver. You know, at the start of this game, we weren't sure whether Keith Wartman would be able to play. Brad Oates opened the game, and they're not going to play Wartman today. He has a bad ankle. So both Young and Wartman, the original starters, on the left side are out of the game now. And you go back, and Deardorff is out on the right side, and they got Bostic playing that, a rookie out of Clemson. Little to kick. Edwards is back. He hits another fine kick. From the 21, Edwards, there's a flag on the play. He's dropped immediately by Perry Smith. What a tackle by Perry Smith. But as we said, there is a flag on the play. Boy, a good coverage this time by number 45, Perry Smith. Just as Edwards, that's how you're going to have to stop somebody can return it as well as Edwards do. Get it's, him before he starts. It's holding against Minnesota. That was a 43-yard kick that time by Little to go with his 51-yarder earlier. Wait a minute, if it's holding against Minnesota, will, that give it, will it be enough for the first down? I see this would happen after the uh, play, so they'll tack the yardage on now and move it inside the 10-yard line. Well, I'm glad you know the rules. <laughs> holding 27 on the return. This is a post-possession foul. It's first down. On the return, that's the key word. So inside the 10-yard line, First down for Minnesota. That's John Turner, the Gilded Party. And with 5.57 remaining till halftime, the Cardinals hanging on to that three to nothing lead. The eyes and heart of a gunfighter. Boy, he's a good coach. Ray Perkins. <laughs> Third and 13. As Sims has his pick. Sean hits. His receiver, Gary Shirk, down the middle enough for a first down. And Randy Hughes blitzed that time, and the Giants called the right play. 15-yard pickup, Cliff Harris on the tackle. There's number 42, a short pattern. You couldn't call for anything long. I guess that's the real secret about throwing against Dallas. Don't try to go for the home run. Go for six or eight yards and be happy with it. 
Just over nine minutes left to play, and now they are at field goal range for Danello if nothing else develops. He tried a 71 yarder last week, didn't he? <laughs> you think that was his range? <laughs> Perkins said he got the, perhaps the yard line markers mixed up a bit. Sends back to throw again and does wide open. Touchdown, Billy Taylor. Billy Taylor, look at this. Offensive guards and tackles, defensive backs. The first touchdown catch. For number 38. And in motion, goes to the left. Taylor swings right away, and Coda stays in. Helping on Randy White. Nobody home. You don't know who it was, but you know that somebody made a mistake. Strong side linebacker went south. 14 6 Giants. We have eight minutes and 43 seconds left to play at Giant Stadium, which is delirious at the moment. Another look at the touchdown, Frank. Watch the tight end right there. He slides off the linebacker. Play action. Everything going to the right. He comes back against the grain. Mitchell's first touchdown of the year, and almost, almost is going to throw it up into the stands. Mazzetti ready to kick off. Falcons ball control is now paid off. They've simply held the football most of the game. Beautiful kick. Ragsdale, two yards deep, fumbles it for the touchback. Kane will not return the remainder of the afternoon as he has that right knee treated. He's been their leading rusher, 65 yards and 21 carries. Well, your Falcon defense should be fresh. They haven't played much this afternoon, not over 15 or 14 minutes. Kane being assisted from the field and getting a standing ovation from many of these fans. That drive, 28. Drilled incomplete. Penalty marker thrown at the line of scrimmage. Bias was back there defending. Somebody had a hold of Doug Williams' leg. He got the pass off. A little piece of hands. Watch Williams. Now play action. Everybody's covered downfield. 75. Jeff Yates really putting the pressure on. Here's Ricky Bell. He can't control it. Ray Easterling on the coverage. Oh, that's Ricky Bias. 38. Number 38. Now keep in mind, we told you that uh, Tampa is an excellent come from behind team this year. They've come from behind in five of their seven victories, and they'll have to do it again this afternoon. Illegal use of the hands on number 73. It's Charlie Hanna, the right tackle, from Tampa Bay. So Tampa Bay with very poor field position here. They've been shoved back to their 10 yard line by the penalty. They have a first and 20. A little different defense. Look, they got a three deep secondary. Most teams play 40. Ricky Bell. Just barely got by the line of scrimmage. The play had been whistled dead before the fumble. Robert Pennywell, number 59, on the defensive charge. His forward progress has been stopped. Don Smith, the rookie, came up with the fumble recovery, but after the whistle. So they'll mark it at the 14-yard line. Credit Bell with a pickup of four on the play. It'll be second down, 16. Play from the bench being brought in by Morris Owens, the wide receiver. Frank against this three deep defense. If they do a deep turn in. All Williams has to do is key the safety man who's lined up, head up the center, and just go opposite to wherever he goes. Blitz. Williams intended for Hagens, but well overthrown. Williams apparently felt the pressure, felt the blitz coming, and really unloaded much quicker than he wanted to. Hagens had no shot at all. Oh, catch it up to that one. It's an automatic play here. They pick up the blitz. They're trying to hit a man on the post, but Williams just lets it fly here. 
overthrew him about 20 yards. That'll set up a third down 16. If the Falcons hold him here, they'll have Tampa kicking from the goal line. Tampa Bay has not done the job on third down. One out of six third down conversions. Davis in that backfield. Along with Tony Davis. That's Johnny Davis. Out to the 20. Let's see, they needed to net the 30-yard line for the first down, and he's over in that area. Roland Lawrence finally knocked him out of bounds. See where they mark it. They had Johnny Davis, 38, and Tony Davis, 27, in the backfield for Tampa Bay. Oh, they had the perfect play called against that blitz, too, a little screen right. And I think if Johnny Davis would have made the right cut area when it got the first down. Watch Davis. Now, let's see if he can cut back to the inside. There's Greg Roberts. He blocks out, but Davis just takes a little bit too much time in cutting back. They are short of the first down by a yard. Dennis Pearson drops deep for Atlanta. Nine minutes, 12 seconds left to play in the game. Blanchard to do the punting. Eight-man rush by Atlanta. Blanchard gets it away in good order. Pearson, fastest man on the team at the 30. Stopped at about the 33. Danny Reese, number 46, down there quickly for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So now Atlanta will get to play ball control, or try to, which they've done very successfully, with a lead for the first time. 10-7, to 7, they're out in front with 8.55 left to play in the game. Outstanding lineup as always Monday night on CBS. Monday on the White Shadow, Coach Reeves' team learns a hilarious lesson in humility from the Harlem Globetrotters. Followed by MASH at WKRP in Cincinnati. Then gambling takes a special toll on Lou Grant. It's all on CBS Monday night. Good lineup. Excellent. What about this score? Atlanta has come back in the fourth quarter to take a lead over Tampa Bay. 10 to 7 with 11 minutes remaining in that game. There's the stats. As you can see, neither one of these teams have been mounting yardage at a very quick pace. Just inside six minutes to go in this first half. 3 to nothing, St. Louis. Kramer to Brown. Brown goes nowhere. Good reaction by St. Louis. What was your prediction earlier about the high scoring affair, Mr. Bender? Did I say that? <laughs> I really thought this would be a high scoring game. You look at the stats, you would figure that Minnesota could throw the ball, St. Louis would run the ball, but I guess, what do they say? Statistics are for losers. <laughs> From the 10 yard line, second down 10. Brown has 51 yards on 11 carries. Kramer from his own end zone. Rashad and covering on the play was Roger Worley. Again, Kramer not setting up very well on that. And it looked like he was very comfortable throwing that football in and he was being very careful with it. it looked like he guided it a little bit. They had a blitz on. He had to deliver it pretty early. Stu Boyd now comes in a tight end for Minnesota on a third and ten. Now the Cardinals figure to get excellent field position if they can hold here. And looking at them defensively, they have Allen, Ken Green, Ken Stone, and Worley. They haven't brought in a fifth defensive back on this play. Third and ten. Brown, Brown trying to go wide. Ken Green is over there and he throws him for a loss. Ken Green, the strong safety, who has played so well, a second-year man out of Washington State, and is bringing up fourth down. Strange third down play, third and long, 10 yards to go, and they still have, they lose a yard, actually, on this play. Ken Green makes an excellent play coming over. Didn't fool anybody by trying to run on third down. And the Cardinals expected that, Sonny. They didn't get into that nickel defense, they did didn't. they? There's Coleman back. Now, he was hurt the last time he punted the ball, but apparently okay. Willard Harrell goes back. He's standing at the 47 of Minnesota. The Cardinals now with an excellent opportunity. Coleman on the snap from Huff. No rush is put on. Coleman hits it very well. Harrell back to the 47 of St. Louis to the 50. Runs into congestion and stays on his feet. What a run. What a run inside the 35-yard line. He has been the highlight of the day as far as St. Louis is concerned. Matt Blair eventually made the tackle. 
or watch this, he kind of gets lost in a host of players right here. Looks like he's going to be stopped right here, and everybody kind of stops. Look, everybody's just standing around. McClanahan standing here. Nobody making a move to hit him. And he comes right out of the pileup and keeps running. Finally knocked down by Matt Blair. And so the Cardinals will have the ball at the 34-yard line when we return in just a moment. That's Colquitt, the punter, practicing. But Terry Bradshaw is going into the Steeler locker room. But if there's something wrong with him, I don't know. Uh, when he went ahead 31-7, they took him out. There's nothing wrong with his passing arm, I know that. He set a personal high the regular season game, and he threw four touchdown passes. Rocky Blyer out to his seventh. Here's a story in that uh, last penalty. Theo Bell called for a fair catch and then let the ball go and blocked the man covering and they call in sports on light conduct and penalize the Steelers half the distance to the goal. Second down eight Steelers on their seven. Seven to six the Giants staying ahead of the Cowboys in the fourth period. Mike Kruzik, the Boston College is going back. The Swan in motion. Down is Franco Harris and his red skins. Not giving up much ground. Jack Lambert, another linebacker. Had a big hold out here against the Steelers three years ago. We all finally got settled. Third and eight. Third and eight. Three wide receivers come on the field for Pittsburgh. Yeah, not too many penalties. Two turnovers on each team. Very few sacks. Neither on the club. Who's it? Out wide open. Theo Bell. First down, and the Steelers' aerial game continues to impress. Boy, he read that well. There you see a, a blitz coming. They picked him up nicely, and Theo Bell is open in the middle area. A straight arm there that gets away from one tackler, and for that reason, he's able to make another 15 yards in the play. You think he was the primary receiver? Yes, I think he was, because there was a blitz on, and he hit behind the, the blitzing linebacker. First down Steelers on their 38. They're going to run left here I think something left. They run left Franco Harris to the 42. Four yard gain it'll be second and six. For those that join us late now the Giants leading Dallas 14 to six in the fourth period. I don't know whether Starbucks playing in that game or not. Regardless, if the Giants hold on, their fifth win in a row, their longest losing streak in a long time. He is playing Starbucks. And we saw him initially against Philadelphia, and they looked like a very average football team, but they really come on like gangbusters, haven't they? They certainly have. Back to the days of the Gifford and Connolly. Mike Kruzik. Pass is complete for Jim Smith. And that's the Swan. Plus 86, Swan's 88. He throws the ball so you can catch it. He throws it end over end. That way you can catch it at either way, at either spot, Kurt. <laughs> it doesn't slide through like when you throw a spiral. Franklin, another field goal. The Eagles lead Cleveland 19 to 10 at the end of the third period. Smith has kicked the field goal for New England. They lead Buffalo nine to six midway in the third period. And every score has been a field goal in that game. First down, uh, it is uh, third down and uh, about a foot to go for the Steelers. See if they run left again. On their own 48. That's gross to the motion. They have a first down by Franco Harris to the 50 yard line. 31 to 7 the score here. Steelers ahead. They led 24-7 at the half. 
Michael Harris has 51 yards rushing. He needs to average 56 yards today and the next six games to reach 1,000 yards. Another 1,000 yard season for him. Right on the 50, Mike Kruzik. Out it goes, it's complete. To the 39 yard line of Washington. Lynn Swan making the catch. Swan is only 172 pounds, you know. And I asked him today, is it true that your mother made you take ballet and tap dancing when you were a kid? And he said, that's right. No wonder he's so graceful. Yes, he is graceful. And, and Kruzik that time really has good anticipation. Got the ball, got rid of the ball nicely, and uh, got it to him perfectly for a nice reception. I met Mrs. Swan. The Super Bowl, the Steelers victory party down in Miami last year. Very impressive woman. They just announced a giant score. One thing about the 79 season has been very predictable, hasn't it, Kirsten? Oh, <laughs> look at that. That was the roar from the sellout crowd here when it was announced. It's incredible. Giants leading Dallas. Well, a month ago, they uh, wanted to fire Perkins already in his first year. Now he's a hero in New York. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a shame if the uh, Rooney's were impetuous and did that after Chuck but, No lost 16 games. Yeah, he won one and lost 13 his first year here. First down for the Steelers. Something left. Let's see. Michael Harris to the 36-yard line of the Redskins. Brought down by Neil Okowitz. And Pete Wysocki, two of the pole line. And that's the end of the third quarter here at Three River Stadium. With a score, Pittsburgh 31 and Washington 7. Sonny, let's update some scores now. New England and Buffalo. Nine to six now. <laughs> Isn't that something? Two high-powering offenses also struggling offensively. And another game, Philadelphia's leading Cleveland now, 19 to 10, a game just going into the fourth period. After 20-yard punt return by Willard Harrell, the Cardinals of the ball, Anderson breaks it to the 20, to the 15, he's gonna go. Touchdown, Otis Anderson, 33-yard line. A big block from wide receiver Pat Tilly. And so after having one called back earlier by a penalty, this one stays in the record, but 33-yard touchdown run. Watch this man change direction. That's the thing that really I admire about his running ability. Yes, he's a great ball carrier. Watch this. He stops right here and goes and jumps back the other way. He had two men, and that's where Tilly comes in. He set up the Tilly block then. Good change of direction. Big run for the Cardinals. Otis Anderson looking back to see if there, in fact, was a flag. His longest run was a 76-yarder in the first game of the year against Dallas. Steve Little adds a point after, and the Cardinals now lead it 10 to nothing. So it all started with that 20-yard return by Willard Harrell, and then on the first play, Anderson scoots 33 yards, and the Cardinals have a 10 to nothing lead. As this crowd here and temperatures at 58 degrees at the start of the day, Anderson now with 86 yards for the day. And let's look ahead to week number 11. St. Louis will go against Washington. Sonny will be there for that game. Tampa Bay and Detroit, Los Angeles, Chicago, and other NFL regional games finds the Vikings against Green Bay. That's always tough. That is a, that's a battle, isn't it? San Francisco, New Orleans, Atlanta, New York. Now be sure to consult your local listings for the game and time in your area. And mark this down. All the action begins with the NFL Today pregame show with Brent Musburger, Gene Kennedy, Irv Cross, Jimmy the Greek, and Jack Whitaker. As now Little back to kick off. You know, Harrell in this game, to get back to him, he's been a catalyst for this team today. He has 43 yards on punt returns today. Jimmy Edwards back deep for Minnesota at the goal line. Little kicks off. This will be Edwards. Edwards out to the 10. Edwards runs into Ken Green. He stays on his feet. What an effort, though. Finally coming up with it was Ken Green, but Green was the guy who came flying through there and made quite a play. Yeah, what, what happens is that he just takes on the blockers right here. Edwards coming up. 
thinks he's going to get some blockers, but Green delivered the blow into the line of blockers in front of Edwards, and he surprised Edwards. Chris Garlick, number 60, a rookie out of the University of Missouri, wrestled him down, but give all the credit in the world to Green. There's that last drive. Not a lot of time in possession, was there? You're ready for this one? The Giants are leading Dallas 14-6 to now with eight minutes left in that game. Boy, I don't know what's going to happen to this NFC East. Sims has thrown two touchdown passes in that game. Here's Ted Brown, a flag on the play. Bob Pollard tries to get him, and he does. Forward progress to the 13, but as mentioned, a flag was thrown. Minnesota now not getting the field position. It's deserted them here in the second quarter. That penalty will go against the Vikings. Illegal motion. Let's check now on Cincinnati and Baltimore. They're all deadlocked now. 14 apiece. Curtis scored on his last points were scored by Cincinnati, an eight-yard pass from uh, Kenny Anderson. Didn't you tell me Burt Jones was hurt in that game again? Yes. Illegal motion, number six, one, offense, first down. Wes Hamilton called for his second infraction today. Yes, Burt Jones is hurt out of the game, replaced by Greg Landry. Shoulder again? Yes, it was. And San Diego trying to stay on top in the AFC West. 10 nothing. 10 to nothing here. The Cardinals with the lead. And after the penalty, first and 15 for the Vikings from the five. Coming out, Ted Brown. Calvin Fabron will be credited with the tackle. Forward progress just short of the 10. They're back to the original line of scrimmage, and it's second down. Minnesota needs to make a big play offensively or defensively. They get some enthusiasm right now. You see, kind of struggling back to the huddle. Looks like Brown is uh, limping a little bit there, kind of dragging his leg. Well, he's had a bruised knee, he hurt it against Detroit. Kept him out of a couple of games. They need something to get him up, you know, fired up a little bit. Need a big play. You saw what the big play by Anderson did for the Cardinals, and uh, they're playing with a lot more intensity and enthusiasm now. Rashad and White flanked out on a second and 10 from the 10. Kramer back. Delivers the ball to Sammy White. White with a big move, still on his feet. Across the 35, a first down at the 39-yard line. There's a big play I was talking about. Good pattern that time and an excellent pass. Kramer really stood in there and made an excellent throw here. Delivered the ball right in stride to Sammy White. You see the big stride he makes in delivering the ball. And he ran a good pattern, beat Kenny Green. That play's good for 27 yards. Moves the ball out to the 37-yard line. 340, still time left to do something in this first half for Minnesota. Oh, boy, look at that. Ooh, four touchdown passes by Mr. Bradshaw, and he's out of the game now just because of the score. But I understand Burt Jones has come back in in that other game. Kramer back to throw to Bob Tucker. Tucker on this first down to the 40-yard line, a gain of three. A lot of running on that play for a three-yard gain. <laughs> Roger Worley made the tackle. That's right. He rolled out to the right through the screen pass back over to the tight end had blocking and everything but good defensive effort Eric Williams coming over good play that time defensively Bob Tucker he's had quite a career hasn't he? 47 catches last year he's only had 14 this year but he was the first tight end in the history of the NFL to lead the league in receiving in 71 he caught 59 passes at 55 and 72 and 50 73 so he's had quite a career most of that with the New York Giants second down seven from the 40 Kramer pressure put on by Bearfield trying to make the catch with Scott as over there was Carl Allen well, there was shot he gets up on a long ways in that area 6-2 and stretches out couldn't quite hang on to that one well, I think if uh, knowing that man's behind you when you got to jump and stretch like that you know you're going to be punished if you do make the reception Ball was just thrown a little bit too high then. Chuck Foreman in the game now. We mentioned Brown kind of gimpy a while ago, and Foreman is in. Foreman, by the way, only needs 14 yards to move past Larry Brown on the all-time rushing list, which would make him 17th on that list. What a career Foreman has had for Minnesota in his seventh year. Third and seven. You can be looking for him coming out of the backfield on this pass. He flares to the far side. Kramer back. Terry LeCount makes a catch. There is a flag, however, on the play. A count of former 49er with the catch. And the penalty's what? Maybe one of these, that new touching rule. 
touching the man making contact downfield. Can't touch the receiver after he passes five yards. Holding against St. Louis. Bud Wilkinson checking it out. 15 yard pickup on that catch. LeCount, a former quarterback, the University of Florida, played last year with the 49ers. Holding 27 defense before the pass. Penalty is declined. First down. That's Carl Allen. So they'll take the gain of 15 yards instead, just short of the 45. 2.32 left before halftime. At halftime, the NFL today will be joining Brent, Jane, and Irv, and we'll be checking on what's happening on some of those games that we've been talking about. Kramer, 10 of 19 passing. Chuck Foreman. Foreman to the 40. That'll be a gain of five. Kurt Allerman, the middle linebacker, making the tackle, and Minnesota now moving the football with 2.20 left in this first half. Yes, this is what they like to do with Foreman. You see him swinging out at the top of your screen, just running a pattern, a little crossing pattern on the linebacker. Played very well defensively by Allerman. Last year, Foreman had 61 catches. They had four receivers over 50 yards or 50 catches as we have the two-minute warning. Remarkable year as Tarkington threw for over 3,000 yards. Led, of course, by Ricky Young's 88 catches. Rashad with 66. Foreman with 61. We'll be back in a moment. CBS Sports Spectacular should be an excellent show with that great variety. Next look, Saturday afternoon, look what the Giants are doing to Dallas. And it's Phil Sims again, two touchdown passes. Johnny Perkins scored once, and Billy Taylor. William Andrews back in the Atlanta backfield. First and 10, Falcons at their 33-yard line. And that's Andrews, the rookie from Auburn, around the right side. And 10 yards on the carry as he dives for the last three. Jarris White, number 45. Comes up to make the stop. See where they mark it. We talk about good blocking. He's not even touched on the outside. Look at the great block the halfback gives him. He gets around to the outside. Nobody touches him, and he goes straight forward, picks up 10. He now has about 45 yards rushing. Close enough for measurement. Right at 10 yards. Now it's up to the Tampa Bay defense, the number one defense in the NFC to try to hold him here and get the ball back for the offense just short of the first down by a foot or so Lynn Kane had 65 yards on 21 carries today before he went out with an injury that's the time left in the football game Barkowski is at 10 out of 18 for 77 yards one touchdown couple had one picked off Frank a couple of field goals in this one by Tony Franklin they lead Cleveland 19 to 10 And New England, field goal by John Smith, the difference in that one. Our score, 10 to 7, Atlanta leading Tampa. Second down, less than a yard for the first down. Falcons at their 42. Barkowski throwing on second down, a lot of pressure, and he is ripped down at the line of scrimmage. They're actually behind the line of scrimmage by Dana Nafziger, number 51, who bowled it through there and tried to unscrew Barkowski's uh -huh. head. Look like a reckless blitz here. Here's Barkowski, Tampa Bay blitzing again. And watch 51, Dana Nassiger was down on the ground and alertly got up. Good concentration and good effort. Just took his helmet right off his head. Third down, instead of second and one, they now have third and 10. So a big play by the Tampa Bay defense. Ball is at the 33-yard line. They fake the blitz. Bubba Bean. Got about five back. But Atlanta will have to kick it with 7.40 left to play in the game. Fans don't like the call and some booze rain down from above. Well, it's a quickly paced game, Frank. Tampa Bay has only had the football for 14 offensive plays in the second half. So Atlanta has really controlled it. More than two to one in possession. Time in possession. Race is back looking for the punt. James awaiting the snap, standing on his 24. Beautiful sailor. Race tackled immediately at the 23 yard line. 
So the Buccaneers will take over at their 23, trailing by three points with seven minutes. Four seconds left to play. 40 yards in the punt. We've got a timeout here at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, and we'll be back in just a moment. There's the Cardinals leading the Vikings 10-0 second period. Otis Anderson ran 34 yards for a touchdown. He's second to Peyton in rushing in the National Conference. Now Cincinnati's come back to tie Baltimore. Incidentally, Burt Jones re-injured his shoulder. Had to be taken from the game, and Greg Landry replaced him. This is Kurt Gowdy with Hank Stram as we open the fourth period. We've been watching an impressive aerial game today by the Super Bowl champs, three times the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Kruzik is in in place of Terry Bradshaw, who went to the locker room. I don't believe there's anything serious wrong with him. Just took him in there. And it's second down, seven. Kruzik going on the run. Wide open at the 20, a Swan, first down. Now Swan's caught three in a row. Swan now has five catches in the game. He's nearly up to 100 yards. Stallworth has 126 yards. Is there any team with a better pair of wide receivers than these two? I don't know right? who they would be. I don't know what team it would be. Swan, and amazingly, Swan came into the game with only 14 reception, and it's amazing how well the Steelers have done without him during the time he was hurt. It shows you just how strong they are. 31 to 7. Pittsburgh leading. One in motion. Michael Harris started to go somewhere. Then they belted him down at the nine yard line. The charge led by Neil Okowitz. Number 52. He was helped by Dyron Talbert and also Pete Wysocki was there. That time there was another trap. They loved the trap people. At that time Sam Davis, the left guard, was trapping the defensive left tackle butts on the play and they blew through there in good shape. Uh, I talked about Franco needing to average 56 yards a game uh, uh, today in the next six games. If he does, it would tie him with Jimmy Brown with seven career 1,000 yard season. Nobody's ever done it except Jimmy Brown. Franco could do it this year. Incomplete to Theo Bell. And then Bell thinks he was held. Joe Lavender on it. Jimmy Brown had seven 1,000 yard seasons. Franco Harris has six and is probably on his way to a seven. You know, Krusik, the young quarterback, number 15, it doesn't look too pretty in flight, but he really has great anticipation and gets rid of the ball in good shape. Here's the story on Bradshaw. He was taken out after he passed his for his fourth touchdown pass of the day early in the third quarter. He has a slight head injury, which he received on the final play of the first half, and they're taking no chances with it. See if they try to hit a back here. Nope. We got no chance. I'll tell you who hit it back. It was Perry Brooks who rushed him. Number 69, Perry Brooks sacks him. That's our first sack of the game. That spots the ball at the 20-yard line of the Redskins. They lost 11. It's fourth and 16. And the field goal team comes on for the Steelers. He was, Matt Barr. he was looking to his right that time, and he had a back open in the left flat, but didn't see him. By the time he did, it was too late. And Brooks got the, the good shot at him from a pass rush standpoint. 37 yard field goal attempt by Matt Barr. It's up. It's got the legs. But it's no good. It's to the left. That's two he's missed. Well, we'll return here to Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh after this word from your local station. Mike Lieber with Paul Horning back in Atlanta. There's the whole picture. Atlanta leading by three, just over seven minutes left to play in the game. And here come the Buccaneers. First and ten from their 23-yard line. Doug Williams at the throttle. He's only put it up in the air 11 times. Handing off to Johnny Davis, and Davis is out to the 25 for a pickup of two. Atlanta is dead last in the conference in pass defense. 
And Tampa just hasn't had the football that much, but they've only thrown 11 times. Williams has completed six for 121 yards, and uh, better than half of that came on one throw. And a guy who's thinking about this game as far as making up for something is Isaac Hayden. He's dropped that pure touchdown pass, 50 yard bomb. He was the hero last week against Minnesota with five big catches. Ricky Bell is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Jeff Yates, number 79, the first to get to him. That'll set up third down. And it looks like about seven for Tampa Bay. Clock keeps rolling along. Under six minutes left to play in the game. Well, as Frank said, Tampa Bay hasn't thrown the football that much. Jimmy Giles are fine tight end. Caught five touchdown passes. He has been shut out this afternoon. Ricky Bell, Johnny Davis in the backfield. A lot of stunning. Quick throw to Higgins. He hung on to this one. It'll be close for a first down. Rick Bias made the stop. You see that quick release? That was a great catch by Higgins. He really put. He did get the first. He, That's a he big play. He really hummed this, Frank. Look, going a back away. Watch Higgins up in the air, stretched out. Ricky Bias made a good hit. Take another look. Watch a quick release right away, going balance. He's off balance going backwards. Still got enough strength in that arm to put it there. First and 10, Tampa Bay. Buccaneers at their 33 yard line. Made a field goal to tie. Touchdown to win it here. Bell. Knocked down at the 37 yard line by Fulken Kuykendall, number 54, and Brezina, number 50. No incompleted passes here. Nobody getting out of bounds, so the clock continues to roll on unrelentlessly. We now have four minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the game. Tampa Bay so far content to nickel and dime it down the field. Second down, seven. Morris Owens, number 85, was the intended receiver. Another he was hit hard by Lawrence. Another drop pass. He said three or four of them. So again, you get to the possession down. Third down. Tampa needing seven for the first at their own 37 yard line. Well, if he'd have caught it, Frank, he would have brought up third and one, very close to the first down. And now, third and seven. Sideline throw over the head of the intended receiver, Larry Mucker. And he was open. Williams just a little bit too quick there. Look at him. He's putting up his arms. He would like to have that one back. Mucker was wide open on the little square out, and he had the first down if he was on target. So Blanchard comes in to do the punting. Tampa Bay will have to give up the football with 4-11. Left on the clock. Pearson is back deep. Fair catch. Pearson making the catch secure at the 21 yard line. There had to be a flag thrown on that. It looked like somebody was offside to me. They were jumping all over the place. No sign of any marker. So the Falcons will take over here and try to run out the clock if they can on Tampa Bay. You think this is not a happy crowd? They're dreaming about five in a row, and suddenly it might be a reality. And suddenly they'd be back in the playoff picture. If it holds up. But right. don't count this bunch out yet. Danello's high kick will come down to Steve Wilson. And Wilson will come down at the 17-yard line in the hands of Otis McKinney, Monday night on CBS. The White Shadow, MASH. WKRP in Cincinnati and Lou Grant all on CBS on Monday night.
Dorsett came in with 777 yards. And so far today, 25 yards on 14 carries. And again, there goes Jeter. And Mendenhall. And the place is Benham. Mendenhall and Jeter, a three-man rush, is successful. 64, Mendenhall really takes off. Watch Mendenhall, Fitzgerald makes contact. Now Rafferty takes a shot. Now Dorsett takes, our new house takes a shot. That is one great pass rush. He got underneath Mendenhall, got underneath Fitzgerald and straightened him up with a forearm. Full start. Number 61, offense decline. There was Cooper, who was having a difficult time with George Martin. That's a 39 yard field goal by Tony Franklin for Philadelphia. Chant that was so familiar in New York at one time. Defense comes up in the crowd on second and 18. Number 70 is Gary Jeter. Shotgun formation for Dallas and Roger Staubach waiting for the snap from John Fitzgerald. The one hander. Fitzgerald with Menon Hall up in front of him. Fires down the middle. Ron Springs. Cuts back to the outside and Springs out near the 25 yard line. Alan Caldwell and Brad Van Pelt made the tackle. Good call. It's a screen middle, a screen middle from the shotgun. Let everybody come through. And of course, that defensive rush is hot now anyway. Springs takes it up the right sideline as Roger watches. And a very good play by Van Pelt kept the first down from being made. Good play by number 10 with help. And it'll be third and four. It's Phil Tabor. It's coming to the giant defensive group. And they now go with a four man front. And the last time they did this, Dallas didn't block it. George Martin led the rush right around Cooper. But there were a lot of people involved. That's the third sack for the Giant defense. They only came in with. 13 sacks, but watch this collapse. Martin from one side, Jeter from the other, and they're filling in in front with Minden Hall, too. Lock running at 7 minutes, 15 seconds left to play. Bobby Hammond back deep for the Giants. Andy White to punt for Dallas. Good kick. Hammond up with a fair catch signal, handles it, with Wilson looking right at his face. The Giants will operate from their own 36-yard line. 45-yard kick for Danny White. Los Angeles one Sunday, and Dallas the next. It's almost too much. We look, start looking at those records. If Dallas loses and Philadelphia wins, they'd be tied for first place in the NFC in the Eastern Conference with records of seven and three. Washington. Washington loses, they'd be six and four, and they are losing. And the Giants all of a sudden would project themselves into the picture with a record of five and five. To Doug Coder. And Coder slugs his way for a few yards. Bob Brunick. 34-yard run by Otis Anderson, the great young rookie, and St. Louis has Minnesota by the throat. I must caution Vallist. This is a very good team, the Cowboys, and they have come back from behind many times. And if there's any premature celebrating by the Giants, very big mistake. It'll be second and six as John Dutton remains in the Dallas defense. Don't turn over the ball. Be very careful for the next six minutes and 14 seconds. Lock running. Sims gives to Taylor. Taylor gets barely back to the line of scrimmage. Johnny 
Tony Perkins and uh, Aaron Kyle got all tangled up downfield. Sims's composure is fantastic, but I keep thinking about the ways that Landry and his staff can put things away that you do all the time. Uh, maybe they can block a punt or steal a play from your book and give it back to you. I don't know about that. I don't know if they'll make it this year or not. Well, those girls better leave now if they're going to go to Pasadena. It's a long walk. Then they don't have to walk. On third down. The struggle is for a first, and the struggle is not quite successful. Careful that, remember, the neck sizes get smaller on the team that is trying to do it maybe for the first time. While confidence is always there with a young team, uh, don't forget the champ can come back and drill you one time and knock you out. Boy, as Jennings been punting, look at this. 45, 43, 43, and 72. Out of punt pass and kick competition, Dave Jennings. He'd win it today, wouldn't he? I'd even like to announce that. Dave Jennings and Steve Wilson way back. Jennings hits another one. Wilson coming over and handles it, gets to the 20. Puts somebody's head, gets outside the 25 to the, about the 28. 39 yard kick that time by Jennings. There's Perkins still cool on the sidelines. As I told you before the game, he looked every giant in the eye and wished them good luck. Very strong factor with a young football team. What is it like to look a gunfighter in the eyes? Just hope he isn't blowing the smoke off the end of the barrel. Right? His name is the Roadrunner. He just flat out runs. The Buffalo defensive back makes a good adjustment to the ball straight over his shoulder, which is a tough catch. That's Freeman he beat. No, that's Jeff. No, that's Jeff Nixon he beat. Excuse me. Johnson, I think. Uh, Drew Pearson, this is. Oh, he's got to be hurting. Roach really stuck Drew Pearson in the back. And you know, we always think of these people as being such monsters. Drew is 180 pounds tops. That's a ring and wet with a rock in his pocket. Look at this shot he takes in the back, holds on to the ball. We always think about them as all being people like Randy White or Harvey Martin, but they're not all that large. And Drew, with those spindly legs of his. Like he's lucky to be out there at all. Starbuck is going to go again. Dorsett with a blocker. Made Scott out in front. He gets close to midfield before George Martin makes the tackle. New England 16, Buffalo 6. That's Grogan to Stanley Morgan, 63 yarder. I can't figure out why Dorsett cut back to the inside of the field. Scott had a good block on the outside. Tony cut back into traffic. A lot of people walking around on the giant bench, and Tony Hill is walking toward the Dallas locker room. Staubach has the ball deflected by Martin again. Looks like uh, it might be the end of the day for Tony Hill, at least. Got a bruise, it looked like, maybe on the thigh on that end around when he fumbled. That's what it looked like. Things are not too comfortable right now. It's a long flight back should the team lose. I've always found that the nicks and bruises and cuts don't hurt nearly as much if you pull it out. A third down situation for the Cowboys. The Giants lead it 14-6. Three minutes, 12 seconds left to play. Giants have two timeouts left. Dallas has all of them, all three. Stall back. Butch Johnson, I believe, held on. <laughs> Yes, remember he the, did. Remember the catch that Butch Johnson made against Denver in Super Bowl? Super Bowl 13, was it? 
in the New Orleans Superdome. That's right. One of the great catches, and this one has to rank with it. It might be very important before this season is over. Ray Rhodes. Well, Butch Johnson is very important with Tony Hill limping toward the locker room. Clock still running, 2.35 by the time they get this playoff. Giants lead 14-6. Starbuck. Pearson. Touchdown. Terry Jackson couldn't keep him out. And Drew Pearson gets in. 33-yard strike from Starbuck. That's only the second touchdown catch. And Perkins wants to know what happened to the coverage. Now look at the blocking, and Starback kept his backs in. Martin put a pretty good pass rush on, and Roger nailed it right on. There's Pearson, who got hit in the back. Remember, earlier he almost caught one at the goal line, didn't quite. He got a second TD, emphatically. Raphael Septien with Danny White holding. It is now 14-12. The Giants over Dallas. Two minutes, 24 seconds left to play. 14 13. And now, that goal line stand in the first half looms a little bit larger. But just remember that Raphael Septien has made 51 yard field goals strongly this year. So the big problem right now for the Giants is to hold the ball, finish the game off, and don't let Dallas get it back. That's going to be the big one. And also remember that the Cowboys have. All three of their timeouts remaining. And you wonder right here about the possibility of an onside kick. I don't think so. Not with one of the best defenses in football. Butch Johnson made a heck of a catch to set up the touchdown catch by Drew Pearson. Look at this. But championship teams have those people. Tony Hill is hurt. Butch Johnson's waiting for a chance to play, and he's a quality player. Look at the ball. It's still hanging up there, isn't it? Looked like a cat playing with a ball of yarn, huh? Pittsburgh, slapped, slapped it up a couple of times. See, that's one cat and one rat we've had in the broadcast today. <laughs> Sound like I'm reading the Smithsonian. Or a Walt Disney book. 14-13. <laughs> Giants over the Cowboys. And it is an onside kick. Giants got it. Cheater got it. Has to go 10 yards. Has to go 10 yards. There's five, eight. Never made 10 yards. It was Van Pelt who made the recovery. And even if he hadn't, and the Cowboys had gotten it, they would have had to do it again. Because it didn't go those 10 yards. 219 left. Very careful handoff time, though. Young quarterback put the ball right in there, tell the guys, cover it up. Let's protect it and go home and have a big party in Manhattan tonight or wherever. We had an illegal touching on the kick. The penalty is refused. First down. One thing significant that we might keep in mind for future days, Septien did that with his left foot. You would notice that he did it with his left foot. Cincinnati 21, Baltimore 14. And of course, the illegal touching referred to the ball and the player, right? The fact that it didn't go 10 yards. The ball. <laughs> Perkins comes in motion. Sims gets to Coder. Coder trying to get around the outside. Breaks away momentarily. Cliff Harris. Here's Septian. Of course, his father is a world-class soccer player down in Mexico, and maybe he taught Rafe how to do this at a very young age. But he didn't go 10. Left-footed. Tell you, Bill Austin's done a heck of a job with the giant offensive line. He showed up before game number two and has taken Benson and Neville and Van Horn got healthy and came back, Jimmy Clack and J.T. Turner. And they've done a heck of a job blocking against the Dallas Cowboys this afternoon. Dallas burned one of their timeouts. They still have two left. The Giants have two left. Stall back in conference with Landry. 
You know, Dallas faces opponents now the rest of the way that are 60 percentile as far as one loss records. Uh, if there's an early part of a football season anymore, Dallas has already gone through it. They have what? Philadelphia twice? Uh, Philadelphia twice, Washington? Twice. Twice. Giants again, Houston on Thanksgiving Day. Of course, no games are easy, right? No. We used to have a few teams that like the ones I played for that you know, everybody looked forward to playing. They tried to schedule us back to back through the whole season, but it's all tough now. Parody. In fact, when we used to win, they used to fire the coach. The other team would say, you've got to be a bad coach if you can't beat those <laughs> Well, all I can tell you is I played uh, on a Cardinal team that won one game in two years. But it was a big win, right? The Bears, the biggest. Handoff is to Coder, and he is stopped by Harvey Martin and Randy White. About a yard gain, no more. How about running right at Harvey Martin and Randy White? They shared the MVB trophy, right? Sim says, let's let's load it up and run right at those cats and see if they're good. And they were. And they are. Third and five it is. Steve Grogan has thrown a 69-yard touchdown pass to Stanley Morgan. Two in the game for Grogan. He leads the National Football League with 18 touchdown passes. And they're ahead by a score of 16 to 6. New England leading Buffalo. First down, the Redskins on their own 20 yard line. Trailing 31 to 7. Eyes over the head of Danny Buck. The Redskins have been checked cold here in the second half. Well, they were San Diego at the half over your old club, Hank. 10 0. They're playing tight man for man covers that time, and they were all over them. Like a piece of abalone that time, Kurt. Second down, ten for the Redskins. Thirty-one to seven, our score. Pittsburgh in the lead. Tom Beasley, who they want to work in all they can, has replaced Greenwood, who has hurt his knee. Time call. And Washington uh, messed up at the line of scrimmage. Theismann goes over to call. And we still have 12 minutes, 48 seconds to go. And the Steelers leading 31-7. Gary Bender with Sonny Jurgensen. We have two minutes remaining in this first half. Let's check a couple of scores for you. New England now has jumped up on top. 16-6 now. Steve Grogan, a 63-yard pass to Stanley Morgan. Still same score there. The Chargers leading the Chiefs. And our score here. It's 10 to nothing in favor of St. Louis. Second and five now for the Vikings from the 40 of the Cardinals. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Kramer with lots of time. And then all of a sudden the ball is broken up by Bob Pollard. Pollard reaching in. Looked like he had time to throw and all of a sudden Pollard got there. He had Sammy White open. He really had Sammy White open here. He just did not have time to uh, deliver the ball. He was running a corner pattern, a long rhythm type of pass. You see Pollard gets rid of Ron Yari, and that's what broke up the play. That's who he was going to, not to Foreman then, or that's Young, I think. Coming in now is Bob Tucker, and it's going to be third down and five from the 40. So the Vikings would like to get on the scoreboard sometime before the end of this first half. They've missed two field goals of 25 and 33 yards. Kramer back again. Delivers. Rashad with another fine catch, and that'll be a first down. What great hands this guy has. Kramer first down at the 30. Excuse me, Gary. Kramer does a good job getting us off because he got some pressure. Mike Dawson coming in and putting the pressure on him, and he has to throw the ball. He throws it right on the right, on the break, as he was just curling back and making the catch for the first down. Carl Allen with a tackle just inside the 30. First down. Kramer wide open is Bob Tucker, the tight end. Another first down. And with a minute 20, the Vikings are moving the ball, and they're going to use a timeout. Tucker does a real good job here of letting Kramer know that no one had picked him up. He really was shouting timeout. for the football, and you see how open he was. As their first. That was a good observation, because Tucker was waving his arm, shouting. He <laughs> wanted to know, he wanted Kramer to know that he could get the football, and he did. Smart receiver can do that and help you. It's the ones that get you in trouble that are waving that they're open when they're covered. 
15 yard pickup. That's the first time out for the Vikings. They'll have two remaining. Tonight on CBS, well, why don't you start your evening with a brand new edition of 60 Minutes. CBS News Weekly Magazine. Then the new cook starts dishing out the comedy at Archie Bunker's place. And the last continue on One Day at a Time, followed by Alice and the Jeffersons, all on CBS tonight. And on CBS Reports, very simply, the name of that show is Teddy. I understand it's is. a very strong uh, interview. Kramer in this game starting to pick up some stats. He's 13 of 23 for 136 yards. And this last drive has been their most impressive. And you can see him now with Stu Voigt in the background. Knocking the strategy over with Bud Grant. Two timeouts left. With two minutes and 24 seconds left in the, in the game in New York, Dallas has scored a touchdown. They now trail 14 to 13. 224 left in the game. What a battle that is, huh? Dallas still has to play Philadelphia twice. They got to play Washington twice, don't yes, they? Yes, they do. The issues a long ways from being decided in the NFC East. Do you think Mr. Roselle is happy reaching the parity that we've reached in the in professional football now? Boy, I think it. First down now from the 14-yard line, Kramer. Quick look into White, touchdown. Sammy White. They made that look easy, didn't they? They did. He just ran. He, he was up on him real tight. You, you watch him, he makes a good move to get inside here, a little stagger step, jumps inside, ball just delivered on a little slant. Didn't have a lot of area to throw the football that time. He did make it look easy. And Sammy White coming up with his third touchdown catch of this year. Point after, Dan Meyer, he's been a little bit shaky out there as Krause will hold. I tell you, watch his helmet if he misses this one, huh? That's what he needed. Got it right through the middle that time. No question about it. It's 10 to 7 now with 1.14 to go in this first half of play. And the Vikings with a very impressive drive that time, culminating in the 14-yard touchdown pass from Kramer to White. That was a 90-yard drive, Sonny. Ten well, plays. Very important for them to get some points there, too, because, uh, you know, in, in moving the ball uh, that length of time and having it, going in right before the halftime. I thought it was very, very important for them to get some points. I think Kramer has to get some confidence from that because earlier, he, as you said, just didn't, be, didn't seem to be setting up very well. Well, he was backed up the field position, hurt him, and they needed a big play, and they got that big play on the big pass to White. Okay, let's look ahead now to week number 11, and I'm looking forward to next week's game between St. Louis and Washington. We'll be there at RFK Stadium. Washington a little concerned now. If they lose today, that's two in a row for them. Yes, they have, and they know that St. Louis coming in there. They have great respect for the Cardinals, and uh, they're going to have their hand full. And then some other regional games in the Central Division, Minnesota, Green Bay, San Francisco. They've been surprising in some ways, even though they haven't been winning a lot of games. And New Orleans today, they're 5-4. and four. They're on top of that division out west. And that team in the bottom of the Giants, are they coming fast? Be sure now to consult your local listings for the games and times and in your area. I'll do that, Gary. All right. Here's the kickoff, and it's going to be taken eventually by Roy Green. Green having all kinds of difficulty, and his forward progress will be at the seven-yard line. Green, no chance on that. He is leading the entire NFL in kickoff returns, but that's not going to help his average. Good coverage that time. Getting down there was Tim Baylor. And also, curtain off. And so at the seven, there's that last drive we mentioned a while ago. 90 yards, 334. It didn't take him very long to go that distance. That was a two-yard return that time by Roy Green. That must be his shortest of the year. <laughs> very distinguished guy, Bud Wilkinson. All right. You see what he's saying? Uh, try to go north and south instead of laterally, huh? east and west. 107 remaining till halftime. Cardinals in a tough situation. Look at Anderson. Anderson dragging people to the 19-yard line. First down. We thought he might have a big day, and he's having that big day. 12-yard run that time with a minute left in the first half. Always looking for that little seam. He doesn't have Stay to get as much room as first. to run through. You look like the play's going to be stuffed right here. Good blocking up front by Joe Bostic. You have to get people around him. You can't let him get out in the open too often. You do, you're going to get burned. Sonny, right now, OJ has 98 yards. If he gets two more, 
he will then tie the Cardinal record for five 100-yard days in a season. You know what the record is for a rookie in the NFL? Seven. Seven. I, was, I would have thought more. I don't know who it was, but seven 100-yard days is the NFL record. And if he gets 100 a day, he'll already have five 100-yard days. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, O.J. Simpson and uh, Franco Harris, I think, are the two runners. That I think Franco, that's right. Hold it, right? Let's check Cincinnati and Baltimore. And Cincinnati's on top now. Yeah, they come back 21 to 14 now. As I told you, Burt Jones has gone back into that game, so the shoulder injury must not have been serious. Looking back at Anderson, his biggest afternoon was 193 yards. That was against Dallas. Then he came back with 109 against the Giants. Then he didn't have a 100-yard day until his sixth game. He gained 109 then, and then his last 100-yard day was 105 yards in game number eight. He said he would have gone over 200 against Dallas if he hadn't lost a shoe on one of his runs. I saw that game. <laughs> he went 76 yards in that. The record in a game, by the way, for the Cardinals is 203 yards. That's held by John David Crow. Art back to throw on first down, and he throws the ball complete to the 25-yard line. And that is Bill Morrell, and that is his first catch in the National Football League. Well, I'm kind of surprised at the throw. Boy, look at Pittsburgh, 38 to 7 now. Well, Jack Pardee's going to just think about next week now. They play these Cardinals. Throw intended for Theotis Brown at the 30. <laughs> Brown upset. Boy, he was wide open, and Jim just overthrew him. He found him so wide open, he couldn't believe it. He got excited about it. It was he mad with himself for missing him. But always calm, cool, collected on the sideline. I asked him down, I said, how is the morale of this football team being two and seven? He says, it's remarkable. He said, uh, everybody's got good attitudes. Everybody wants to play. They want to win. Well, they've lost six of their last seven, three in a row. Cardinals on third down conversions now, one of four. You see the timeouts remaining. 36 seconds left in this first half. Third down, four yards to go. Hart with time. Same play except a different man this time, Anderson. Anderson with a first down catch as he's across the 30 to the 31-yard line. And that'll stop the clock with 27 seconds time as the Cardinals out. ask for their second timeout. St. Louis, there's their second. Nate Wright defending on the play. So one timeout remaining. You have the ball at the 32-yard line. Not a lot left that you can do with 27 seconds left. His heart is over there now. You see Steve Pazarkowitz standing in the background. He's the young quarterback who many people felt should have gotten the starting call today, but as Bud Wilkinson put it, Jim Hart is our quarterback. And a uh, quarterback really does. The game's built around him so much that uh, they have to produce for them to, uh, for, the, for it to be successful. And, uh, you know, I've had that happen to me where they pull the rug out from under you and you end up saying, well, wait a second, you're exonerating everybody else in this situation. And what you do is you divide a team, don't you? I, really, I think that's true. People start talking and say, well, I'm glad they, they made the change. It's going to help us. Sometimes it does. It sparks a football team. And I'm sure that Jim Hart would be the first one. If he felt that Steve could go in and do the job and help them win, he would gladly sit down. Some of the success, in all fairness, that Pazarkowicz has had has come in with the issue already decided, and sometimes that doesn't always prove to be a good barometer of what's happening. However, in all fairness to Steve, he did play very well in that Philadelphia game and almost pulled the game out. No question. He has a lot of talent. He just needs playing time. Hard is 7 of 13 for 60 yards, two interceptions. From the 31 and a half first down for the Cardinals, 27 seconds remain. Hart. Going deep to Tilly, broken up. Over there with a hand on the ball was Tim Baylor. John Turner was going stride for stride, but it looked like Baylor reached up and got a hand on it. They had doubled both outside receivers. Jim was just trying to split the zone. Double coverage on both of them. He makes a pretty good throw here, but you can see Baylor coming over. A lot of people around the football. Baylor, six foot five. It's tough to make a living throwing against that defense when people are backed up the way they are and doubling your receivers and you're trying to make a big play. Well, that only took four seconds. Second and ten with 23 remaining. There's Jim. 
He has Theotis Brown and Otis Anderson in the back there. Brown, by the way, is just an excellent receiver. Great hands. Hart back, blitz, Sutherland, and he had to get rid of it. Mel Gray at the 50 was the closest man. But you could see Sutherland coming, storming through from his tackle spot, and he dumped him. He did. They had good rush here. They run a little trick at the deep on the defensive line, and Sutherland comes clean, and Jim throws the ball. Just, just does get it off, but he takes a, a whack afterwards. It's interesting to note the Cardinals have given up 21 sacks coming into today. That's only one less than the entire 1978 season. Halftime score now. Baltimore picked up a field goal. Yeah, Steve McNamara, 41 yard, it's 21-17 now. Third and 10 from the 31 and a half. That was a game you said there would be no scoring in. <laughs> Here's Anderson, look. and look at him go. 45, still on his feet. He's breaking it up to the 48-yard line, and what a great run. He's now over 100 yards for the day, his fifth 100-yard day of 79. What an exciting runner he is. Time out. And he, St. Louis. Only problem is on this great run. This he Watch is hurt. Now. He cuts back here again, reversing his field, cuts back but the clock is running right here, and it's down to nine seconds now, and the Cardinals have used their last timeout. Anderson is shaken up. He's going to go off the field, and the crowd here applauding. Otis Anderson, he leaves. Thomas Locke replaces him. He's going to be all right. He just got hit pretty hard. And 115 yards now for him on only 13 carries. <laughs> Not what too an bad, afternoon, huh? huh? And we still have a half to play. Nine seconds remaining, 17-yard run. The Otis Brown now coming out. He's shaken up. And coming in is Wayne Morris for him. So both rookie backs, their first and second round draft picks, are jarred up a little bit on that last play. You gotta, you're got entitled to be a little tired after running 115 yards in one half, aren't you? I tell you, he's just going to get better and better, Sonny, if he stays healthy. Cardinals have used their last timeout. No timeouts remaining. Nine seconds left in this game. The ball at the 49 of St. Louis. 10 to 7, the Cardinals with the lead. And they have everybody split out on this side. Gray, Tilly. You can bet the Vikings are going to drop back on this one. This is one of those squadron right passes. Everybody goes, throw it up. And, and here's Mel Gray. He's got a shot. Oh! Mel Gray almost had it. Boy, was that close. And Sonny, I don't know how they let him get behind him. They knew what they were going to do. Well, how can you keep a guy that can run a 9-300 to keep him from getting behind? It's difficult. It's just like Sammy White from Minnesota. And Hart really makes it gets good protection. Excellent throw here. And almost the home run that you'd work for in situations like this. Look how close he came. Boy, Hannon and Nate Wright got back there, and they had to breathe a sigh of relief. He had a shot at making the catch, didn't he? You see the time remaining, four seconds. Your point's well taken. You know you got to keep deep, but how do you stay deep against <laughs> a guy like Gray? Boy, he just ran right by him. Now look at the secondary. <laughs> They're all the way back to the 20-yard line. Uh, there's yeah. one guy in the 10-yard line. Isn't that something? Hart delivers it to Wayne Morris. Last play of the first half, and Morris will make it to the 30, and that will be the end of the first half. <laughs> well, an interesting game in this first half of play. Not a lot of points on the board, but a lot of things have developed. A couple of interceptions by the Minnesota Vikings. Two missed field goal attempts. A big first half for Otis Anderson, 115 yards. 10 to 7, halftime score. Well, here's the punt. Let's see if Atlanta was offsides. Watch the center. You'll see movement in the red jerseys. There's one guy. And the man on top of your screen was way across the line of scrimmage. Looked like it was offside. There were not any flags. Atlanta has the football and a first down at their 21-yard line. Timeout certainly will become a factor here. And both clubs have all three of their timeouts remaining. San Diego over Kansas City, 10-0. Falcons have done a great job with ball control. They give it to Andrews. Andrews plows forward to near the 25-yard line. Gain of three on the play. It'll be second down seven. Let's see where they mark it. We'll put it down right at the 25, looks like. So make it four. That'll make it second and six. Cowboys have scored a touchdown, and the Giants 
They're in the final period, 14 to 13 now. Roger Staubach threw a 33-yard touchdown pass to Drew Pearson. Two minutes and 25 seconds left in that New York-Dallas game. I know they're going to run it. You can see all the Atlanta linebackers and safety men even come up. Andrews picked up behind the line of scrimmage, dropped for the loss at the 23-yard line. David Lewis, Both number 57, doing the job. Both of these teams have played well defensively, good enough to win on an average afternoon. And uh, right here, Tampa Bay, that was a big play for the Tampa Bay defense. It throws them into third and seven now. Less than three minutes to go. Right there is David Lewis. Third down. Atlanta needs seven for the first down. The ball is at their 24. They want it back right now. Mark Caspi gets excellent protection, and the pass is dropped by Mitchell. He had the first down, too. Had the first down, pass thrown right at the numbers. That was too easy. So Atlanta will give it up with two minutes and 31 seconds to go. And Mitchell just wants to find a place under the bench to crawl and hide. Race, the deep man, who will not fair catch. Sooner or later, that's going to catch up to him. And he'll get belted just as he catches a football, and it may prove to be costly. High kick. Oh, he's something. Let's it bounce to the 25. It'll be down there. He kicked it a mile high. Reese got, I think, caught looking up into the sun and let it bounce. Clock shows two minutes and 19 seconds. See if we had a flag. 51-yard punt. So foul. 87 on a white team. Oh. Is this hurt? Buccaneers certainly don't need this. Personal foul on the special teams on a loose punt. That'll move oh. it back to the 13-yard line. Mental error here really cost Tampa Bay. Personal foul on Larry Mucker. So the Buccaneers have the football, which they want, but they didn't want it quite this deep. They're back at their 13-yard line. First and 10, two minutes, 19 seconds. Left to play in the game, and they trail by a score of 10 to 7. Mucker wide to the right side. Higgins is split off to the left. Reverse. Mucker on the reverse. Trying to get outside. And dropped at the 10-yard line. Great Brazil was waiting for it, Frank. You don't fool an old hand like that. Brezina, who has caught a lot of heat for the Falcons' defense problems this year, making a big play. He's a veteran in that defense, a 12-year veteran out of the University of Houston. Here comes the reverse. Mucker really retreats deep. And Greg Brezina right there on the stop. Cowboys didn't get a touchdown last week for the first time since 71. They went through three periods today without a touchdown. And now suddenly with 2.24 to play, Staubach threw a 33-yard pass to Drew Pearson. 14 to 13, the Giants over Dallas. Fourth quarter. That game's moved along. We have a second down 10 for the Washington Redskins on their own 20-yard line. Harmon and Forte, the running back. Heisman on the draw, fumbled by Harmon. Steelers had the ball on the 19-yard line. That was a really a delayed draw play. Harmon fumbled it, never had control of it, and it's recovered by number 76, Banasak. They had him all spread out that time, only one back in the backfield. They wanted to create the impression that he was going to roll out, handed the ball to Harmon, 38, on a draw play. He was hit, fumbled, and Pittsburgh has possession, first and 10 on the 20 going in. Third turnover against Washington, two against Pittsburgh.
Mike Krusek brings him up. Complete the tumbling catch at the 14 yard line. Jim Smith played wing back under Bo Schembechler at Michigan. Cincinnati scored three touchdowns in succession now to overtake Baltimore. It looked like Smith played shortstop on the baseball team, too, Kirk, the way he picked that one off. Well, I recall at the Rose Bowl game, Schembechler telling me, so it's a shame that we don't throw the ball a lot because I got one of the best receivers we've ever had in the school. Jim Smith and now more and more he's being used here at Pittsburgh. This is his third year and you'll be hearing a lot from him. Well there's a lot of room in the middle on some kind of a run. They call that last pass incomplete hit the ground. That's Anderson. He can go 15 inside the 10. Anthony Anderson a rookie of Temple. A lot of them say remind them of Frenchy Fuqua. Remember Frenchy? Who used to wear the high heeled shoes? They fake inside and then give it to the young back, Anderson. A nice hole, a beautiful block out in front by Davis. And uh, Anderson does the rest going down the right sideline. A nice looking run. Frenchy had those glass slippers, those high heels, and he'd fill them with colored water and beads. And boy, what a, what a dresser he was. First and goal to go, the Steelers. He looked like a Christmas tree at night, didn't he? Right. On the Redskins seven yard line. Cruzic gives it to Anthony Anderson. He's to the four yard line. You know, there are four players came off the Temple University squad to make the National Football League this year. And Grossman, who also plays on the uh, Steelers, the tight end is from Temple. Wayne Harden, the coach there, has really done a good job with that football team. They were exciting, and they've been able to supply the pros with some outstanding players, as you just mentioned. They like they like Anderson. They take him out, and the crowd doesn't like it. They want to see the rookie stay in there. Second down. Something right. Four to go. That's Rick Moser from Rhode Island, the second-year player. Noel using them all. What a line of receivers we've had today. The Redskins have thrown passes to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different receivers. The Steelers, the six, 14 different receivers have caught passes. 10 7 now, the Cardinals over the Vikings. Third down. Two to go for a touchdown. Something left. Something left. Off the left tackle for a score. Green guard and tackle. Rocky Blyer banged it in. But anyway, that's uh, Moser. Moser, 39. Blyer was a lead man. They faked him and gave it to Moser. There's Blyer, number 20, blocking for Moser, who goes in. And the, they send Grossman, the, the tight end, in motion to the left. And as you mentioned, Mosher pumped it in there for the touchdown. So it's 37 7 Steelers, bar for the point. And the Steelers were really rolling. Are out in front now, 38 to 7. Jack Party. We'll be back. going to take us a long time to get out of this stadium today because nobody has left. Looks like more people have come in. And the hilarity in the parking lot will continue. If the Giants can hang on, Phil Sims being very cool at the moment, the rookie, has two minutes to go. And this will be the biggest win if they can hang on for this team in a long, long time. Pass is deflected. And it's too far away for Danilo. Stalls made a pretty good run, number 65, but I don't know who got their hand on it. And I noticed that the receiver coming across the middle, Ernest Gray, got banged at least twice, even though the ball was over his head. 
That play took four seconds. That's Harvey Martin. You can see an all out effort there as he's dumped by Benson. It was... I believe it's Bob Bruning, the middle linebacker. Got a hand on it? Jennings standing back uh, just at his own territory. And Steve Wilson back at the 10. He'll try to knuckle this one. He'll try to get it out of bounds. And he does. Let's see where it went out. What a punt. Think we can get him a pinto for nothing? I at think he's nine. won the contest again. A unit. Remember, it takes good defense to back up a great kicking game, and so far the Giants have had it. Now we've got 91 yards. One minute, 49 seconds, and two timeouts left for Dallas. He's got to get inside the 30, not the 35, or can he? All right, 35 yard line, let's say. 35, maybe a little bit closer than that. That would make it 52 yards if he got to the 35. For Raphael Septien. Ron Springs and Tony Dorsett. The running backs, but uh, I think the run is out of the question. The protection. Dorsett swings to the outside out to about, oh, about the 17 before he goes down. Now you Does, think that doesn't scare you to be the linebacker like Van Pelt was, one on one with Dorsett? Actually, he had Dorsett nailed, and Tony just slipped and pulled inside, and Van Pelt didn't even touch him. Scary time to play defense. Block continues with 125. The play gets underway. Thrown low for Ron Springs. Rebound by Van Pelt. He's played some uh, game in that flak jacket or that uh, best vest or whatever he's calling that thing. And so a big third down situation coming up. 14-13, Giants over Dallas, 121 left to play. Clock stopped with that incomplete pass. Third down, they need two. Are you going to gamble on a little pass rush, or should you play it with just three men? Gary Jackson now asking for the crowd to lend some support. Laidlaw in the backfield with Roger Staubach. Protection holds up. Oh. And the pass is complete and out of bounds on the far side of the field to Drew Pearson, the clutch man. And Staubach had two receivers wide open in the same area. Watch number 33 come from right to left from the shotgun. You see Dorsett? He's the short man. He's open, too. Good pass to call where you got two receivers. You can take one look and spot them early. Wise man number 12. Ray Rhodes couldn't quite get there. Drew Pearson has now caught five passes. 97 yards. Starback in the huddle. Billy Joe Dupree, the tight end, is lined up on the right side and now moves into the backfield. Drew Pearson split wide to the right, puts Johnson to the left. Pass caught by Pearson. Oh. And he is buckled right in the middle. I don't know how he's not hurt now. Kerry Jackson on the tackle, but Dallas comes roaring. And now they take a timeout. 27-yard pass, first down, Cowboys. Here's the catch. Terry Jackson thought he had fouled him. Frank Labor with Paul Horning back in Atlanta. Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the hole, second down. 13 needed for the first down. They're backed up to their 10-yard line, trailing 10 to 7. Two-minute warning has just passed. Williams. Trying to hit Isaac Higgins at the 30-yard line. There's that deep turn-in I was talking about, Frank. They got a three-man deep prevent, and Williams had his man open again. Uh, now that could have been, there he is. Williams wants him to turn the other way. That could have been a broken pattern here. There's Williams. He's a, he knows it's a turn-in or a turn-out, and I think Higgins might have gone the wrong way. Williams is 7 out of 15 for 129 yards. That brings up third down and 13. Tampa Bay desperate for a first down here. Much maligned. Atlanta defense digging in, trying to hold him. Williams back at the goal line. Fires it over the middle, incomplete intended for Higgins. Now, 
Isaac Hagen and Jimmy Giles ran into each other on the pattern, and that is why Doug Williams is hot right now. They ran into each other downfield. Let's see if we can pick it up. Here's the pressure of the Atlanta defense. That's Don Smith being blocked. He's got time to throw the football, and the reason he's holding up is Giles and Isaac Hagen's downfield had run into the run into each other. Blanchard standing three yards deep in the end zone will have to give it back with a minute 50 left to play in the game. Nobody's back. They're going to let this one go. Takes a Tampa Bay roll and will roll dead at the 37 yard line in Atlanta's end of the field. Both teams still have all of their timeouts remaining. So the Bucks will have a chance to stop the clock and probably get the football back one more time if they can keep Atlanta from picking up a first down. Now you'll see Tampa Bay jam those linebackers. They'll probably bring in an extra defensive lineman maybe. They're going to try to have to strip the football. They need a turnover right here. Excellent punt under pressure, 51 yards. Keep in mind, Atlanta's only two games out of it. They can win today. They're still in the race. That's right, because New Orleans is playing Denver. L.A.'s playing Seattle. If they both lose, they'd just be a game out of first place. Andrews straight up the middle. Out to the 40-yard line. And here's Tampa now calling timeout. That's number one. Time remaining, a minute 34. Now you see what this would do to the standings. Atlanta wins it, they would be four and six. And if New Orleans would lose today at Denver, which uh, is not without the realm of possibility, they'd be five and five. They Atlanta will be right in it. It's tough to beat Denver at home. And the Rams, of course, have had problems with everybody. And Seattle, of course, can score. Yeah, they're no cinch at home. Rams. Well, they've been hurt, banged up. Look at this. Four touchdown passes by Terry Bradshaw in this one. Steelers continue to roll. Undoubtedly the strongest team in pro football right now. That would make them eight and two. Dallas on the verge of getting beaten in New York. Trailing 14 to 13 in the last two minutes of that game. This is a halftime score. And Burt Jones hurt his shoulder again. And but he's back in. <laughs> he is back in. Okay. Second down. Falcons need eight for the first down at their 40. Run the sweep. You got it. Bubba Bean. Bean at the 50. 40. One man to beat for the touchdown. And Bubba Bean is over. Touchdown. Atlanta. Oh. Oh, he's 60 yards by Bubba Bean. You talk about coming out of mothballs. Bubba Bean, one of the forgotten men of the Atlanta Falcons this year with the rookie running backs. Let's look at it. Maybe we can provide some music accompaniment. Yeah, let's let's bring up the music. You don't have to say anything about this. That stiff arm on Jarris White. Mazzetti tacks on the extra point, and the Atlanta Falcons, who have lost six of their last seven games, may be seeing their luck turn. They're just hanging on to the football, trying to run out the clock. Well, see what happens there if you break that first flow. Tampa Bay's defense, everybody's up close to the line of scrimmage. They're trying to strip the football. They got outside. He broke that first flow, and then there wasn't anybody back there but Jarris White. And he really used that straight arm good, Frank. Mike Ditka in the background. Roger Staubach and Tom Landry. One minute, five seconds left to play. One timeout left for Dallas. How about predictability? That's what a championship team does. What do we do better than other people? Who do we go to? Pearson. Drew Pearson. And of course, Preston is injured and not playing today. And Tony Hill has exit. 
Wes Johnson is the other wide receiver now. Drew Pearson has caught six for 125 yards. And a couple of times he's just been bent to where he was doubled. And Roger has thrown 29 times and completed 19. The Giants now, in an effort to get some pressure on Staubach, have gone to that four man front again. Now you got different coverage by the linebackers and your secondary. Be careful. And the Cowboys, as we mentioned before, had a tough time handling this four man front on two previous occasions. A screen pass called to Dorsett. Dorsett being chased by Jeter. Dorsett still on his feet. Tony Dorsett down the far sideline. Inside the 15. Dorsett and now the field goal team get ready. Okay, now you feed a computer, you put numbers in it, but they're really people and the predictable people, the class people can come through. Now watch this play by Dorsett. A great call, screen for the shotgun. Now he gets hit and fumbles it midair and we kept, watch him re-catch it right here. Put it away. Back to the outside. Ooh. Ray Oldham knocked him out of bounds, but the line of scrimmage now has changed to the 12-yard line. Springs comes out. Clock is stopped with 53 seconds left to go, and Dallas still has a timeout remaining. How many more chances do you want to take uh, handling the ball before you kick it? I guess you want to wind the clock down to where there's no time left if you're thinking three points for a win. Staubach has come over to the sideline. Scoreboard still shows that both teams have a timeout left. The Giants took that timeout. 53 seconds left on what is, I guess, an official clock as you see on the screen. It is official. Otherwise, we would not take the picture. Remember now, Jeter blocked the field goal attempt by Stennerud, who's a side saddle kicker against Kansas City, came right up the middle. That all goes into the thing. Do we try a field goal early or do we go ahead and hand off to somebody and try to get six. Well, we have a timeout left. Staubach, by the way, is 20 out of 30 for 266 yards. I think we run a trap play on first down. Well, you can fumble a football, and people in Dallas uniforms have double dribbled a couple of times in the past. It has been a clutch drive conducted by Roger Staubach. Did, did they ever ask you as a kicker to, what you wanted to do, whether you wanted to kick it early or late? No, they never asked because <laughs> I was afraid. They couldn't find you? Ball at the 12, first and 10, Laidlaw and Dorsett. And there is Dorsett racked up right at the middle. Gary Jeter led that charge. Oh, that's a bunch of Bobcats on the line of scrimmage right now. Martin Jeter, Mendenhall, and the young man from Oklahoma when he comes in. Uh, Tabor have been really studs. They've been very strong. Boy, it's quiet here right now as everybody sort of waits for whatever's going to happen. And the Giants have just called another timeout. And that's all for them. 15 out of 21 for 214 yards in the second half for Roger Staubach. If next week's games are anything like this week's games, you don't want to miss St. Louis at Washington, Tampa Bay against Detroit, Los Angeles at Chicago, Minnesota, Green Bay, San Francisco, New Orleans, and Atlanta will be here. Patrick Septian is 9 of 10 to the 40-yard line. Now, we're inside of that. You kick it, though, like it's a 40-yarder, and it's a good, strong, firm kick. You're not trying to, uh, you know, hit a wedge in over a bunker, right? I mean, you're just going to kick it your best struck. You hope to kick everything just alike, but you can't do that. The closer you get, the more you try to guide it. Is it harder for a side saddle kicker? I would think they're on the right side of the field now, the left hash mark for a side saddle kicker. They would be much more effective from there and much less likely to hook it. Good point. 38 seconds left. There it is. 14-13, the Giants lead. It is second and 11. At the 13. Starback is going to throw. And he does it. And it becomes more difficult now for Rafael Septien. Gary Jeter led the charge. That was a surprise call, all right. Wasn't it, though? Not a bad call because you had Starback as your quarterback. 
talk about a few uh, moments of anxiety. Here comes Van Pelt, blitzed as soon as he saw Roger fade. Clock running, Dallas is going to try to run one more play and then use their timeout. It's dangerous, dangerous stuff. Calculated. The handoff is to Dorsett. Dorsett stops the clock, he gets out of bounds, does not get a first. I can't believe that's a better position to kick a field goal from than the one you had back there a few plays earlier. The only thing it is, it's closer, and Raphael Septian goes in with Danny White to hold. It'll be from uh, 22 yards out. And remember, Jeter, number 70, comes right up the middle, and they will pull a couple of people out and try to shove the big man from Southern Cal right up the middle. Six seconds left to play. The Giants lead 14-13. And Danny White puts it down at the 13-yard line, which will make it 23 yards away from the goalpost. Perfect. Three seconds left on the clock as Raphael Septien hits from 23 yards out. 16 14. The Cowboys lead the Giants, the dejected Giants who have played so very well, and so has Dallas. Mike Forte, the deep man for the Redskins, at bar to kick it. Day fields it on the four. To the 20. 25, 30, 35, and out of bounds on the 41 yard line of the Redskins. I want to remind you about tonight on CBS. We have uh, 60 minutes. Then Archie Bunker's plays. The new cook starts dishing out the comedy there. The last continue on one day at a time. Followed by Alice, the Jeffersons, all on CBS tonight and CBS reports. Teddy. It's a lot of shows. First down. Redskins on their 41. John Riggin. 45 out to the 50 in the Steeler territory to the Steeler 49. The Steelers have shut down the big backs this year where they've gone against them. Earl Campbell made only 38 yards against the Steelers. Otis Anderson, the Cardinals, 37 yards. Tony Dorsett last Sunday was held under 100 yards for the first time in five games. Riggins, a fine player, has 37 yards in this game. Would you say it's hard to run on these boys? I would go way out on the limb, <laughs> Kurt, and say that it is, yeah. <laughs> you would go out on the limb and say the Steelers have a good defense. Yes, I would. Fine. Courageous Hank Stram <laughs> has done it again. As he alluded earlier, <laughs> it is going to be a second down and inches to go for the Redskins. On the Steeler 49 yard line. Malone gets the call and has the first down at the 47 yard line of Pittsburgh. Theismann's getting an awful lot of man for man coverage and uh, surprised that he didn't try to take advantage of it more by trying to throw, especially on first and 10. Eight minutes, 40 seconds to go. Big lead, 38-7 Pittsburgh. Roll out left by Thaisman. Sets, goes down the sideline. Oh, just off the hip. Danny Bugs was there, was tipped away, and he nearly had it. In the meantime, at Baltimore, a field goal, 41 yards, six seconds to go in the half. Makes the score 21-17 Cincinnati. The Cincinnati team is going to surprise a lot of people before this season is over with. They've got a lot of talent, and they're capable of winning any time they play. That's what Bradshaw said uh, before the game. So not because they kicked us in, but he said they just got too much talent not to win some games. I picked them second in that division before the season because I really thought they would uh, 
play a major role in that division. Now they lost by one point to the Browns overtime to Houston. Automatic first down. Legal use of the hands on the 43 yard line of Pittsburgh, Washington in possession. John Riggins cuts back. Somebody bellowed him and bumped him forward to the 35 yard line of the Steelers. Robin Cole's the man that hit him. That was a hard shot that Riggins took. He gained eight on the play. Second down, two for Washington. Looks like a real scramble now in that Eastern Division. If Dallas loses today, the Redskins about to lose here. The Eagles be tied for first if they hold on to their lead against Cleveland. That's Riggins, and he's out of bounds on the 32 yard line of Pittsburgh. We'll take a look at those standings. Coming into today's game, Dallas had won seven and lost two. The Eagles six and three, Washington six and three, and the Giants four and five. If the Giants win, and that's a big if, it's still out up there in New York. Dallas loses, they'd be seven and three. If the Eagles hold on to their lead, they'd be seven and three. Washington would be six and four, and the Giants would be five and five. If matters continue as they are right now without any final scores in. First down, Washington on the Pittsburgh 32. Play out the record, that's the 30. They contain him, dump him at the 28. Four-yard game. I was surprised to see John dance around there, try to get uh, a position on the defensive back. Anytime as a back you make a catch out on the flat like that, you've got to make a decision right or wrong and head for that goal line because the minute you start to hesitate and dance around that's when the other people come in and make the tackle and you don't get nearly as much out of the play as you ordinarily would. Big fourth quarter by Atlanta. Bartkowski just threw a pass to Mitchell for a touchdown and Bubba Bean has run 60 yards for a score. It's Atlanta 17 Tampa Bay 7 fourth quarter. Incomplete. Mal Blunt was tying up Ricky Thompson, number 83. And he really had him tied up. In fact, he was handcuffed. I thought they might have called interference in that or holding. It was close, but he did a good job of uh, staying on him and covering on the pass. But the, ba the ball was thrown inside and looked like uh, there was a uh, mix up between the quarterback and the receiver. Third down for the Redskins. Six to go on the Steeler 28 yard line. JT Thomas is in. Going out is number uh, 53, Dennis Winston. By the way, this Pittsburgh te uh, team pursues some kind of a reverse you would think would be very good. They had a mess up there. Uh, they sent Thomas on the field. It's messed up. So the Steelers asked for a time and with a comfortable 31 point lead. Raphael Septien's field goal from 23 yards out. And he didn't have to lead any cheers. But that's the reason that teams like Dallas packed to go to Pasadena. They had nowhere to go, right? They were going to take their loss. Not that much. And by the way, that drive by Roger Starbucks about as good as I have ever seen him pull off. And he's done the Hail Mary and all of us. I'll know? tell you what, a couple of clutch catches by Tony Dorsett and Drew Pearson and Butch Johnson. Don't forget him. Septian. Line drive, kickoff, fumble, juggle. That'll be all of it. Easily race. Struggling around. A penalty is down. Let's see who it's again. It may not, against it, may not be all. It can't end. The game cannot end on a penalty or a half, so. Depends on who it's against, right? Might have been clipping against the yard. Foul. Black below the waist on the return. The game is over. The game is over. And Ray Perkins 
watches his four game winning streak just come to an end. He's got to be the happiest guy in the ballpark other than Tom Landry. What a great job he did getting this giant team ready. There's no booing in here out th this afternoon. None whatsoever as the crowd still applauds the effort by the Giants. Roger Staubach they put together a brilliant second half to get this victory for Dallas 16-14. His record personally against the Giants is now 15 and 1. Pat, the whole thing is that when you see a player when he's not playing so well in all sports and they still win, that is the, you know, that's the the real classification of champions or not. You can see Carson and Jeter talking to Dennis Thurman over there. But I'll tell you, a few minutes ago, if Thurman had gone over and said something to Jeter, Jeter would have drilled him. And here's a magnificent linebacker. Harry Carson. Carson. By the way, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, of course, chasing Dallas. And with 321 left to play in that game between Cleveland and Philadelphia, it's 1917 Philadelphia. The NFL on CBS will be back after this word from your local station. John McKay. Obviously a little disappointed, but I'm sure he figured he wouldn't go undefeated the rest of the way, so uh, they're still going to go to the playoff. That's my prediction. Worst that could happen today, they still have a two-game lead. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Pretty good position to be in. Well, it's too good a football team to... Uh, somebody said, well, what if Tampa Bay loses them all? I said, they're not going to lose them all. Are you kidding? They're too good a football team. They made a lot of mistakes today. A couple of guys, I think, have run the wrong pattern. You look back on Isaac Hagen's dropping that touchdown pass in the first half. He also fumbled a first down when Ronald Lawrence picked it up, went down the sidelines. So they've had some mistakes today, but they will come back. 17 to 7, Atlanta leading. Some of the fans heading for the exits right now as Mazzetti. Kicks off for the Falcons. Ragsdale is deep. He'll run it back from the five. 15 20. Ragsdale almost broke through at the 30 yard line. Joel Williams makes the stop for the Atlanta Falcons. Hurry up offense for sure now. Somehow Tampa Bay's got to score a touchdown quickly here and try the onside kick if that can happen. How about a hurry up 70 yard bomb is what they need. <laughs> I believe Mr. Williams uh, may air it out. They say he can throw it 80 yards. Absolutely. He'll if, drop back close to that 20 yard line and let it go. Over the middle it almost intercepted. Colton Kuykendall number 54. Got his hands of the football. Only dropping eight man deep. No tough to throw against that defense. Now here they are. Greg Brazina. Double coverage. They got him. Now he comes across the middle on the post. And all Williams are trying to do is hit him in the middle of that scene between the linebackers. Buccaneers still have two timeouts left. One minute, nine seconds. Second and ten. Again, Williams. Ragsdale. Complete, but not much yardage there for Ragsdale. I'm sure the Falcons will give him 10, 15 yards a whack here in order to keep that clock moving. Timeout being called with 59 seconds to go, and that will leave Tampa Bay with just one timeout remaining. Williams has gone over to the far sideline to confer with John McKay. Second half of the CBS doubleheader, we were talking about the New Orleans Saints with their high-powered offense this year. They're at Denver this afternoon, and most of you will be watching that game. See a high-powered defense, too, at home. Talking about the fine work of this Tampa Bay offensive line, a lot of the credit goes to uh, Bill Johnson, the former head coach of the Bengals, who has taken over the offensive line of the Buccaneers. Course, they've got Abe Gibron helping him out on defense. My man, Abe. I love Abe Gibron. 
Abe, who has put on great shows in restaurants all over the country. I tell you, would you believe he's probably the quickest pulling guard that ever played the game? Really? Yes, sir. Third down, three. Tampa Bay from its 37. They got to start thinking first down now, too. Going long down the sideline. Pass was intended for Jones, the rookie, number 84. Gordon Jones, one of their top draft picks this year, who has not seen much action. And it'll be fourth now, fourth and three for the Buccaneers at their 37-yard line. You see the time remaining as Jones heads back into the huddle. Tampa Bay at Detroit next Sunday, and then they return home for three games. Falcons play at New York, play the Giants next week, who obviously are red hot. Fourth and three, this could be it. He doesn't at least get the first down. Mucker, excellent catch. First down at the 42-yard line of Atlanta. Got to take a timeout. Now. 40 seconds left. Tampa Bay out of timeouts now. Now we get word from the Meadowlands that the Cowboys have kicked a field goal. Apparently in the final minute of play, it's still going on. There's two seconds left to play in the game as Septian has kicked a field goal and propelled the Cowboys past the upset by the Giants, 16 to 14. Shame. I was pulling for the Giants and the dogs. Phil Sims, my Kentucky boy. And I know you're pulling for the Cowboys. Now, why would you say a thing like that? No, we're all impartial. Bubba Bean's run were in form for the touchdown a moment ago, the longest for Atlanta this year, and it's got to be a great moment for him, as we said, because he's been languishing on the bench with the arrival of the three rookie running backs. He hasn't seen that much action. He's a former number one draft pick out of Texas A&M, who was a regular last year. And boy, he responded like a thoroughbred when they needed him. First and 10, Tampa at the Atlanta 42-yard line. No timeouts left for the Buccaneers. Doug Williams cranks it up, looking for Mucker, and he's got him out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Seen put it right on the money. And Mucker did two things. He not only man ran a good pattern, caught the pass, he got out of bounds to stop that clock. Well, they get a quick touchdown here. We're going to see a little scramble for the football. I imagine so. May see Big Ben in operation <laughs> again. Huh? Yeah. 33 seconds to go. First and 10 from the Atlanta 13 yard line. 17 to 7, Atlanta leading. Here comes the blitz. safety blitz. Williams gets it away, intended for Morris Owens. Right out of his fingertips. Been a tough catch over his outside shoulder. Well, they put Williams right on his back. Rosina was through there, and so was Dewey McLean, the linebackers, putting a lot of pressure on Williams. Second and 10 from the 13-yard line. That took five seconds. I don't, know why, I don't know why teams don't delay a back on a safety blitz right up the middle, almost like uh, Atlanta got caught last week on that field goal when they completed a pass to Herrera, the kicker. If you put a back right in that area where the safety blitz comes from, he's going to be wide open. A Dallas Giants game now final. Williams floats it out for Giles, and Giles scores for the Buccaneers. His first catch of the day, too. So Tampa Bay scores with 22 seconds to go, and certainly we'll see the onside kick. Here it is. Jimmy Giles, the tight end. You see him playing off the linebacker there. Picked up the blitz again. And this is the dangerous thing about the blitz. Boy, you are going to live and die with it. You got man-to-man -man back there. Giles makes a good catch. Here he is again. Doug Williams just, just puts nice it up. Cool. Look at that. Nice what? touch. <laughs> He's wearing Brazina for a blanket most of the afternoon. That's what I was saying. And that was in the middle off the safety blitz, and the guy's open. O'Donohue slams through the extra point. That makes it a 17 to 14 ball game. Onside kick to come. 
22 seconds left to play in the game. And Atlanta leading by three. We'll be back with the finish in just a moment. Here's an update on that uh, giant Dallas game. 38 seconds to play, and Dallas is on the move and has the ball on the giant 13-yard line, trailing 14 to 13. I want to remind our listeners, stay tuned for another game this afternoon on CBS on this doubleheader weekend. Third down. Six to go. Redskins on the Steeler 28. Heisman to Thompson. No good. Boy, that was covered by the rookie, Wayne Woodruff, University of Louisville. Well, he did a good job. Is right. It was bump and run. He changed the play at the line of scrimmage. It was a blitz coming. He read it nicely, threw the ball on top of Woodruff. Reedy did a great job of covering on the play. Let's cover it here, Coach. Goes back in the pocket, and he knows right away where he's going to throw the ball because of the bump and run coverage. Bump and run means that the defensive back is right across from the flanker, right off the line of scrimmage, and, and playing in man for man all the way across the field or any place on the field. This is a fourth down play with six to go for the Redskins. Guy's been running for the first down. Nearly had his head taken off, but he does have the first down. That was number uh, 78, White Mad Dog White on him. They dropped the flag in the Pittsburgh secondary. Heisman ran it just short of the Pittsburgh 20. With six seconds to go, Dallas is lining up for a... They just kicked a field goal. The Cowboy just kicked a... 14-yard field goal with six seconds to go to overtake the Giants. Going to be a lot of heartbroken fans there in the Meadowland. There it is. Six seconds remaining. This penalty again goes against Pittsburgh. Now they correct me and tell me it is a 24-yard field goal. But Dallas is in the lead one way or the other. First down for the Redskins. On the 16. Look at the blitz is on. Theisman throws. He's got a man out there. And it is no good, but a flag also dropped in the secondary. Now Blunt was covering that play. This is against Pittsburgh. Steelers have had two illegal conduct penalties in the game. This puts the ball short of the 10, an automatic first down. Washington marching on penalties right now. It's not a first and goal, it's a first and 10. Well, they got bump and run again. They got him. That's Donnie Shell. Safety blitz by Shell. They were a bump and run on both sides. He was trying to hit the outside receiver that time, but uh, by the time he got the ball up in the air or tried to get it up in the air, he was sh he was shot down there. There you see him back in the pocket. There you see the blitz coming coming in. Donnie Shell, number 31. Nobody touched him, and he didn't have a chance to get the ball up on top like he wanted. There's the final. They have now officially given Seption a 22-yard field goal with three seconds. The play he kicked it, and Dallas rallied to beat the Giants 16 to 14. Second down, 20 to go for the Redskins. Another blitz is on. Heisman throws, and that's incomplete. 
intended for the tight end Warren. Theismann was hit hard that time. Winston. By Winston. Winston was really flying through there that time on a blitz. He was lucky to get the ball off. Well, when you're ahead 38-7, you can gamble on defense and blitz. Send them all in there. And that's what they're doing. Philadelphia holding on against the Brown. Sight this pass to Ozzie Newsom. 19 to 17, the Eagles. Forte, Clarence Harmon behind Theismann. The Thompson, no job. He was covered again. Another bump and run, and Woodruff that time did another good job of covering on the play. See, one thing the Steelers are doing, every year they're breaking a couple of more youngsters into their lineup. And uh, they've got a lot of veterans, but they're not letting his club just get all old at once. Yeah, they they keep infusing young talent. And we were talking about it before the game, uh, Kurt. As you know, we talked about the two young young backs they have behind that man and Hawthorne, Anderson, and of course, obviously, Sidney Thornton, who is also a regular right. and doing a good job. Michael Harris went over 8,000 yards today in his career. Fourth down and 20. Heisman rolls it out. Goes out of bounds. They fail to make the first down and the Steelers take over. And the defense gets a half. You think this was a close game the way they cheered the defense coming in? I think the one thing that has to impress you about Pittsburgh, Hank, is their balance. They can run the ball, they can pass it, they can stop the other clock, they just have all around balance. All right. They do whatever it takes to win, Kurt, and that's what's important. There is your score. Onside kick is covered by Ray Easterling, number 32 of the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, Here it gonna, is. We're going to show it to you. Atlanta, of course, got all those good receivers, kids with the good hands up there. He kicks it to his right with his left foot, and it's right there for Ray Easterling. Covers it beautifully. Easterling, number 32, so it would appear that the Falcons are home free now. Tampa Bay does not have a timeout left, so they can't stop the clock. And all Mr. Botkowski has to do is just sit down with the football. And this will be the last play of the game. And you see the guy way back here in the 46 yard line. That's John James, a punter. In case there's a bad snap, he goes over his head. That's all of it. So the Atlanta Falcons. Have broken out of the doldrums. Lehman Bennett coming across the field to acknowledge John McKay, his opposite number. And Steve Bartkowski this time has brought the Falcons from behind in the second half to beat Tampa Bay. Falcons hang right in there, Frank. Atlanta 17 and Tampa Bay 14. Buccaneers third loss of the season against seven victories. They will still maintain at least a two game lead in the NFC Central Division depending on what happens involving New Orleans this afternoon and also the Los Angeles Rams and the Falcons still very much in their divisional picture with their fourth victory of the year against uh, six losses. The NFL on CBS will be back after this word from your local station. letters for quite some time now asking us to show more of the halftime shows on the field. Well, we've decided those folks might be right. So here is what we consider the best of the NFL halftimes. Things are always new and different at halftime of an NFL football game. In Green Bay, they had the Markuku Siamese twin sisters as halftime performers. Not to be outdone, the Falcons hired the Dumbrisi Siamese sextuplets for their show. But no matter where you are, 
Halftime is a circus. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Best of all are halftime shows that involve well-conceived specialty acts. The proud foot, I say the proud foot belongs to the kicker who's only concerned when kicking is that his mates know who to block. I got 50. I got I 76. Got no, Joe, I got you got him. 45. Who's got no, 30? I got, 45. I got him. I got that guy. Okay, all set. Hey, who's got 45? I thought you had 45. I've got 76. I've got 57. Who's got 48? Who's I got, got 48. 88? Oh, I got what 88. The time out. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Lincoln Mercury and the exciting 1980 Cougar XR7. And by Olympus OM10. Great shots automatically. Time and Sonny Jurgensen, we just got a final score in, a big score as far as the NFC East is concerned. The Dallas Cowboys pulled it out. 16 to 14 in the last 30 seconds, a 22 yard field goal by Raphael Septian. I'll tell you something though, you have to give the New York Giants a lot of credit. They're for real and they're going to cause a lot of problems in the NFC East. Uh, the, for the remainder of the year. They were trying to win their fifth in a row. You know, this game here is really, if you analyze the first half, just a game of missed opportunities. The Cardinals had two interceptions when they were driving for a touchdown. The Vikings have missed two field goals. That's right. Uh, they've missed some opportunities to score, but we did see a good drive by the Vikings there. The last one's a 90-yard drive, and they came away with some points. They're back in the football game. They have missed a couple of short field goals. Dan Meyer's very upset with himself, and uh, I'm sure he's, he's wondering what it takes to get that thing through the uprights. But on the other hand, we've seen some good plays. We've seen excellent piece of running by uh, Anderson. What do you get, 115, 115 yards in the first yards. half? Uh, we might see a record. He may go over 200 today or something. The record for the Cardinals we mentioned earlier is 203 for a game, and that's by a man you know, John David Crow. He wasn't a bad player, was he? Boy, he was a good one, wasn't he? Now, on the other hand, I think that something should be pointed out is that Kramer really started to come on. He looked like he wasn't setting up, as you mentioned a couple of times. Didn't look like mechanically he was doing things very well. But all of a sudden on that last drive, I was impressed. I was too. Uh, you know, I've seen him play before. He has a good arm. He doesn't have the big strong arm like a Doug Williams or somebody like that. He has a strong enough arm to play in this league, and he's going to be around for a long time. He'll be a star for a long time. It's just up to Tommy Kramer how badly he wants to. I think mechanically he did make some mistakes in the first half, but in that last drive, they needed a big play coming out of his own territory, deep in his own territory. He made the good throw to White, threw the ball right on the button. I think it, with Tommy Kramer, I think he has to get good protection. He likes to move around a little bit, but he needs good protection to be successful. You know, you talk about the Cardinals as we check this NFC East. What a roll of spoilers they can play in the next two weeks because they go to Washington, then they go to Philadelphia, and I don't need to tell you how important those games are. They just need to find a healthy body to uh, get them on the football field. That's the whole thing with them. They're more concerned. They're not concerned about the ability of this football team. They're concerned about getting enough healthy people to play the games. And as they go into those games the next two weeks, we should remind you that Washington's getting beat today. Dallas did pull it out, and Philadelphia was winning. That's right. So that means that Philadelphia now is still a game behind Dallas. And now Washington's dropped two off. They've lost two in a row, and they've got to be concerned about the fact that they folded late last year. And a lot of respect for the Cardinals coming in there next week. Okay, 10-7, to 7, our halftime score here at Bush Memorial Stadium. We'll be back with the start of the second half in just a moment. 
just got the headset on. You see that, Patrick? There goes Harry Carson back to the locker room. A very dejected Harry Carson who just uh, got a standing ovation. One guy who got bent double a few times, and I don't know how he's still walking around, is down on the sideline now, number 88. What a clutch receiver, Drew Pearson. Congratulations, Drew. Thank you. Very uh, exciting game. We were sputtered for a while, but seems like our best offense is two-minute offense, <laughs> and we got things going. You a little hey. sore? I'm real sore. My back is really feeling those licks. Uh, but, you know, when you win, you pull it out, it doesn't hurt as much. That makes that airplane trip home a little shorter, doesn't it? Uh, certainly does. You know, uh, we needed this win. We got beat pretty good last week against Pittsburgh, and the Giants are really fired up. They have an excellent team. Uh, very much improved football team, but playing with a lot of enthusiasm. We were lucky to come out with the win today. Uh, Drew, how close did you come to catching the ball earlier down on the one yard line? It looked like you caught it two or three times, and then they ripped you. I had it, and I got jolted in the back. And uh, <laughs> it's so funny, the ball's right there, and you seem like it, all you have to do is that, just reach out and grab it. But something just prevented me from uh, doing that, and I just kept bobbling, bobbling, and got hit again and just lost it. Drew, you guys seem so composed, so calm about the whole thing. Roger never got excited. You never got excited. It looked like, well, it just looked like a championship drive. Well, it was. Uh, we had uh, we have very much confidence in our two-minute offense. We work on it uh, every week. We spend a lot of time on it, and uh, it's been good to us. And the work has paid off. We uh, one thing about our team, we've been we've been through a lot of situations before, and we have a lot of players that are pro football players, and they know what to do in situations like this. And we we're lucky to come out on top today. Drew, can I ask an inside question? Uh, what was the huddle like when things were? bleak when that good rush with Martin and Jeter and Mendenhall is sort of wearing you down what the heck were your guys saying well, we we're just trying to get on track you know we were trying to get on track all afternoon we seemed not to do it until the last three or four minutes but uh, we we're just trying to get on track trying to keep everybody up because we we're, we're definitely in a position to win the game we we're only down uh, you know 14 to 6 and you know we, we knew we could win it if we uh, just kept plugging away and kept trying to do the things that you know made us successful before and uh, we're just trying to tell everybody to keep the poise and keep the poise and keep the poise and it's paid off. True, this game had to be a little extra important to you as every time you come here because you come from this part of the country, don't you? Yeah, I'm about 20 minutes from Giant <laughs> Stadium and I got a section up there, 318. All the people from South River, New Jersey came to see me. I got about 50 tickets for this game and they're still sitting up there ecstatic and I can't wait to get in the locker room to see them. Well, we wish you the best and congratulations on another great day. Thank you very much. It's terrific. Drew Pearson, who played such a key role in Dallas 16-14 win over New York. Good game, huh? Oh, one of the best we had in a long time. And a final, Atlanta beats Tampa Bay. Doug Williams passed 12 yards to Giles with 20 seconds to go. Not enough. Atlanta wins it. That gives Tampa Bay a record of seven wins and three losses, still lead their division, while Atlanta now has won four and lost six. Steelers ball on their 16-yard line for the first down. Pittsburgh ahead, 38-7. We have five minutes and nine seconds to play. Anthony Anderson pounds it out to the 19-yard line. Tackle made by number 52, Neil Oklowitz, and the left tackle, veteran Dave Butts. We asked Bobby Bethard before the game. He popped in the booth to say hello to Hank and me. What he would be looking for in the draft, and they have six picks in the first five rounds for the Redskins, something unusual for them. And he said, well, we'll probably be looking for linemen. We have a lot of age in our defensive and offensive line. And he's a good guy to be looking because he knows where to find him, and he did such a great job for us. His first scouting job was with us in Kansas City, and he was the one who told us about Jan Stenero. And he did a good job at uh, Miami, too. Anderson 20 25 30 look out 40 45 they like this kid here Anthony Anderson it's easy yeah. to understand why they do he's, he's, got, a, he's a sparkler and he may be a fine for them yes and he had a good burst there but watch again here's another back running with to his left with a ball in the wrong arm he's got it in the right arm running to his left now watch had he changed the ball, and this play right here, the man coming from the out, inside out, he could have straight-armed him and possibly gone for a longer distance. But he was handcuffed because he had the ball in the right arm. Good point, Hank. 31-yard gain for the rookie. Going to run right. 
Leo Bell in motion. Right up the middle goes Rick Moser over the 45 of Washington to the 42. Tackled by Neil Okowitz. They have their second string in now, the Steelers. Terry Bradshaw is in the locker room. We just received word again. Slight head injury and uh, is in there taking it easy. Nothing serious, but they didn't want to take any chances with him here in the second half. He broke his all time record. He threw four touchdown passes in the game. He threw for 300 and some yards. Most of them are thrown for 311 in a regular game. Run left here, it looks like. Second down, two. No gain on that play, if anything, maybe a half yard. The stop by number uh, 69, Perry Brooks, and 65, Dave Butts. Three minutes and 13 seconds to go. 38 to 7, another Steeler win. Boy, how they've been rolling. They went out and were slapped down by Cincinnati. They coughed the ball up seven times. And uh, the players said, hey, we knew we were in for it when we came home. Chuck Noll didn't blame anybody but the whole team. And we had the hardest practice that we've had here in years. It paid off. They came back to crush Denver. They beat Dallas. And now they're way ahead of the Redskins. Short of the first half. So they have beaten three good teams in a row now since Cincinnati upset them. And they make it look so easy. That's the that's the thing that uh, is so frightening, Kurt. Yeah. Crowd yelling, go, go. Fourth down and a half yard. 31 point lead. And we're approaching a two minute warning. Remember, another game will follow here on CBS. They're going to let the clock run down to two minutes. And stop. Oh, we'll be back for the final two minutes of this game. 38-7, Pittsburgh. Little kids like these make you realize we're all family. But when it comes down to solving problems, there's one thing you got to realize. We're all in this together. I'm Ahmad Rashad of the Minnesota Vikings, and this is the Haley Q. Brown Community Center. There are hundreds of United Way agencies like this all across the country. There's a place like it in my hometown, Tacoma, Washington. I know because they help my family. My mom and dad go there just like these senior citizens, to be with friends. I've been there, and I know what places like this do for your spirit. United Way is people not just giving dollars to fight cancer and other diseases, though God knows that's important, but giving of themselves. That's what makes us a family and a community. The United Way works here in the Twin Cities and it works in your town too. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. And Sonny, as we check the statistics in this first half of play, you can see time and possession surprising. Minnesota had the ball more. That's right. They had a couple long drives when they came up short on the field goals, but then they had the 90-yard one. It only took three minutes in that drive. Not a lot to choose from here. Yards passing, 150 to 80. A little different there, but you look at the totals, 239, and that's what we expected. One team to run and one team to have to throw. We should point out that Anderson is only 49 yards away now from a 1,000-yard year. And we've got six more games. <laughs> and now look at the comparisons between the quarterbacks. Yes, well, Jim, is the big thing about the heart, you don't see it there, but uh, he's had the two interceptions by Nate Wright. Kramer has not suffered an interception yet. Hart with the two interceptions early in that first quarter that stymied two drives. And finally, they came back, got a 42-yard field goal, eventually got a 33-yard touchdown run by Anderson. And then, as we got down to the end of the first half, Kramer hit Sammy White for 14 yards and a TD. And that's where we are right now, 10 to 7. Jimmy Edwards back deep for the Vikings. Steve Little to kick off in the second half underway. Good kick. Edwards will bring it out. Wait a minute. They got to bring something with him. And he's in trouble. Five yard line area. So Roy Green and Jimmy Edwards 
two of the finest kickoff return men in football they had trouble and after that play was over <laughs> Otis Anderson and Theotis Brown just came onto the field <laughs> they, they, they forgot to come back out he just lost the ball kind of he is actually his right knee knocked the ball out of his hands as he's getting ready to tuck it away and then a host of red shirts come flying in there then and he gets trapped back on the five nine yard return both green and Edwards have trouble in this game returning a kickoff on an occasion and now at the five yard line the Vikings that's not what they wanted to do to start the second half but as we mentioned Brown and Anderson were late coming out of the dressing room they just ran on the field after the kickoff Tommy Kramer wanting to throw on first down Intercepted by for the touchdown Ahmad Rashad the intended receiver Bob Pollard put under pressure and that was like they knew what was coming Pollard may have gotten a hand on it Roger Worley intercepting he just read the play perfectly believe me he did the same thing to me <laughs> I know that he reads well he just read the thing perfectly and stepped in front and took the thing for the interception and the touchdown Worley with his second interception of the year boy he made that happen in a hurry didn't he first play from the line of scrimmage in the second half and the Cardinals picking up six points with a 16 to 7 lead point after attempt now by Steve Little Little gets it it's 17 to 7 as the Cardinals start the second half in impressive fashion the interception by Worley taken in and Roger Worley now with two for the year the Cardinals have 12 as a team they lead it 17-7 <laughs> yes, a pretty good man, Tony Dorsett. Tony. How, you, how you doing, Tony? Just fine. How about the last screen pass that you caught? It looked like you almost lost the handle one time. Well, I, I got popped pretty good down in open field. I bobbled it, and uh, thank God I was able to hold on to it and push the ball a little further downfield. And I just have to say this: it's uh, just with some great execution on our part. The last two, three minutes of the ball game, and some great play calling on the part of Coach Landry. Hey, Tony, what about the gang tackling by the Giants? Looked like they were. They were really ripping and, and fur was flying out there today. Were they that good or they looked tough? Well, I'll tell you what, when you got a team that's playing with uh, as inspired and with as much enthusiasm as they were playing with today, and if you don't go out and take it out of them early in the ball game, then you're going to be in for a long afternoon. I say uh, we didn't do that early in the ball game. We didn't do anything, I think, offensively until the last four minutes of the ball game. And I, I think we're going to have to pick that up in, in the coming weeks. I think the last two weeks up in Pittsburgh and here in New York, we, we didn't perform as up to our capabilities offensively. But I'll tell you what, we fought like champions and we came back, we never gave up, and that's why we won the ball game. Tony, there's been a lot of talk lately about uh, when you carry the ball 20 times, the Dallas record is so much better. How do you feel about, uh, would you like to carry 20 or 30 or 25 or 16 as it was today? Well, I'll I tell you what, if, if I had, if it was up to me, I'd, I'd carry the ball at least 25 times a ball game. But, you know, we have so much, uh, personnel here that our personnel is, is, is excellent and we have so many guys that can do so many things besides myself so I think that's one of the reasons why I don't carry the ball as, as much as say maybe a Walter Payton up in Chicago or maybe Earl Campbell down in Houston those guys are just about their whole total offense whereas here we have we have excellent personnel so I, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, the way I've been treated and hopefully in, in the future uh, we I can just carry the ball a little more and we can keep on winning that's the important thing. Tony a lot of people have put too much attention perhaps on what you do when you're not practicing or playing at all but as far as we're concerned you've always been a Dallas Cowboy and very cooperative and uh, God bless you and good luck to you you're quite an athlete you know that my friend thank you very much okay mm -hmm. we're gonna talk to the coach here pretty quick aren't we all well, right I think so is Tom Landry down there we're gonna be checking with Tom uh, perhaps in just a minute I think he is standing by again the final score was the Dallas Cowboys 16 14 a field goal with three seconds to play Steelers ball, fourth down, half yard to go, just short of the Washington 40-yard line. The Steelers have the best record in the NFL since 1972. They've won 83, lost 25, and tied one. Oakland is second, winning percent of 74. Miami and Dallas tied for third with a winning percent of 73. Well, here, see if they come left here, Kurt. They fumble and I don't believe they've got the first down. That's the second time he's done that. They were he was going to reverse pivot and give us to the fullback, but evidently he tried to get away from there too quickly. Didn't get the ball and uh, Washington has possession. The other Redskins take over.
Second and 12. Rogan pump fakes, throws it down there. Wide oh. open, Morgan, wow! What a move. Woo. Great fake by Rogan, too. He pumped it once. And they're getting a good laugh on the sideline. Tom Landry, the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, and uh, Tom, your team and uh, all your coaching staff showed a lot of character today. Well, we had to fight back. New York deserved a, a great game today because they really whipped us most of the game. We were able to come back in the last few minutes there to, to win the ball game, but it, they deserve all the credit, really. They just played great. I know you had dinner last night, or I've been told you had dinner with Wellington Mara, who owns the Giants last night. <laughs> yeah. uh, is he trying to lure you away from Dallas? <laughs> oh, no. We're just we good friends. And, of course, my Giant days are the great. Uh, I remember them so well. So do I. Tom, you always talk about uh, uh, not only being a born-again Christian, but that the game of football is very important to you, but it's not the end of the world if the team would lose. Did you really feel that way before the winning field goal and all today, this afternoon? Yes, I always feel that way, Tom. I never changed my, my faith because it's the strongest thing that motivates me. But our team really did, as you said earlier, they showed a lot of character because we weren't playing real well. We were not moving the ball. We weren't blowing them off the line of scrimmage. And for them to come back that way, it just takes a, a – it showed a mark of a champion. And I think that's why we weren't able to win because we've had people like Roger and Drew and all the rest of them that can do that. Very well said. Thank you very much, Tom Landry. Okay, thank you. Nice to be with you. Good luck to you. And now okay. let's go to Brent Musburger. All right, Pat, thank you so much. We have some final scores, some highlights now. This is a post game for the New York and the Dallas game. How gracious Tom Landry was in defeat. For those of you in Chicago, Denver, and the other cities getting ready for a game, Landry said the Giants deserve to win. They outplayed us. But, of course, the Cowboys pulled it out. Now we got some highlights from the Atlanta-Tampa Bay game. Another heartbreaker. Of course, Atlanta wound up winning that game 17-14 in the closing minutes of the ball game. And at halftime, it looked as though it was going to be Tampa Bay all the way. This is first half action. Doug Williams, number 12, goes up top and hits Morris Owens for a 64-yard gain down to the one-yard line. And from there, next play, running back Ricky Bell goes in. Touchdown, Tampa Bay, 7-0 in the first quarter. Steve Bartkowski gets his club on the board with a handoff here to James Mayberry. He goes down to the five-yard line. This is fourth quarter action. Bartkowski rolling out, this time hitting number 86. Jim Mitchell, his first touchdown pass of the year. And Atlanta gets in the ball game 10-7. Late in the ball game again, Bartkowski handing off to Bubba Bean, and Bubba Bean goes all the way, touchdown, and the Atlanta Falcons upset the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 17 to 14. All right, Irv, over on the scoreboard, in effect this year, we have three conferences, American National and the one the Pittsburgh Steelers belong to. Now, I want to show you one more score and then some highlights of Pittsburgh, because another game has just blown open. Mike Pruitt has just stormed in for the Browns. They lead the Eagles with time running out, 24-19. Let's show you some of the action from that Steeler game. Terry Bradshaw and the Steelers, of course, last Sunday, dominating the Dallas Cowboys. And today, well, there was a school of thought that maybe they'd be down. Well, down is still good enough for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Watch here. Bradshaw got time. Stallworth breaks free. Six for the Steelers. Joe Theismann, though, rallied the skins, and Riggins got to the outside, and they pulled even at seven. But Bradshaw made it look easy. Here it is to Cunningham, the tight end screen, which is becoming a big play with the Steelers so far this year. This time, he wants another tight end, Randy Grossman, who had broken free in the back of the end zone. One more time to Stallworth. This one, 65 yards after the bobble. 
and how talented Stallworth and Swan and Cunningham and Grossman, not to mention Franco Harris. Here's Kruzak, Moser in, and it was 38-7. Back to the scoreboard now. In the fourth period, New England 23 and Buffalo 6. Buffalo had led in that game by two field goals. In the third, St. Louis is ahead of Minnesota. Kramer hit Sammy White on a 14-yarder in that game. Cincinnati 21, Baltimore now 17, Anderson 67 yards to Isaac Curtis. Curtis has been quiet this season, but today he strikes from 67 yards. San Diego 10, Kansas City nothing, Fouts 13 yards to Lord Jeff for the touchdown in that game. So for some of you, it is so long for the rest of the afternoon, the rest of you getting ready to watch a game. And for Jane and Irv and Jimmy the Greek, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long from CBS Control in New York. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Lincoln Mercury and the exciting 1980 Cougar XR7. And by Olympus OM10, great shots automatically. Stay tuned as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station. Monday on the White Shadow, Coach Reeves arranges for his team to learn a hilarious lesson in humility from the Harlem Globetrotters. Monday night at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on CBS. Kicking off, the Vikings will try it again after a disastrous start in the second half. Jimmy Edwards this time a much better return. Look at him come out of there. Flag on the play. He's at the 29-yard line. Let's go back, Sonny, and pick up that last play. We were trying to determine if the ball had been batted by a Cardinal defender, but I don't John, think so. If Fairfield comes across, but I don't think he gets a hand on this. It was just a very smart play by Roger Worley. And you see the ball was actually underthrown, too. The ball had been underthrown. He headed upfield too far, and Worley just stepped in front and made an easy touchdown out of it. Man shaken up was Thomas Lott for the Cardinals after that 25-yard return. You said something while we were away. You said, Worley is smart. Oh, he is. I tell you what. 82 on the kickoff. First down. That's Robert Steele, a wide receiver who's on their special teams. But to go back to that thought on Worley. Worley is, uh, he's been around a long time. He's a... He's been to the Pro Bowl many times. Excellent football player. Didn't have a lot of interceptions this year. But he, he's a good cover man. He covers the best receiver a lot. They assign him that, just like Lamar Parrish in Washington. But a smart football player. And believe me, the same thing had happened to Tommy Kramer. It happened to me right here in this stadium. And I hit him going the other way for about 60 yards. That uh, They beat us one day here on a smart play by Roger Worley. There's Lott going off. We have a final on that Tampa Bay game, and they got beat. That's what the Vikings wanted more than anything else. Somebody to help them against Tampa Bay. And Cleveland has jumped ahead of Philadelphia. Ooh, Cleveland got a lot of offense. Well, they came back here last week, scored 21 points in the fourth quarter to beat the Cardinals. Here is Brown trying to get up somewhere, and he fumbled the ball. Who's got it? I think he fumbled it right to one of his offensive linemen who was sitting down at the time. It did. I think it was Ron Yerry. Well, they're back to about the line of scrimmage. <laughs> well, they can't get untracked here in the third quarter. Started out with a bad kickoff return, then an interception, and then come back and have a penalty on the next kickoff. I tell you, I wonder if the Vikings are aware of the fact that Tampa Bay got beat. That 
sheds new light because they came in here trailing by three games and they could gain some ground in a hurry. They could pull this one out. They trail by 10, 17 to 7. That's Brown in motion. Second down, 10. Kramer back. He hits his back. And that's Ricky Young. And Young out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. He'll be short of the first down by some two, three yards. And we have another flag. It's flag day in St. Louis. Getting up slowly is Mike Dawson for the Cardinals. The flag was where he was on the ground. And it's going to go against St. Louis. It's going to be a 15-yarder. We must have a personal foul of some type. Let's see if we can pick it up. I didn't see it. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. 5-9 defense. First down. That's Calvin Favron. You see Favron had come on the blitz. You see him. Right here, as he delivers the ball, maybe because he hit him high, because he was in the motion of hitting it. It may have been because he hit him over the shoulder pads up on his helmet. That brings the ball all the way out to the 43-yard line. Ricky Young carrying the ball across the 45 to the 48-yard line. And so the Vikings now get that field position. Bob Pollard credited with the tackle for St. Louis. That Washington-Pittsburgh game is over now, and it was 38-7. to Hmm. Pittsburgh, a big win now, two consecutive weeks over NFC East teams. Dallas last week, and of course today. You know they're 12 and 0 against the NFC teams in Pittsburgh. Second down, short five to go. Kramer to Brown. Brown across the 50, close to the first down. Favron bulldogged him down, and he's very close to the first down. They may have to measure on this one. Brown's been impressive to me today. It's first time I've seen him play. Good they, back. They couldn't say enough nice things about him. Earl Swanson, the public relations. It's late in the second half. You missed on the first play for the line of scrimmage, a five-yard interception by Roger Worley for a touchdown. And the Cardinals kicked off again, and now the Vikings are moving the ball. They have it at the 47 of St. Louis. Again, remember, Tampa Bay has been beaten today. The Vikings with an excellent opportunity to get right back in at NFC Central Division Chase. They play Green Bay next week. Here's Brown trying to go wide, and he's not going to get there because Ken Green was there. And Green has played very well today. And made some big plays on special teams also. He just comes across good penetration here by the defense. They were on a blitz again. You see Chris Garlick coming over the top then. Everybody... Bearfield, Allerman, all around. Ken Green was their second first round pick of a year ago. Steve Little was taken first, Green was taken second, and he made the NFL all rookie team last year. Boy, New England now is off and moving, aren't they? What a talented team. 23 to 6 now, that's in the fourth period. That game was tied at one time, 6 6. San Diego leading Kansas City 13 to nothing. Loss on that last play, second and 16, Kramer back. Intercepted by Ken Green. Green's first interception of the year. The strong safety to the 50-yard line. And Ken Green, who's played well, continues to play well. His first interception of 1979, Jim Huff, eventually made the tackle. A 14-yard return. Well, you see that man going off right then. He was a little late with the football again. Didn't, didn't pick up the receiver as quickly as he wanted to. Cost him an interception. His second of this second half. We have a new quarterback for the Redskins now. Kim McCulkin. Is it the Riggins? Riggins dropped at the 50-yard line. McCulkin from Lehigh University has attempted only one pass this year. He's all fired up. No completions. Not hard to run his record down. 38-7 Pittsburgh, a minute 30 seconds to go in the game. Free and easy over there. There's Rocky Blyer. Randy Grossman. Yeah, boy. The winner smile. The loser say this. How sweet it is, huh? Second down, McCulkin. Short one to Riggin. 45 to the 40. The first down at the 38-yard line of Pittsburgh. 
They're rather low key here with the Steelers. When you call the office, they don't say home of the world champs, Super Bowl, they just say Pittsburgh Steelers. Chuck Will, Bob Daly, producer and director, Ernie Bauer, our associate producer, Lou Scanna, Bob Burnham, technical director. First down, Washington. 35 seconds to play. That's incomplete to Riggins. Riggins getting a workout here. Late seconds of this game. Yeah, I'm surprised that he's still playing at this stage of the game. You know, every game that you play, usually there's some deviation, of course, sometimes, but most of the time, each team will have the ball with 13 possessions. Uh, Washington right now has is in the midst of their 13th possession, and uh, Pittsburgh only had 12. Steelers don't even have a Super Bowl trophy pictured in their media guide. That's surprising. Well, I guess uh, after three of them, it's old stuff. Second down, that's Wilkin. Going deep. An interception by Pittsburgh. Up for the ball is Donnie Shell, number 31. Well, McCulkin is three for three. 26 seconds remaining in the game. There goes McQuilkin on. Well, this is truly a city of champs in the last eight years. 71, the Pirates sparked by Clemente, won the World Series. 75, the Steelers won the Super Bowl. 76, another Super Bowl. 76, the University of Pittsburgh won the Collegiate National Championship. Tony Dorsett, the Heisman Trophy. 79, January, the Steelers, the Super Bowl. And in 79, in October, the Pirates, the World Series. They're going to spoil these folks around here. Well, how can they repeat in the 80s? The way they're going, they'll manage it. Mike Cruiser puts his club down for the final 26 seconds of this game. Flag is down. I think we have an offside. Cruiser is hit on the 14-yard line by Neil Okowitz. You know, we talked a little bit about Tim McQuilkin. I saw him in the preseason against uh, Tampa, and he really did a great job. Played half the game, was very impressive. So he's a fine quarterback. All a laugher and downhill for the Steelers. 21 seconds remaining. Steelers did most of the damage on Terry Bradshaw's arm in the first half when he passed for nearly 300 yards in the first half. This is marked off against Pittsburgh. He threw one more touchdown pass early in the third period, left the game outside with a hit in there. Cruiser to put it in play again in his club on their own seven yard line. Stands are nearly empty here. There's the rook, Anthony Anderson. He's out of bounds and they stop the clock with 16 to go. Bob Kimball, our statistician here for CBS. Looks like Theo Bell popped his head in the huddle and said, hey, I got somebody beat. <laughs> <laughs> That's typical of the receiver, too. They always want to catch the ball regardless when it might be in the game. More, more. Oh, well, they run it. They'll wind down now. What many thought would be a tough game for the Steelers turns into a rout. The final score. 38 and Washington 7. Kurt Gowdy and Hank Graham saying stay tuned as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local state.
catch. Great catch by Charles Smith, the wide receiver. Only his 17th reception of the year. Jaworski comes up limping. Eagles will take a timeout. Philadelphia will have the ball in their own 46-yard line. 22 yards on the play. Here it is. Jaworski, a good throw and an outstanding catch by Smith, but he pays the price as the camera leaves him, and he takes a real shot when he released the football. Calling timeout right away. 28 seconds remaining. They have to have a touchdown. They're five points down. They've got to get into the end zone. The Cleveland Browns know that. They're going to concede the short stuff, hoping to keep the, the runner inbounds, use all their timeouts, and the clock is what they're working on right now. But you'll see the, the secondary for the Cleveland Browns. They're some 20, 25 yards deep when the ball is snapped to the quarterback. Line of scrimmage, the Eagles 46-yard line. First down. 28 seconds remaining. Two timeouts remaining for the Philadelphia Eagles. Next week, Cleveland will host Seattle on Sunday. Eagles will be at Dallas Monday night, a week from tomorrow. Both backs in the block. Then Montgomery slips out. Dropped off to Montgomery. Montgomery heads for the sideline. He gets out of bounds. He stops the clock. He picks up about nine yards on the play. Ricky Jones was chasing him as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, 21 seconds left to go in this ball game. Cleveland 24, Philadelphia 19. Eagles have the ball at the Cleveland 45-yard line, 21 seconds remaining. Couldn't ask for a more thrilling finish than this football game has been. Five on the pattern. This one is Bill. It's there. Carmichael to the 20. Inside the 15. 11-yard line. Close to the 10. Eagles stop the clock with a timeout. 11 seconds remaining. Oh, my, what a ball game. I said you couldn't ask for a more thrilling finish, and they're going to go right down, I'm sure, to the last second of this football game. Jaworski getting good protection by his offensive line because Cleveland knows he has to throw the football. A good throw to six foot eight inch Harold Carmichael and now he turns into a runner after he catches the football taking the ball down to about the 11 yard line before he stopped. There's one more timeout remaining for Philadelphia and they've got Charlie they take three shots or four shots into the end zone right now from the 11 uh, yard line with 11 seconds remaining in this ball game. His fifth reception for 95 yards at the Cleveland Brown 11 yard line first down 11 seconds at last play took 10 seconds Jaworski has completed 15 of 21 for 205 yards and uh, right after the ball game NFL report in New York and one of the games that they will really be talking about is this one. Well, I'll tell you, a guy that's a man that's six feet eight inches tall makes a very inviting target to throw to down on the goal line because no one can out jump him in the secondary of the Cleveland Browns. And secondly, throwing the ball, there is always a possibility of pass interference on a big man like Harold Carmichael, and you get the ball on the one yard line. Carmichael goes wide to the far side. Smith is also there. Jaworski throws it. Pass is complete at the 10. It's to Harris. Harris is in trouble. He's using up a lot of the clock. He'll end up losing a yard. One second remaining. The that one, play took 10 seconds. The one thing you did not want to do is throw the ball and keep it in play. It should have been thrown into the end zone. Because if it isn't completed, so what? You got another shot the next down. Or there's even a possibility that there could have been a penalty in the end zone. But don't throw it short where a man has to try to run it in. Because if he gets tackled, what happens is exactly what happened now. One second remaining, and they have one play left, as opposed to perhaps they might have had two more. They have no timeouts remaining. That's what the official came over. That's academic, because we have one second left. You can see right there, he should have unloaded the ball right there. This is an outlet to number 20, Harris. He should have jumped too. He should have just gone for the sidelines. Now there's no out for him right there. Cleveland Browns all around him. And he held the ball close to five seconds after the pass was complete. 
So you're right. That cost him two extra plays. Mr. Jones, this is it. The last play of the ball game. Win or lose for Philadelphia on this play. And it's right here. Three wide receivers are in as Scott Fitzke comes in. Montgomery comes out. Smith, Fitzke, and Carmichael, the wide receivers. Crefley's the tight end. One second to go. All that movement down there, and he didn't gain a yard either. It's still on the 11 yard line. Carmichael to the right side. Fitzke, far side. Time is out. In zone, tipped. It is intercepted. It is intercepted by Charlie Hall. Cleveland intercepts. And that is the ball game as the Browns come from behind. And they win it 24 to 19. Lynn? Well, I tell you, Cleveland has been doing it all year long. And you can see Sam Rotigliano discussing something with the referee. But they have come from behind. Brian Sipe has done a magnificent job all year long. He did it once again this afternoon as they defeated the Philadelphia Eagles coming from behind. Philadelphia at one time looked like they had complete control of the football game, but fumbles really hurt them. So Cleveland stays alive in the playoff picture. Their record now is seven and three. The Eagles, their work is really cut out for them. Their record drops to six and four. Turnovers, Philadelphia suffered four. Cleveland suffered three. But you have to give credit to Brian Seif. This is the man who engineered the comeback for the Cleveland Browns here today. So it has been a great ball game. This has been Lynn Dawson, Charlie Jones, a final score once again. Cleveland Browns 24, Philadelphia Eagles 19. The executive producer of NBC's football is Don Omeyer. Coordinating producer, Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast produced by George Finkel, directed by Harry Coyle. Technical director, Horace Ruiz. Associate director, Sam Kirschman. Next Saturday at Sports World at 4, featuring men's powerlifting, aerial skiing, legends of bowling, plus billiards. Well, the defense of Bud Wilkinson is making things happen in the second half of play. Two interceptions, one for a touchdown, and now setting the ball up for St. Louis at the Minnesota 46-yard line. And you can see right here the interception. He threw the ball in rhythm, but you see how many red shirts were around that football. You start pressing, trying to make something happen as the quarterback. You have to pay the price, and he gets intercepted. Number one, did you say, That's for Kenny the first Green. of the year for Kenny. He's been wanting that in the worst way, and now he got it. A lot of times, then they start coming in bunches. From the 46, Anderson, who has 115 yards. We'll watch him in that backfield. Mel Gray in motion. Here comes Otis. Otis picks up five, six more. Remember now, he needs only 49 yards to reach 1,000, and the record for a game for a Cardinal is 203, and now he's over 120 for the day. Let's go back to that last run. Good blocking up front. Makeshift land. Collins, Banks, Bostic, all doing a good job moving the Vikings out. They've had trouble playing the run. You see why then they, the offensive line beat them to the punch, moved them down the field. Second and three. 122 yards for Otis Jerome Anderson. 11.05 to go, third quarter. Second down, three. That's Tilly in motion. And this is Anderson again. And this time, good tackle that time. Stopping a very little gain. That's Dave Roller, 76. Well, he did. He got him just in time, too. He was getting ready to cut to the outside, and he had some daylight. You can't come into St. Louis, look at their record, and take this team lightly. They're two and seven, but a much better football team. They really are, despite their record, potentially really an outstanding team. And the thing that I guess positively has to happen to this club is that they've had to play people, which should help them in the years ahead. They and played people under duress. And get healthy. That's right. Third down, two, a gain of one on that last play. Anderson again. Anderson trying to get the first down. I don't know. It's going to be close. But looking over, we understand that Thomas Lotto was shaken up as a sprained right knee, and he's out for the remainder of the day. Now, did they get the first down? They're going to have to measure, I believe. Anderson just couldn't lunge forward far enough, but maybe he did. Jim Hart right there. He wants to see, and they didn't get it, I don't believe. No, they didn't. Fourth down. Now what do you do? You go for it. You have a 10-point lead, 10-12 left in the game. The ball is at the 36 of Minnesota. 
And there's nobody making a move to come in and kick at this moment. As now they send in another tight end, Richard Osborne, a man who they activated this week. We have a final. Cleveland has defeated the Eagles, and the Eagles now lost a good chance to well, at least stay close to Dallas. Boy, 24-19. Both the Eagles and Redskins have followed on some hard times the last two weeks. Two in a row. They're going to go for it. Fourth down. Both Osborne and Morrell, the tight ends, are in. Osborne, the former Philadelphia Eagle, he's a starting tight end with Keith Crepley was hurt last year. Wayne Morris, Anderson, the running backs. Here's Anderson. He has it. He fumbled the ball. The ball is fumbled. We have no idea who has it. It's Minnesota. Coming out of there with the ball is Darrell Loose. He's tackled by Steve, but it's Minnesota's football. So Anderson got the first down, but he lost the football. You take a look at this. A gamble went for the first down, and this is something. I think this is number seven of the year. He's fumbled seven times, picked up the first down, but you got to hold on to the football. And that has been a problem. Seven fumble of the year. He's had one in each of the last five games. They need to get inside the one for a first down. Ferguson with all day. Now they got him. Number 78. Otis Anderson after that last fumble now is 36 yards short of a thousand yards for the day. Cincinnati Baltimore score and Cincinnati hanging on. Well they've been playing tough lately. Back and forth huh? You know we were just mentioning both the Eagles and Redskins losing today Sonny. A lot of people assume the two wild card teams that come out of the East. That may not be so if it continues like it is. Well, we talked about the the evenness of the teams in the NFC. And they said, I'm glad because he keeps everybody in the race and no one's running away with it. it. It's good for football. That was Ricky Young carrying the ball. Picked up two yards. He's at the 35, second down and eight. Our score here, 17 to 7. Bud Wilkinson's crew in the second half picking up an interception for a touchdown. Then coming up with another interception. We're on the drive, moving well, and then Anderson fumbled the ball. Cardinals, the turnovers continue to plague him. They have 30 for the year. In motion, that's Bob Tucker, and this is Young. And looked like he had some running room, and he fumbles the ball. And the St. Louis have it. The Cardinals think they have the ball. There's Bud. He hopes they do. And nobody's making a call yet. No, they're not. <laughs> now Minnesota's indicating they've got it. The players have made all the calls so far. But I don't believe their decision counts. It is the Cardinals get there. That's all of it. <laughs> Number 50 was the man that got up last. That tells you it pays to stand out there in point, doesn't it? Can you imagine <laughs> what goes in on a pile like that? <laughs> you better be ready to hang on in there because everybody wants that football. Well, where did the Cardinals fumble? I think they turn it right around. They get it back at the same spot, don't they? It's almost identical. So both teams plagued by turnovers. The fumble by Young. The fumble recovery setting the ball up at the 37 and a half of Minnesota. Nine minutes remaining, third quarter. Well, Brad Oates has done a good job in that left tackle, substituting for Keith Fortman. Well, he started 15 games last year for the Detroit Lions. Originally drafted by the Cardinals, they were glad to get him back when Deerdorf was hurt. Hart, time to throw, dumps it to Anderson, to the 30, to the 25, a flag as he's to the 20. The flag was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And the preliminary signal is holding. Oh, wait a minute, roughing the passer. Roughing the passer. So after Hart delivered the ball, somebody got there late. Let's see if we can see it. Let's see who gets him. He took a long time throwing the ball because he wanted to go downfield with it. A play action fake, trying to get a score in a hurry. And he's just standing there, nobody around him. And all of a sudden, I guess Roller comes up from behind him and, and uh, makes a contact here late. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 
7-6 defense, first down. Dave Roller. Well, a 19-yard pickup on the play, tack on the 15 yards, and they're down at the nine-yard line. That's picking up yardage in a hurry. Gray, Tilly, the wide receivers. Jim Hart now. His team leading by 10. They could get some breathing room here. Here's Anderson trying to go wide, stays on his feet to the five. Two flags are thrown <laughs> as he's at the three-yard line. But did you see that cut? Looked like he was going to be stopped for no gain. But he continued on up the field. Are you what's your cut here? He comes inside a kind of an inside handoff. Good blocking there. Good block by George Collins. But this is where he cuts back. We may have a holding call or something on the thing. It's going to be called back. Tim Baylor eventually dragged him down. But as you indicated, it is against St. Louis. It's going to be 10 yards. And I imagine it is holding. Let's see. Holding number 8-0. Offense first down. Hey, Cal's going to run out of voice the way this game is going. He's had a lot of penalties here in this third quarter. And, and the third quarter, excuse me, Gary, had a couple of scores. It's actually gone into the fourth quarter now. Kansas City has scored 18-yard uh, run by Steve Fuller. It's 13 to 7 now. San Diego leading. First and goal now from the 19-yard line. There's a delay to Wayne Morris. And Morris to the 11. A quick hit delay up the middle. And that really opened up for him. A perfect call, then, because they had the safety blitz on. I thought you see him right there, Tim Baylor, number 47, coming through. Banks picks him up, really opens up a good running hole for Morris to get through because of the blitz. Morris really can spin, can he? He really dances around. Eight-yard run to the 11, where it's second and goal there. He's, he takes a lot of punishment running. He seems to get himself in a lot of different positions that are uncomfortable, and he, and he gets hit hard, but he holds onto that football. He may be, in the estimation of the coaches, the best physical specimen on the team, a great physical condition. Here's Anderson. Anderson got to the seven-yard line. A lot of congestion again. You know they're kind of keen on him, the kind of day he's having. So it's third and goal. Third and goal at the seven-yard line. Green Bay leading the New York Jets in the first quarter, six to nothing. Anderson now 132 yards on 18 carries. You get the feeling that before the day's over, it's going to be quite a day for him, if it isn't already. They're going to mark the ball actually at the eight-yard line, or it's third and goal at the eight. Steve Little standing by if they don't get it here. The Vikings, I believe, are offside. Hart throwing the ball. Anderson's got it for the touchdown. Now let's see if the flag is against Minnesota. Hart running into the end zone to congratulate Anderson. Two flags actually on the play. And the indication is what? Offside, Offside Minnesota. 69 defense. Kelly decline is a touchdown. Look at this crowd has come to life. You saw the offsides and Hart very wisely then. He'd beaten, Anderson had beaten Matt Blair just in a little flat pattern. He delivered the ball perfectly. Easy touchdown for the Cardinals. 23 to 7 for Anderson. That's his first touchdown catch of the year. Steve Little adds a point after. And the Cardinals enjoy a 24 to 7 lead. 38 yard drive after that fumble recovery taking one minute and 46 seconds in time. I wish we would have won, you know, it made it better. You know, I would have really enjoyed it. Uh, that's, you know, uh, everything else went so beautiful today and uh, I thought we was going to pull this one out, and, and we just didn't. And it's just, you know, I'm really, you know, as I said before, I'm really happy about the record. But I just, you know, I think I'd, I'd feel much better if we would have won the game.